Thursday night, I uh, took out, um, Artie wasn't around, but I took out uh, Robin, Fred and his wife, Allison, Gary Baba Bui Delabate and his wife, Mary, <laughs> and Benji to dinner at a very fancy restaurant, yeah, Danielle. A place I've always wanted to go to. Oh, yeah, you we had a wonderful meal. I'm sure, it's amazing. We had a wonderful meal, but I have to say, Robin, um, <laughs> Jesus. So anyway, we're having what? dinner. What? what? Wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you a little it bit. It was a tease. No, well, I, gotta, I, I will comment on the entire dinner. but And we had a great night. Don't Raspberry let this Raspberry on you. Yeah, but anyway, so we go to dinner. And Benji, you know, you're not going to comment on Robin. Robin, well, ben, oh, Benji, I got plenty to say. <laughs> but you're taking top of top uh, billing this today. I can't even imagine. What um, did I do, Fred? I'm going to tell you. I, I'm going to guess it's about your veganism. Somehow. No, I no I, although of... I told her I want, well, let, me, let me just tell the story. I... I <laughs> I, I really wanted guessing. her to drop the veganism for the night, but she wouldn't do it. She's very good to it. Anyway, we had a great time. So, you know, Robin is a wine expert. Right. And uh, I said to her, listen, Robin, <laughs> I'm going to give you the wine menu. Pick out a wine for us to drink. And Robin picked out a beautiful wine. They served it. It was delicious. And the waiter comes over to me, would you like to continue with this one? I said, sure. If Robin picked it, that, you know, that's what she wants. That's what we'll have. Well, that's why I sent him over to you. I said, you oh. ask Mr. Stern if he oh. wants to continue Yeah, sure. With this. I mean, absolutely. It was delicious. So uh, we're getting toward the end of the meal. The waiter comes over, and he hands everybody at the table an envelope. I open up the envelope, and it's the actual label to the bottle yes, of wine yes. to show you what you have. I've been to Danielle a couple of times. They never do that. I said, what? uh-oh, what the fuck is going on here? Why are they giving me the... Maybe because they know this is my crew and this is important to me. Well, the bill comes. <laughs> Gary was looking over my shoulder. Oh, he just told me this. He, had, he didn't say anything to me that night. <laughs> uh-oh. Robin ordered a wine. Now, Robin, <laughs> let me explain <laughs> something to you. Because sometimes, you know, I don't know where you grew up, but oh, actually I did. Here we go. Up. You know where I grew up. When someone says to you, <laughs> Order a bottle of wine. Listen to me, so you know this for the future. I I'm all right with it. Say. I'm fine I with it. I know what you're going to say. Uh, you, you say to yourself, okay, what am I going to order here? I have never look, ordered. Let me tell this. you about the wine list. Now, he didn't look at the mm. wine I've list. I've been there a million times. I know the wine list. There were bottles of wine there that were $1,200. All right. Were there bottles that are 100 or $200? I was looking at the French section, so I don't okay. know. Okay, so listen to this. <laughs> Listen to this. I get the bill. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Look, it took my I, breath I away. I was ordering one bottle of wine. He kept them coming. I, listen, so wait, um, let, me, let me finish. <laughs> let me finish, because I'm going to teach you something. I, I know you know everything, but let me teach you one thing if I can. And you'll, this will stick with you, even if you fight me on the air about it. So I get the bill. And now I went like this. <gasps> <laughs> like it, like like my breath. No, you did not. Yeah, I, I went like this. You did. I was there. I did. Gary saw it. You, you, you must that, have had. Uh, you no. must have needed a burp or something. And Beth made a comment. She even joked about that the first time they went out. Howard looks at the bill and he makes that face. But th except this time he wasn't kidding. Let me tell you so. So I had to add it up. Each bottle of wine was eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Seven. No, oh, you, I guess tax is How many did you have? Well. Three bottles. <laughs> and this shithead Benji, you know, okay. they serve him wine. What happened? He doesn't even drink it. Yeah. You know what they do? They, they give everybody wine. If you're not going to drink wine, don't ask for wine. In other words, say to the waiter, no. Benji, Benji, you you gotta, say, yeah. I don't drink. You got to be specific with that, too, because I'll keep it coming. That's a good good point. You don't I, know I how, First of all, your manners are ridiculous, but I'm, I'm going to tell you about Benji. Robin's in trouble, but you're in real big trouble. Um... <laughs> So anyway, it was wow. good wine. Let me ask you this: still, this it, so, it, first, wow. when, so when so when you are invited to, you know, I remember a story. Tom Chiasano took a client out to a uh, lunch or a dinner and said, "Order a bottle of wine." Right. The client ordered a six hundred dollar bottle of wine. He came back. He goes, "You know that motherfucker? If I wasn't paying for it, you think he'd ever order a six hundred dollar bottle of wine?" Now I've never ordered an eight hundred dollar bottle of wine in my life. It must have been good. Well, I would say to you, if I was doing that, I would have ordered that wine. You are insane. Okay. You're a high roller. It's one night. Wow. No. Now, well, not you, every let night. Let me ask you so something. So the wine bill alone was over $2,400. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Whoa. I didn't tell them to keep bringing it. Well, 
Listen, I figured, I said to myself, Robin knows. I figure you know. You know, Robin will go order a two hundred dollar bottle uh, of wine. You should have ordered yourself. Don't ever now, ask me to Oh, did I learn my lesson I will with do you? What I would do. Oh my God! Why? And I even said that to Beth. I said Robin would have ordered that if we yes, were out to I dinner. Yes, I would have. I said, but I've she's, done it before for you. I should. She's you know she's filing Please. for bankruptcy next week. Okay. Now let me ask you something. The waiter, <laughs> the, the, the waiter in a place like I that. Have the waiter. You. Because the waiter you comes devil. over to me, and I should have figured it out. He said to me, do you want to continue with the wine? But they always ask you that. And I right. said, sure. I said, whatever Robin uh, ordered. But a waiter at a place like that, yeah. uh, a wa- he knows you're a regular, this guy. Yeah. Have you seen him before? Do you think it's proper for him to say to you, sir, this no, is more... No, it would be a- embarrassing. It's embarrassing, right? So He's, He heard me say to Robin, order the wine. Right. Robin so, should look out for no, me, wait but a she minute. didn't. So I, when yeah. he came over and said, should I bring that again? He came over to me. I said, you have to discuss that with Mr. Stern. But, but he dinner. didn't discuss it with me. You should have said, Howard, it's $800 a bottle. Oh, uh, but that's interesting. I mean, it. but Robin did say that Robin, probably in, in wanting the guy to say, no, but I wanted him to. Yeah. I was all right I, with that's it. That's the reason I sent him over there. Right. I didn't obsess on it all week. And I said to Beth, listen, <laughs> Robin's a high roller. Oh, and here we wow. go. What are you saying, Do Fred? Do you think? I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever had a $700 well, bottle no, of wine. This was 800 800 Well, that must have I been mean, I, hat, cause it's I, I knew things were a little and pricey because I ordered a scotch there before you guys got there. And the Trust scotch, me, the scotch was fun. And no, but the scotch is a little pricier in that joint than they are in a lot well, of other well, places. Well, the whole meal, the whole meal, the, the whole meal right. without the wine would have run me about uh, I don't know twelve hundred bucks or something for that Which, amount yeah. of people. That's actually that's yeah, pretty good, like man. That, that's reasonable. But the twenty four hundred, Robin Holy jacked it up. Jeez, <laughs> I'll pay you for the wine. No. I will. Here, here, I here's the question I have. Look, all I can say is, Gary, am I right? Here's the question I have. It, when, I know Robin said that when the guy came back, she said, you have to ask Mr. Stern. But if Mr. Stern doesn't know what the bottle costs, of course he would say keep it coming because but, he thinks it's reasonable. But there's an indication there when I send him over, look, you better take a look at this. I was at the table, and I missed the signals you two had, the indication. I didn't have any signal. I the signal know. is, look, wow. you're paying this bill. You ought to be able, you ought but, to know what you're doing. But how would he know? How would he because know what the price when is? when the guy says that, he ought to say, well, let me look. And as Gary points out, Gary... Robin's off on that one. She, when you're the, Please. like I said, I'll give you a check for twenty five hundred dollars. No, I wouldn't. No I problem. wouldn't cash it. I will send it to you some other no. way. Then I, I, I want to hear about you in this wine. It's what I would do. Well, Maybe. I have to say, no. I, I'll just say this in the, in the in the interest of peace here. How about the signal being, "Hey Howard, it's eight hundred dollars." Right. She should say, "Hey Howard, it's eight hundred dollars." Can I order another one? it is for the waiter to say it. So I'm supposed to yell it across the table. No, no you whisper it to me. You should have smoke signal. Near yeah. you. And by the way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so Gary in- indicates that he did not drink any wine. If he had, he said he probably would have driven it up to four bottles. <laughs> I didn't drink right. I said to the guy, I gave what, he gave me a little bit, and I gave mine to Mary. If I was drinking wine the way I drink, we'd have been at four bottles. Easy. Right. Well, thank God Benji didn't drink the rest. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, you yeah, two, well, you two are very, any of that wine. you two are very, very generous we are. with each other. With, with each other, with gifts to each other, what you do for each yeah. other. So and Robin's it, right. She would, she would a actually. Thing. She yeah. would that do that. That is not she something would. I wouldn't do right. if you were paying. If I was paying the bill. Yeah, that's why I like going to dinner when you pay. Thank you. And from now on, you'll never take me out to dinner. All right. Don't punish me. <laughs> I will t- take you. I will never ah. be taken by you again. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want to hear it. I have never. I don't even look at the price when I take you out. <laughs> I pay. Do you think Robin's crazy now? I think that she's uh, got a little bit of misplaced anger on this, and what she thinks about I don't have later any today. Anger. No, you'll, you'll I'm understand that. Saying that when I go to a certain place, I like to have a certain kind of time, and I do. Let's Wait, see but that's your dime, think. George. Let's go. You're on the air, wow. and it will be on my dime. That's what I'm saying from now on. I won't have to worry about it. Now, Robert is very generous with me. Yeah. But right. still, when you go out to dinner with a group of people, you, you kind of keep an eye on the price. You don't go 800 a bottle. You don't. Uh, you don't. I'm just telling you for the future. It, you didn't go 800 a bottle. Mm. You just paid for dinner. I'm paying for the wine. Yeah, I would never accept it. I, I will give it to you, no. and you're going to take it. You've spent thousands of dollars on me. I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to no, take it. I'm just telling you for the future. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you, and I you won't take are it. going to yeah, take it. I get taken out um, to restaurants in Manhattan all the time. Right. 
And uh, people, it's just not called for. It's way above and beyond. I've been to Danielle, Oreo, all the best restaurants, and it's just rude. And uh, you you take a medium price bottle of wine, maybe two, three hundred dollars, but right. eight hundred dollars is just way over the top, and uh, doesn't show very many manners. I don't care what you say. I'm paying for the wine. I'm adding to the dinner. <laughs> and paying for the wine while someone else is buying is rude as well. Yes, wow. that's well, that's even more rude. To now you really this up is rude as well. Wow, well, we do well, a radio I show. Had, it was too good not to. <laughs> to. <laughs> to bring this up is very rude. It is. You just wow. don't take me out to dinner ever again, or uh, ask me to buy it. a bottle of wine. Don't ever be silly. Again. I think, I think Robin week. might be catching some <laughs> unnecessary shit here, but I think. It's a lack of communication. I think what I would have done is maybe gone over to you and say, look, I know wine and how, maybe see, you know, have so a how conversation. how are you comfortable with this? Look, we can have a great bottle. This is, it's an $800 bottle of wine. We can enjoy one of them. And then maybe you choose well, another wine said, how are you comfortable with this and shown it to me? the room from him. I know, and no, he I know. Me in this wow. position. I wouldn't do that across the room. <laughs> I would say, look, we could have, experience this and then maybe go to something right. later. Well, that's or, why I was trying to send the guy there to say, no, just... Tell him to pick another bottle of wine. Uh, just say for the future when you go out to dinner with other people, not me. I don't. I wouldn't um, do that. I'm always taking everybody out anyway. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I always put the bill. Now, Benji really is something else. So, first of all, uh, thank you, George. Um, Benji. <laughs> thank you, shithead. <laughs> <laughs> so, Benji. He probably takes nobody up for anything. <laughs> We well, he knows to, rudeness. I, I say, you know, Beth said, let's make the reservation for 730. I said, listen, my crew gets up early. I knew Robin was leaving the next day. You were going right. off to, well, I don't know where you were going. You were going flying to your flying for an enema. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Flying for an enema. Anima. Uh, and I wouldn't buy a $1,200 bottle of wine. Right. So I, so, you know, I said to, I said to Beth, let's make it for 7 o'clock. Because I said, maybe Gary's staying in the city. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. When you live out in the city, early. that's tough to negotiate. Yeah. Like, you know. So we make it for 7 o'clock. You know, Robin, Fred, Gary, we're all there. Right. <laughs> Basically 7 o'clock, within five minutes of 7 o'clock. Who's not there? Benji. And he lives in the city. Now, Benji really, <laughs> Benji knows I'm not looking for him anyway. <sighs> you know what I'm saying, Robin? Right, I mean, he's, right. he got, he's getting in by the skin of his teeth into this group because he sits in the studio during the show. And I love Benji. Don't get me wrong. He's a good guy. But... He's been here a decade. <laughs> right. <laughs> Longer, actually. You know, I, quite frankly, you know, we've discussed this. Benji's there with, should be in the Sal Richard category, <laughs> uh, except that Benji works in the studio right. with us, so therefore he's part of that dinner. So I invite him, and no Benji. A half hour. Now, everyone was hungry. We were all starting to drink. And I said to the waiter, look, I don't know where this guy is. I, you know, I don't know what he's doing. Half an hour late? Half an hour, Artie. Ben, you, so, come what, on, what, you know where wait you a work, second. man. I'm not I even done. This that. is just the beginning, and I'm sure Robin and Frank can fill in the holes. But yeah. and Gary as well. So I'm sitting there, and Robin knows I'm getting annoyed. Right. Because, you know what, I'm only good for so many hours. And when I'm drinking, right. it's like, you know, and I'm going to fall thing. asleep. And the waiters are standing around, and everybody's waiting for us to do something. We're waiting for Benji. Yeah, so we're waiting and waiting. And finally, I said, listen... Let's uh, let's get some stuff, you know. Let's let's get some appetizers and things. And when this guy shows up, and now I'm down to calling him this guy, like I don't even know him <laughs> because I'm so fucking mad. I go and I even said to Robin, I said, "What could he be doing? You know what? You know he. Yeah, what's they, holding he, him up? This is an important function. I'm his, you know, his quote boss. unquote boss. Yeah. You know, it is. It's, it's, it's a, a, yeah. a you know, it's a time to be impressive. At the very least, be on time. It's a work so, thing. Yeah, and he knows I hate that he's not prompt because even on the show he pulls the same bullshit. Right. So he, maybe he got a mental problem. I don't know. So he walks in, fat as ever, <laughs> sits down, sweating profusely. Now, Artie, you've seen it up close every day, but I mean sweating. Like he ran to the dinner in a suit. And then he sits his... I was thinking Robin was going to sit next to Beth, but Robin sat down next to Fred and I Benji... I didn't see the chair open next to Beth. That one was for you. Oh. It was a whole discussion about uh -oh. where Robin will sit. But... When Benji showed up, I was like, oh, where's he going to sit? And then I saw this, he, you know, sat there. And without he Benji, you could easily have leaned over and showed Howard the price of the wine. Yeah. Exactly. Benji. That's Benji's fault <laughs> that this all happened. So um, Benji sits down. There's a deflection. Sweating profusely. 
Where were you? And his answer was, Gary, what was his... Fred, do you know his I know his exact answer. answer. Go yeah, ahead, Robin. Is, I started to get ready at 6.15, 6:15. and I miscalculated. Yeah. Now, the guy has to throw on his suit and get and come here. I mean... Uh, what, yeah, who knows what getting ready is, but he didn't get ready until 6.15. Start to get ready until yeah. 6.15. So, like, like, like a chick, he shows up late, like I'm on a date with this guy. Then he shows up, and... So the meal is delayed. But 7.30 dinner? 7, seven o'clock. 7 o'clock seven, dinner. Right. Six for he shows up 7.30. <laughs> so he orders a dinner. Now, this fucking guy is so fat. I mean, how much you weigh now, Benj? Uh, about 2.35. Okay, 2.35. Shows up. He, he's not going to order an appetizer. He's not hungry, he says. Now, I said I Benji. Mean, he's making all kinds of hubbub. Yeah, 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 like a whole thing. He goes, I go, Benji. Look at the size of you. Stop now, lying so, yeah, that I go, you don't eat. Yeah, what do you mean you don't eat? What, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You're not going to have an app. Do what everyone else is doing. Just fucking fit in. So he's carrying on. So I, He I, calls I, attention to him. So I told him, so he orders an appetizer. What would you get, the tuna tartare? Yeah. Okay. I remember. I was more obsessed with I don't know what I ate, but I know what this <laughs> fuck ate. And uh, <laughs> he orders tuna tartare, uh-huh. which he barely touches. <laughs> and, and by the way, the other time I took him to dinner was Nobu, and he wouldn't eat any fish. Okay, so now the, he's so, ordering tuna tartare. So, so now at the table he orders fish, tuna tartare, and he orders a trout or something. I don't yeah, know what he ordered. A bass, or bass something, some, yeah. some bullshit. It was and a the bad whole choice t- of fish. You know, and then all of a sudden he goes, "I love fish. I love fish. I love it." And I'm remembering at Nobu, he didn't love fish. Now didn't this place has meat. This place has everything. They'll, they'll serve you a fucking duck and a pig and right. a chicken. They'll serve you game. They'll serve you anything you want. They'll, they'll kill a lion for you and cook it. <laughs> I love fish. All right. You don't love fish. I you do. don't eat fish. At Nobu, you wouldn't eat fish. That's the greatest fish no, place in the true. country. I ordered a fish at Nobu. I had salmon at Nobu. Okay. All right. So he goes, I love fish. I love mm. fish. No, because you were yelling at me that so I wasn't so, eating. So we're, well, wait. I said, this is So great. we start eating it. dinner. Everyone's done with dinner. Benji's whole plate of fish is still, still there. completely there. No. So I go, Benji, what's the matter? Don't you like it? I love fish. I love fish. The waiter comes over, starts, he says, can I, have, can I clear the table? Benji goes, no, I'm still eating mine. Uh, now, hey, can, I, Howard, can I just give you a timeline on that? Yeah, yeah. So, so, Arnie, you've been at dinner with Howard. You know, Howard, <laughs> Howard likes to move things along. So Howard claps his hands <laughs> and says, let's order dessert, which right. is the signal to let's clear yeah, the table. Mm-hmm. Benji hasn't eaten anything yet. When the waiter comes... <laughs> He says, can I take your plate? Benji's in the middle of the story. He goes, no, no, I'm going to wait. So now Howard's dying to move it along and have dessert. And Benji's talking and not eat it. Like, Benji can't read a signal. Hey, yeah, why Benji is he cannot not read. Howard? He can't, why is he, A, why is he not eating? He can't, Howard. He can't read the signal that everyone's yeah. exhausted. Howard, I, I like you. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I don't give that much of a fuck. Yeah. I, I, well, you know what, though? I, you know, Honestly, Benji, nice if you're going to get ahead in life, you got to read signals at a table. No, you're I there do. with a I, bunch of coworkers. And you're sitting there. You're, you're not eating. You're cle- you never ate your fish. We waited I ten am more. Eating. We waited ten more I minutes. I didn't want to order an appetizer because I, I I didn't. Like Benji, it. we all were done, and then you said what, you told the waiter to hold off on desserts for ten minutes. I didn't tell him to hold off. Yeah, you said I'm still eating. That means they're not going to order dessert, and you didn't eat the rest of your fish. I'm, you fucking sat there with it. You know, fucking return the fish. You you are bullshit. I, Gary was going insane too, and I'm not the only one. And believe me, Robin hates you. <laughs> she just I won't didn't say. even know why he was there. Oh, Benji right. knows that. <laughs> I, I just, it's you're, just annoying. You're, you're, Gary, you're, help me out here. Will you explain the word? No, Benji, 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 seriously, here's what happened. Could you give me two seconds? No, Benji, no, no, no. Give me two seconds, no, and then you can talk. Give me two seconds. Funny. Go, Listen, Gary. Dude, you got to learn not to give so much a fuck. Just sit down, have a nice time. But it's his dinner. You didn't give a fuck that you're a half hour late and you're sweating all over the goddamn table? What's with you? What are you sweating for? I'm another. Wasn't it like 17 degrees that night? Yeah. I mean, it was pretty chilly. Yeah, it's hard to work up a sweat. Yeah, I'm I, sorry, Benji. The world doesn't revolve around you. Sweated, the dinner was for I, I 7 o'clock. To to say, you you can't, say you can't come. I sweat to piss you Why off. Why did you man. show up at 7.30? First of all, I got there at 7.20. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You didn't. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. No, I think it was 7.30. Here, 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 here it is, Benji, seriously. I know what you're saying about how it should relax and all that stuff, but you understand, A, he's your boss. B, he invited you to dinner. So if you're going to go to that dinner, there's going to be a certain way things run. If you don't want to deal with that... You probably should just not come. But yeah, once you come and you, real, and you realize it's Howard, you know how he gets. He, Benji, he goes like this. This is exactly how he goes. He goes, all right, let's order dessert. And that went right over your head. Yeah, oh, always. And so, so you were talking, telling a funny story 
And they did come to you get know your- why? Because Benji entertains no one. He doesn't care about anyone. And when someone sa- he doesn't sit and pick up signals. I know people like Benji. Uh, they're the most annoying people. They've been so pampered in life and so babied mm. that they don't pick up on what's going on at the table. It's, it's, Robin had finished. It's, it's Fred had finished. Yeah. Not, Everyone was listen, sitting there. Me, it was time friends, for me as the host deal, to move the evening along. Well, the, waiter, still- the waiter was looking toward me to find out, should I clear the table? And you're the only asshole who's sitting there. And you didn't even finish. your food must have been cold by then. Right. I was enjoying it. It was cold, Robin. I put my finger in it to touch the temperature. <laughs> oh, Benji, you were, Benji, you were at my house that night. That Howard, you, you know that there's like a, he gets tired early. That's why we eat dinner early. Right. Gary, you were tired too. Everyone was. Yeah, you were tired. Why was it? It was a. I looked around dessert. the table you because were we were waiting. Yawning. Because at, as a courtesy, the way matters are you wait for the everybody waiter, to be finished. I would have ordered dessert. Oh, don't get me and wrong. And you would have been mad. Why no, are you, why are you turning in your fish before you're done? No, with the it. waiter would not take our dessert order. He this etiquette at a fine restaurant. All right. You were holding up the table. At least eat time. your fish. I thought we had a good time. We had a good time. Not you. We had a good time without you. When you showed up, things got horrible. All right. <laughs> oh, God. We had a good twenty. We had a good half hour before things got bad. No, we had a nice time. I enjoyed your company. I, yeah, I love being there with you. Fine in conversation. Yeah. I mean, but listening to your things. unbelievable sex life, which I don't believe a word. Was of. there more of that? Yeah. Oh, oh my! I got to tell you, my wife. We, I thought we got oh the guys' God. version at Nobu. No, no, no. 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 He Every, went into. Yeah, Benji really. loves to talk about his sex well, life. Yeah. Mary turned around it to me. She goes, "Is that? Is that?" Is that real. possible? Yeah, is it real? And I go, I think it is. And she goes, that's really disgusting. <laughs> Benji, she likes your bed, but she was sort of creeped Benji's out. Benji's up to like really no, this, dangerous behavior. No, this yeah. is like he's, like time, Benji's going to get killed. Yeah, he's like he's he, the female version of looking for Mr. Goodbar. Like, he, like, he, like he Benji, said, like Benji, right. one story about his sex life is he goes on these you know Craigslist or whatever they are, right. and he. You know, some guy invites him to his hotel room to fuck some girls in front of in him. In front of him. And, like, he's going into strange hotels. Right. You know, he's and be... he doesn't know who these people are. Yeah. He's in a strange location, and nobody knows he's there. And when he shows up, doesn't the guy go, I don't want to watch you fuck anybody. And the girls don't want to fuck <laughs> yeah, you. I, that guy must really be I said, Wait, I said, that Benji, really happened? Yes. And I said, Benji, aren't you worried? And he goes, yeah. But, yeah, I, but, but did you fuck a, a girl in front of a guy? Yeah. Wow, that's that. And he said the girls were a like stranger, <laughs> or a stranger at a hotel. They were models, right? He didn't come on my chest or anything, but yeah, no, were, they, no. were they models? Uh, they looked like it. Yeah. I don't know if they were. Yeah, he 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 describes the scene, but meanwhile, would you go <laughs> models? To this somebody? was a long time ago. I'm no, dating regular saying. chicks now. I'm dating regularly. Oh, they must be regularly? delighted. Well, anyway, so you know. Gary and that guy, and I won't say, but it, he is famous. And that guy, if you want to, I would reveal. Don't, don't do that. No, right. don't, don't, don't. What the guy who watched you? Yeah. Yeah. Quiet. Dinner. Total coincidence. Stop. Yeah, no, he I doesn't know it. who I am. He doesn't know I know him. I don't want to. Oh, I sorry. think I know who he is. Actually. No, you don't. I think you told me. No, I didn't. Okay. Was it Sam Ben Ruby? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Anyway, so no, Sam would know Benji. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sam would throw Benji out. <laughs> I got to tell Benji? you. Benji. I got to tell you, wow. this Benji's such a character. Right, I, I love him. I, I don't want to be too harsh, but he, he was. Actually, that guy scares me. If he knows, but, I would never reveal. Him. But understand something, Benji. Yeah. You're going to go out with people in the future. And forget about me. I understand you're trying to be eccentric. You think he's going to go out with people in the future? I don't know. I, I said that to make him feel better. <laughs> but uh, if you do, you know, show up on time or when you see, read the signals at the table. Come on. Uh, or just keep up with what's going on. Yeah. There are no signals to be read. Everybody's doing <laughs> basically the same thing. When their entree comes, they eat it. Right. Right. Yeah. Like it's, that's the time to eat your entree. I, I not was, save it. Don't save it for later. I was eating. And you, now you weren't. But you realize you that you were, hold on, seriously, and I'm not being a dick bitch. You know, did you notice that everybody's plate on the table, this is true, was empty and yours was completely full. Well, you guys are pigs. You eat so quickly. No, really. But but see, like you notice that stuff and you say, <laughs> either like I don't want to hold seven other people up, so I'm either going to eat quicker or I'm going to forego right. what's like, left of my meal. Gonna, when are you going to eat your dinner? I mean, what, what, what point in the night? And then we waited ten more minutes and you still hadn't eaten it. You never ate it. Right, you did you not touch what? that food from the time I, the I waiter mean, you came. You weren't going to eat. I honestly didn't realize that people wouldn't, that it would... Con- be considered a faux pas for other people to order dessert while someone else is still eating. Yeah, but it's not Denny's, so, you know. It's it's yeah. it's Danielle. Oh, right. it's like so we're, that, we're having a dining cool. experience I, that together. Did, that didn't hit me until you said it. <laughs> I'm okay. sure there's no so, Danielle in North Carolina. <laughs> Listen, I'm not being no. a, I'm not being an asshole about it. That's the way it works. The, the waiter's not going to take desserts until the, the plate the, the, the place is you know ready to go. It's not uh, done. You could see that the guy was waiting. 
if you had bothered to pay attention. <laughs> well, anyway. Write down the name of the guy who wow. watched your fucking chick. Yeah, I'd like to know that. <laughs> yeah, really. no, just you don't even. You know what? It, it's <laughs> so boring. Not the air. Is it I know, boring? I don't even, Do you yeah. know who it is? Yeah, it's it's nobody you know, oh, and it's nobody really? anybody knows. He thinks the guy's famous. The guy has a high profile kind of job. Oh. He would know the job, not the oh. guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Write down the guy's job. I do have to say that, Be- that Benji's stories were, I was riveted. They Benji were is good stories. Riveted. Yeah. Benji's a lot of fun. They That's what you should do in story. stand-up, by the way. You should really? tell those stories. I wish I could. Tell- you know, but, but, do it. You know, those stories he doesn't without, tell. Uh, some of them work without. As the stories were going, Beth started going further and further. Oh, she away. almost crawled under Howard. She oh. she started moving closer to me <laughs> to get away from the disease yes. that has to be crawling on Benji's I, body. That they shouldn't even joke about that. Right. I would take a test on the air. Okay. Did you come to New York? Did you come to New York as someone from like you know the South? And I'm being serious. Did you come here with the goal of being part of that like outer fringe Andy Warhol gang, like New York City? Nook and cranny, getting blown everywhere. Like, yeah, the underground crowd. Did you want to so be the, a part of that thing? Or, I've or? kind of always been attracted to the uh, anything underground, not just sex. Just sex. It's it's more illustrated when it's sex. But I like underground. So. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, it is, dude. She already too is, bad you weren't at the dinner. You could have asked these questions. No, I'm just saying, it is, it is dangerous. And had your dinner delayed too. <laughs> it is. Da- yeah. I, I, well, I wish you know. Look. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we had a great time. Well, I would love to have failed the piss test for an 800 dollars bottle of wine. Nah, come on. So I only. Br- I would never anymore. even bring it up unless we don't were on the air. Don't invite me anymore. I feel awful. Uh, I I knew you would, but I had to do it because it was that's too good that, to bring up on the air. That's how much you care about me. The show comes first. Roberto, Roberto, you're on the air. Can I contribute a little, at least? You know, it's a given that Benji's a classless, fat slob with pig eyes. But, Howard, come on, bro. All we need to know is that you, hey, I don't care what you've earned over the course of your life. Just the $83 million that you earned as a bonus. You just pick up the check and, and shut up about what Robin ordered or didn't order. I mean, We're doing a radio show, sir. Now, I think we... when would you enjoy an $800 bottle of wine with your friends? Roberto, this is a radio show. So I bring things up. Read no, that's lines. not. You know what? That's not true. Because you do. But I'm bringing up etiquette. Robin. I'm teaching Robin too. She needs I to learn. I know etiquette. You don't think part of etiquette is just keeping quiet. Roberto, if you went to he dinner, knows my etiquette, not his. Robin, I, the, the truth be told, I would never be mad at Robin for that because she's so generous with me. The idea that I got to pay her back a little bit would be great. So believe me, I'm not upset about hey, it. Can I ask Robin a question? Yes. Um I got you back 100% on this, Robin, but I'm curious. You embrace this sort of uh, vegan lifestyle, and you spend so much of your time detoxing, living a pure life. Why do you continue to consume alcohol? Yeah, which the that's a good question. I don't drink often, but I do like a glass of wine every now and then. You just can't get that out of your life. You can't. I certainly c- I'm discipline. not addicted to wine. I'm not arty. But I feel <laughs> I'm you're not addicted to wine either. <laughs> you're detoxing and you're taking enemas and colonics. Um, I'm not. Uh, I Howard, was Robin's detox. an addict. I was going to a to a get on a detox regimen when we were leaving. So this was my farewell to food. I agree with Roberto. I think wine and all alcohol should be cut out well, of your again, life. Well, again, my nutritionist says wine is okay. Well, then I think you can eat some cream in your soup. No, I can't. That tells me I just got to get a nutritionist that says steak's okay. <laughs> you got to get a nutritionist that says heroin's okay. That's what I did. I looked for one until I found one who said wine right. was right. okay. Right. I don't like you. <laughs> Roberto is right, though, Robin. I, no, he's not. I always thought that was interesting that you've cut out every First food of all, except I'm wine. I'm not an overindulger in anything. Right. So I didn't say I you were. I don't overindulge in wine. Wine, again, you would like my vice to be cream in soup. I would like my vice to be wine. But yeah. do you aspire to one day rid yourself of this need to drink wine? I don't have just... a need to drink wine. I like I think wine. you I think you can't get well, let go of the pretension of uh you know, ordering uh, $800 of wine. That's what I think you can't let go. She is an expert. I'll tell you what, the, the wine people at Danielle were impressed enough to give me the label. I mean, wow. my God. I oh, what, do they steam that off? Yeah. Yeah. They must have been oh, back wow. there steaming. Hey, can Thank I you. have that? <laughs> you know, I, 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 when I looked at the price, I, I was so shocked I forgot to take my label with me. Because <laughs> oh, okay. someone, someone asked me, he said, well, what was this wine you drank? Shh. 
I said, I, I was, uh, listen, I almost passed out at the table, so I forgot to <laughs> bring the name. You're a little and left your left Let me ask you what this. What was the name of this wine, Robin? It was a Dujac wine. I'd, I'd have to look at the label, too, because they make a number of different oh, wines. A du- oh, a Dujac. You didn't oh, say that. Please. You underpaid. <laughs> a Dujac. I got it cheap. Yeah. No, what do you think the restaurant pays for that bottle of wine? Uh, I've heard they, they mark, mark it up, it up three 300%, times. Three hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's where so they make their money. They probably get it for two two fifty. Let me ask you something, Howard, about uh, something that if you thought about with retiring, mm. say you didn't have the radio show and this happens, would mm. you just harbor resentment for Robin forever? No. Would, in fact, that it, would the, fester. The tr- it's not as what? funny to say this, but the fact of the matter is, I was kind of glad Robin did that because. Um, Robin's very generous with no, me. I know, everyone but on the show, and in order to pay her back, no, you're not. I'm doing using that. that as an example in your life. I mean, there seems to be a lot of yeah. things getting to know you that you get out on the air that seems almost therapeutic to you. Do you think that would be a problem for you without no, the radio no show? No problem. No. No, you're just going to stop seeing people. Because I'll, no one will see me again. <laughs> and, and poor Beth will see me. <laughs> Trust me. No, Rob and I will okay. see for life. And, right, I'm sure you And will. Fred, but not Benji. Oh. <laughs> I mean, once I retire, I will never see Benji again, I'm sure of that. Benji, when's the last time you did that? You, mm. you, you went to a weird sex situation. Be honest. Like, you went to an apartment from that bullshit. It's happening all the time. <laughs> well, is he it? claims he's not doing that anymore. He is, though. Howard, what is that all about? I mean, I am dating regular chicks. No, but, I mean, that whole, like, dangerous, like, what is it about? What is it about? You're looking at a guy who can't get laid. So when the only way he's going to get laid is through <laughs> some freaky scene. No, I think he actually can can get mm-hmm. laid. But, no, but I mean the hole has to be like almost like on a tightrope with like almost like with a gun to your head. Listen, kind of what normal person who doesn't who values their life? You know, when Artie does heroin, I go, you know, I love Artie, and he seems like such a normal guy. But yeah. then he's risking his health and his life. That seems more normal so, to me. Well, you're yes. getting, you're no, getting no, high. It's more normal. More than, normal. None Benji, of it is normal. But, well, it's more normal to me than what Benji, Benji puts himself, he goes, he goes to a room where some guy says, come in and fuck some girls. It sounds to me like either you're going to get knifed. You're gonna, he was even in one, he, he explained, where it could have been like one of those rape fantasy kind of things. Right. You know, that's crazy because... You don't know how you're getting there. You don't know if this woman is participating in this. Well, they get so rushed out of that. You don't know what Robin's saying is, how do you know those girls weren't given roofies? Yeah. Right. And then they're going to accuse you of raping them. You know, he may not have AIDS, but he definitely has genital warts. Uh, Fuck you, dude. Dude, why don't you come down here, and I'll come down here, and we'll do a doctor's test. Do you want me to examine your penis right now? (laughs) He's the fattest AIDS patient ever. Why do you want to see his penis? I don't, Robin, but I will look for genital warts. (laughs) We've all seen it, unfortunately. (laughs) I mean, so you get a rush out of that more than sexual? Do you like the danger of it? No. You understand. You you, you know I like you. You know you're putting your life at risk. I I am dating regular chicks now in a regular way. Hmm. The the problem is... Do you know that there's something wrong with you? You would go to a room where a guy just says come come over i mean don't you know that like in the middle of the night you don't have a bodyguard you don't have a gun you don't have nothing man you're walking in there and you're doing this right. weird thing i mean <laughs> you don't know that's dangerous of course it's dangerous hey, do you but... value your life do you like living <clears throat> yes yeah all right but, but anytime you get laid it's like there's listen i want to get laid more than anything laid getting laid is the main focus of my life you know what i mean it's the primary focus of my life for many many reasons being inside a woman's not enough for me. You know what I mean? I wish I could go inside of you and then come out through your mouth. <laughs> you were all the way up. Right. <laughs> you were exactly right when you said, I don't get off at all on some dude being there. It's, I'll take the no, opportunity. No, that's to, the dude to... that's going to take a gun and shoot you in the head right. and rob you. Or stab you. Yeah. Lucky for you, you don't have any money. Did you ever see the movie <laughs> Looking for Mr. Goodbar? You nah. should You should rent it. Yeah, it was about a hot chick who gets killed. You, on the other hand, are going to get killed. And you're not even a hot chick. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have that need for... I worry about you, I do. I, yeah, like yeah. action, but he's not a gambler. You're not thinking... No, th- he's gambling with sex. Right. Right. But I right. It's more of a sexual thing. Like, at the end of the movie, The, the, the Gambler with James Caan, he, he wins his bet, and he, he, needs, he needs more danger in his life. So right. he goes to, like, a, a drug den and, and tries to, like, you know, get into a knife fight with a big bouncer. Like, he right. needs that action. Yeah, action. But it's the but, same as looking for Mr. Goodbar. She finally winds up with a guy who's mental yeah. and clubs her to death. Right. But it's sexual. It's not like a gambling. Yeah, thing. but Benji's is sexual. You right. know, like he doesn't. She didn't know who she was taking home either. See, I don't know. How Benji, Benji can turn that off. Then, ben, like if you, you can't turn it off, I'll yeah, tell you, you why. Benji, this isn't about sex, right? Benji's lonely. 
No, I'm not. No, you're lonely. I, I have lots of friends. Mm. I'm no, lonely. I, I, I would love, never do that. Listen, I love, I love sex. And it is hard because anytime you're home, you could just go out and get laid. Wouldn't it be safer than to go to a stranger's house, at least go to um, a, a, a well-known high-end prostitute, where at least you could... I know it sounds crazy, but then it doesn't feel like it's... I don't get off on that because... See, that's it, the danger. You, you, he I don't it. feel like I'm earning it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Benji said something to me once. Uh, I don't way, think he's going to care about this, right. but we, we were in... I mean, it, it was something that... It kind of creeped me out, but it didn't. Uh, and it goes along the lines of this. Maybe you remember this. We, the last time we took the show to Vegas, we landed on the private jet, and it happened to be uh, the day of rehab at, at the Hard Rock with all the strippers... And uh, they they got us an area, and it was me, and I was talking to this one, this smoking hot blonde was talking to me. And she, she knew the show, and she was clearly, like, hitting on me, you know. Right. And, and uh, I was sort of, like, you know, have, drinking with her and everything. <laughs> then he said to me, he goes, uh, it, don't you, isn't it, like, a turn on to, to, do you think, like, you could just be fucking this chick in, like, five seconds up in your room? And I'm like, I don't know, I, maybe if I, you know, later on or something. He goes, but aren't you, isn't that fucking amazing that you could just fuck her right now? And I'm like, he was getting too into the question. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was like, I don't God know. knows yeah. what was going on in his head. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was starting to think, like, what do, you, what do you want to do? Well, anyway, that was our dinner. Do you Thursday, remember right? that? That's the creepy moment. No, but because it was like you were, you were I don't know right, if I'm you wanted me. I'm not done with Benji. I'm done with Benji. Well, I wanted to right. say... What a lovely evening, it but was. it no longer is in my mind. You know, Robin, you know when things went downhill? I saw the, uh, after Robin ordered the wine, the wait staff was high-fiving each other. Wow. <laughs> they were doing the sucker dance. <laughs> they did the sucker dance in the background. All right. But wow. I, I thought I'd had a good time. I now realize I didn't. You did not have a good time. I did not have a good time. I will always remember that night. That's the most expensive booze you ever had. had. Yeah, ever me consumed. too. Well, I never had the most. most. Me too. The, the most expensive one I ever had was maybe half that price. Howard, do you think... I never even had anything half that <clears throat> Do you wow. think... Because I'm going to ask Rob of this. Too, well, but, again, if they're marking things up maybe three it was. times, you're drinking the wine I brought you. It was really a, 200, ex- a $250. Well, $250. You're not, no, you're no, not no, getting no. that I'm wine at Costco. The, it was retail wine. Right. The wine I bought you for a present... Each bottle is more expensive than the wine you drank. Mm. By the way, did you hear Gary going off on you on the wrap-up show? Oh, my God. Did what you is hear that, that all about? Did What's you hear now it? now what? Oh, my God. Hey, Howard, real quick before I'm, we end this. I'm you... now giving up wine because it causes you should, too much you, trouble. You, you with wine, you got you to hear Gary from the wrap-up. But, Dominic, what did you want to say real quick? Uh, how do you know that Benji's really doing all this? Because I don't. Think, of, think about this for one I moment. think I believe him. No, I... Well, everyone at that table, he was shocking some women that would would never ever think of this type of behavior, would find it disgusting. And, and for a moment he makes himself the most important person at the table. Mary certainly, Robin, right. Beth, all these women are hearing these horrible stories and while he's telling them, everyone's looking and living it to him. I doubt he does any of this. And I'm serious. Well you make a point. I he it did make him the star of the night. Let's and, verify. But it was fun. I, I allow you, if you want to put it on the air and get those people you can do it. <laughs> I would love you to verify. We, we, I, 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 you know, I, 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 for one of the, you, do you really think those people are going to come on the air? <laughs> it can be verified. The, the, <laughs> oh, God, who the, are they? One <laughs> of the, the famous woman, I, I feel weird about Wait, it. there's a famous woman? Yeah, well, yeah, I know that what? one, and I don't want to go anywhere yeah. with that. I feel oh, weird I know that it's, not, it's not her, you know. Yeah. I know it's the, a different one. I know the famous woman. <laughs> but supersonic, she used to describe the sex and not describe it the way you did, Benji. So I don't know. What do you mean, what she describe? Well, the events that you think you did. You know, in your story, you're the stud. No, but what did Supersonic say? Well, that she, you, you were not the stupid, super stud for her. You know, wait, everyone wait, at the wait, table... Wait, when did you hear her say that? First of all, how could that be the main... Dominic, topic? stop a second. When yeah. did you hear her say that? Well, she's discussed it on the air once. That, and what did she say? That it wasn't what you were saying. That's not what she said at all. Do you guys remember what she said? All right, can I get off Benji now? Yeah, she Dominic, said she was thank you. It. I saw you on Larry King. I got a tape of it, and... Uh, Gain some weight. <laughs> I have now he's now too weight. skinny? Robin, he's become so thin. You know what a prune looks like? <laughs> he's like a, he looks like someone stuck a pen in him. Oh, you no. think I look he's too deflated? thin now, really? Yeah, you, you look better heavier, maybe. I don't, you don't, but your health is probably better, so I'm happy for you. All right, goodbye. All right, Dominic, there he is. Anyway, Howard, so do you Gary, think you could tell the difference between an $800 bottle of wine and a $200 bottle of wine? You know, I'm not that sophisticated, but the wine was very good. 
Robin, could you? Eight hundred and two hundred? You think? Not a good two hundred dollar bottle of wine. Uh, Listen, I'm not that you, good. I told you. This is a real quick story. I've said it on the air before. They're a very famous uh, couple who are authors. And they write only about wine. They are wine experts. Not they the can, ones Benji fucked. No. no. These are considered oh. two of the top people. I remember I bought their book. Like, Rob and I tried to learn something about wine. I learned less than she did. But um, anyway, I'm reading the book. And the guy starts off the book by saying that him and his wife were searching for a great bottle of wine. They were in wine country. They go to this place. They found a bottle of wine. And they didn't make a lot of money. And they said, this is the most expensive bottle of wine. They had to buy it. They had to try it. They're, after all, wine experts. It's part of their job. It's almost a tax write-off for them. And they bought the bottle of wine. They said, we'll save it for a special occasion. Well, they waited like a year. Special occasion shows up. They drink it. They said it was the best bottle of wine they had ever experienced in their life. Wow. What they didn't realize was they opened the wrong bottle. <laughs> and it was, Robin, I told you this story. No, you didn't. Yeah. It was I never a, heard this. The, the wine was a $10 bottle of table wine from... Um, <laughs> I can't now remember the name. Uh -huh. I t I've told this story once on the air, and I'll look up the name. I went out and bought the $10 bottle of wine because they said, we were fooled. We are wine experts. We spent <laughs> our lives on this. And to show you how sometimes this can all be bullshit, yeah. we thought this $10 bottle of wine was the best wine we'd ever had. We have to be honest about it. Nothing is bullshit. Right. It's all, you know, who knows what the value of any bottle of wine is. Right. It's what people can get for it based on their marketing and distribution yeah. and, you know, the value of their name. Anyway, so Gary gave it to you on the wrap-up show. This is another wine thing that's gotten you oh, in trouble. Geez. Here's Robin getting blasted. I mean, wow. Why do I even bother to try? All right, here you go. This is really Robin. <laughs> Just because we both got you wine for your birthday? Is Listen this to what Gary says. And by the way, I had heard this rap off there. He'd come to me about this. Really? And uh, I didn't know he was going to go on the air with it. I don't know what's going on around here. I was really angry in the office this morning. And be, this is totally real. I bought Howard a birthday present, and I brought it on Monday, the day of his birthday, and I put it in my office, and I just happened to mention to Howard when I was there earlier, hey, I just want to let you know, I got your birthday present. I'll just have Tracy get it over to your house. And I said, you know, I explained what the wine was. It took all of 20 seconds. He said, thank you, and it was great. Robin announced that she was bringing him wine. So we did that whole wrap on the air. So we know that Robin's bringing him wine, or, the, or that's what the present is going to be. Ronnie walks in this morning like he was her uh, cabin boy. Like Robin walked in in a full-length leather coat with mink or some chinchilla or something around the edges. And Ronnie was carrying these two big boxes. Robin puts them down on Howard's console right before the show. So there they are. You know, so now Howard knows he's got the wine. Now Robin insists that he opens it up on the air. We know it's wine. You know, I think it's just slowing down the show. And I don't understand what the big show of the gift was about. And I thought, yeah, she kept saying, go inside. There's like a big payoff. Yeah, the payoff is, is a, a note that says these bottles were handpicked by Robin, which they weren't. <laughs> and, you know, it's wine. It's a wonderful gift. But I don't know what all the fanfare was about. So you took it on the chin <laughs> twice now about wine. About wine. I think I'm giving it up yeah, because it enough. just causes me trouble. <laughs> you, know, you, you have to go to a new drink. <laughs> no more wine for you. Uh, so uh, there you go. You want to answer, Gary, uh, for any no, reason if why? if he feels that way, I'm sorry. Good for you taking I the high road. wanted you to open the wine and read the note. That's well, all. he took great offense. Mm. Both. I don't wait, understand. Wait, wait. It I slowed could, the whole suit down. I could have said, Howard, I want you to open my wine. Right. And the big payoff was, this is the wine that you said you love that you couldn't find, and I somehow found it for you. And I could have, but, but I don't know why we would do that on the air. In other words, you're saying you can't understand why Robin had me open it on the air. We knew it was wine. Wait, we knew it was like, wine, and we knew she handpicked it. Okay. What? Well, no, you were claiming that it didn't handpick. Well, you probably had some help, but okay, but fine. Say, say I'm off on that. That's a minor detail. Why did Howard have to open wine on the air that we knew was wine? <laughs> I just wanted you to know it wasn't a last-minute gift. I had done that a while ago. Ah, right. <laughs> right what? I don't know. I had you enough guys with wine. just love to argue about nothing. I, I don't want to hear about Benji anymore. I want to hear about wine. I'm done with wine. I love wine, but uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I had a great night with all. Oh, don't thank me. Except for Robin. God, I hate you now. <laughs> Robin. Oh, God, yes. How are you doing about this whole wine thing? <laughs> this is not a good day for me. I don't want to talk about it. Ben, so how did uh, how'd the dinner go the other night? 
with Howard and everyone? I thought it was fun. I thought I had a good time. I thought everyone had a great time. But uh, apparently it wasn't as great as I thought it was. And what was it with eating so slowly? I, I use food as a drug. So if I'm out at a social occasion and I'm, you know, I'm eating, I enjoy the social occasion. It's when I'm alone or in a confined situation that I'm picking out. So I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not the pig I am on air or at home that I am out in a social restaurant. How was the wine? Did you even try it? I, I had a sip and it was great. It the was wine's good. not your thing? No, I, it was, uh, this is too convoluted of a thing to really get into. I mean, it was, they poured me wine. I was going to have it towards the end, but someone said, oh, you're not drinking. Let me just have the glass. So I let them have it. So you had a good time at dinner? Yes, I thought so. <laughs> like, I, I thought it was great. Do you feel bad about all this, the, the way Howard took it? Well, I guess it would have been kind of neat experience if he came on and said, the best guest in the world is Benji. I've never had such a great dinner in my life. But, uh, you know, that didn't it's not that big of a deal. Man. <laughs>
uh, child support I was, I would have bought you a guitar like McCartney did. But, you know, I can't. So, and I'm going to say this cupcakes. box cost easy 100 bucks. You know, McCartney didn't buy me that guitar. McCartney... Had the, it. had the station go out and buy the guitar, yeah. and then really? he signed it. Oh, God. Yeah, so that's why I was like, maybe it's not as valuable as we think it is. You know, and I think that what happened was it's got Greenstein really wanted to give you a present, so he got the guitar and got McCartney to sign it. Okay. Well, anyway, I, I have it hanging up. I'm very happy with it. I mean, it is what it is. It's a guitar right. signed by Paul McCartney. When Paul handed it to me, I thought he was giving me his guitar signed. <laughs> you understand? Like, that yeah. would have been oh, yeah. amazing. I don't know if I should be so blown out. Yeah. Well, still, he's one of the Beatles. Are you kidding? But he signed something that essentially has nothing to do with the Beatles. Right? Am I right? Yeah. Well, I don't mean to be petty about my gift, but I'm not but sure you it's a It has something to do with the Beatles because he signed it. But what? What? He never played it. That's but what I he mean. Signed it. He touched it. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're being what we call yeah. in the neighborhood a jerk off. Right. Am I being a jerk off? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, Bob McCartney gave you a signed guitar. But it's not his guitar. To you. It's, Shit, are you kidding? People would be happy if they got a business second. card from him. <laughs> right. I mean, Metallica you, signed a guitar to me, but it was Metallica's guitar. Uh, yeah. They well, aren't the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. like he's going to go, hey. oh, Howard, here's the guitar from Shea Stadium when we first right. came over here. Yeah, that's the one I want. Yeah. <laughs> Someone I could use. By the way, Brett Michaels told me to say hi to you. I was on a show with him yesterday, and he was going to try and get in here, but he said McCartney was here. <laughs> and he was signing a guitar yesterday on uh, the strategy room, but it was uh, Guitar Hero. Uh, I see. <laughs> He's the character on there. Did you read about this kid who plays Guitar Hero? He's 15. His father got him out of school. He, he, his son now practices 10 hours a day of Guitar Hero because they think that it might work into a business. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting you. I just read about this. I mean, what is that? I can see maybe the guy says, hey, my son's good on the real guitar, and I want him to be a, a, a I, musician. I'm going to let him. He doesn't like school. I'm going to let him practice all the I mean, who would, would you let? Your kids all went through school, right? Yeah. Hey, speaking of your kids, you know, Sarah Silverman, who loves you. Oh, boy. Oh, she Jess, attacked uh, yeah. Jess. Yes. Did I you know. hear it? Yes, I did. Which I had to play it and remind people, and then you could comment. But if you don't mind, I'd like to know. Sarah Silverman, a very talented comedian who's a friend of mine, she came in here and she blasted Bob's daughter. And I'm going to play for you. Where is that, uh, Gary? It didn't blast me. No, did not blast you, and that's most important. Where is, uh, where is the clip now? Gary Page wanted purple. Gary, page one in what? Purple. Purple. Okay, here we go. They write this crappy shit, you know, what a gossipy stuff about Jimmy and I in Star Magazine. That's what the Star Magazine does, whatever. Right. And I look at who writes it. It's fucking Robert Schimmel's daughter. I was going to ask right, you about that. she's working there. <laughs> and I'm like, what a scumbag move. I know, I, but like... That she, I know that that's her job. First of all, I don't know why Jessica. anyone would be, why Jessica is, that would be proud of having a job like that. Like, what are you, you want to be a writer? That's not going to make you a writer. You're not going to graduate from there and do something, you know? Well, that's I not mean, true. That's uh, not they're true. They're the highest paid reporters. Reporters? Well, whatever. So <laughs> then I go, I can't believe that Jessica would write about, like, comedians of all people. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm friends it's with her father. I love her father. I don't know if she's angry at her father, and this is some way, I, I don't know, you know, what what is going on. But it was it was totally untrue, and it was a real... It was just so gross. I couldn't believe it was her. It was like my. But, it was like having, like, my own daughter, like, write something shitty. You know what I mean? But like, the real thing... No, she didn't stop there. I'm going to let you comment after I finish. Let me, let me, this is okay. an addition. You to should try this blue cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's scumbaggy. So then when, like, somebody called her on it, she was like, oh, I didn't even write that. That's like a colleague just used my name. That's what they do sometimes. Because they that way the buck never stops anywhere. Oh but gosh. you know what? She should still be held responsible for it because then maybe she'll keep someone from using her name in an article. It's what? so... Ugh. What that sounds like bullshit. Yeah, I mean, well, does that really happen? They just use a colleague. I mean, thing? I'm That's just, I'm excuse. bummed that Schimmel's daughter is a weasel. That's all. It's yeah. a bummer to me because I always really liked him. Now, I love my daughter. I know you love your daughter more than anything. You, you're a very good father. Did it, how did you learn about this, and what do you want to say about it? How that? did I learn about it? Yeah. Um, well, I think my uh, email mailbox exploded. Um, <laughs> you mean it actually yeah. physically exploded? Yeah, I, mean, I got a lot of emails and people but. calling up going, what is going on? And I called her up, and I said, Jess, you know, what's, go what's happening? And she said, Dad, you know what? I don't tell you what to do. Don't tell me what to do. This is my job. She said, I wrote this article, like, 
four months ago, why right. she would bring it up that much later. She said, is she harboring that for that long? And I said, you know what? I don't want to be in the middle of it. I love Sarah. I think she's really funny. Right. You know, I don't get in the middle of people's things. And, uh, you know, you should. why didn't you think of me when you do that? And she said, why? You don't think of me when you talk about my shit when you're on Howard. You tell my whole life on there. So. I see. Right. So do you think in a way she was giving you a dig? Your no, I think she was doing her job. That they wanted her. That they, I mean, she was asking if I knew anything about why they broke up. And I said, I wouldn't. I don't know anything. Right. And I wouldn't ask anybody. I don't even remember what the article was. Why, why did she say they she broke up? She said that she was... I don't know. I think it said something about that she was depressed that they broke up or something. Right. Nothing really crazy. It right. wasn't. I, Wait a minute. Know. Was that the article about the fat guys? I'm oh, not yeah, sure. I don't Sarah's know. in love with fat guys. And right. That's he, what she, she was, was looking at fat guys on the computer yeah. and he came in on her. Oh, no, that's uh, Mike Walker. No, yeah, that wasn't. It's just. hard because, you know, you want to see your daughter be successful. By the way, a lot of people I know come out of tabloid journalism and have done quite well. Yeah. Judith Reagan got her mm -hmm. own publishing company out of that. So, I mean, you don't know. So it's a tough one for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, have you seen Sarah since uh, her comments? No, I haven't, uh, right. and not I'm not intentionally. We just haven't crossed paths. Right. But, uh, Do you think she's going to unload on you when she sees you? Uh, she probably would bring it up. Did you say to your daughter, "Listen, for my sake, please, no more articles about Sarah Silverman or any of my friends"? Sounds said, like Jess doesn't want to hear that. Yeah, she yeah. doesn't want to hear it. But I said, "Do me a favor and just, you know, there are other people to talk about than comedians." <laughs> a comedian embargo. Yeah, I so mean, sweet. I don't know why she would do that, but you know yeah. what? She's my kid, and but I'm not my daughter's keeper. I didn't tell her to do that. I can't bail her out of it. Strong words, weasel. Uh, weasel's better than the C word. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. Uh, you know, By the way, I got to tell you, finger. I have to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, New Year's Eve. Um, what is going on New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve. Uh, Melissa fell asleep around 9.30. I, I, we've been together for what, like eight years, nine yes, years? This is your mm -hmm. wife. I've never, yes. I, for some reason, I don't know why, I've never gotten laid on New Year's Eve. She... She's gotten her period every time <laughs> while the ball's dropping. Aren't you usually and, working too, Bob, though? Do yeah. you work New Year's? But I was home this time because I thought, you know, maybe uh, I could do it once before um, I leave this earth. And, um, <laughs> yeah, good idea. She's asleep. So I go out to Albertsons to pick up some stuff, and I look at, I'm in the car, and I look at my watch, and it's one minute to 12. Right. So I just put on the radio, and I say, you know what? I'm going to be in the parking lot. It's going to be New Year's Eve, and then I'll just drive back home. I'm like two blocks away. All of a sudden, two cop cars like swarm in on me. Wow. Lights on. Scary. The speaker, put your hands on the dashboard. Wow. And they walk over, you know, with their hands on the sides. What are you doing out here? Did I said, I just went shopping. And they said, on New Year's Eve, at, at midnight, right. you're in an Albertson's parking lot. <laughs> Do you have any dope on you? Uh, you know, can we? And I said, no. And the guy goes, give me your license or registration. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. Hi. They go walk away. And then the guy comes back and he goes, Robert Schimmel. He goes, did I hear you on Howard Stern with your daughter? And I said, yeah. He goes, get the fuck out of here. And that was it. Oh, Let me God. go. So you saved me. That's, that's it. And so you missed fucking your wife yeah. on New Year's Eve. Why didn't you well, fuck the cashier at uh, that place? <laughs> that's, that, that's what I was I, uh, He's not really my type. You and, didn't like uh, that guy. Yeah, no. Are you doing all right? I'm doing great. I see you very, very thin. Robin sees you. No, thin. I'm we doing. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. I, I think just, he looks the same. I mean, you know, he's he always. The same. He's a thin guy, but I don't thin. think he looks yeah. any. Are you different? eating enough? Do you yeah. get enough food? Yeah, you do. You're, you're really helping me tremendously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's what at all. people want to yeah, hear. For all the people in LA that are going to hear this later, wow, it sounds like Schimmel's sick again. So <laughs> let's cancel any plans we have. You know, we don't know what to say to you and Artie. We're always getting you into trouble. That's right. Are you are you uh, doing now political humor? I mean, there's not. I mean, I, I figured you're anti-Bush for sure, right? Yeah. You were, right? Yes. But you never got into any of that stuff, did you? You ever get into that? No, I tried a couple of times, uh, you know, talking about stem cell research and those things and uh, got in a lot of trouble on stage. It's not my thing. People don't want to hear it from you. No, they don't. They, they reject it. Why? Why can't you be political like, one of, like Bill Maher or something? <laughs> you don't want to be why? like Omar? Yeah. Probably the same reason why I can't do regular material on this show for the last 10 years, and i got to talk about how my family's falling apart. Otherwise, <laughs> is your family not. falling apart? Well, I do have to tell you that uh, <laughs> you getting a everything is great now. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> how you doing? There were so many repercussions after the last time I was on. It was unbelievable. Why? What did you do? Well, I was on with Melissa. It was a year ago almost. Yeah. Okay, uh, so remember, when... Melissa was here. I was here in February when the book you came out. You were here with your wife, I remember. What yeah, could but you... they so were she was sitting trouble. here, Yeah, and then Jess came out. Right. 
and then you brought up the pottery guy and said, "Is you know, so what's with that guy?" And I said, "Oh no, that's over." <laughs> now she's fucking the yoga instructor. <laughs> so the yoga instructor and the wife were listening to the show. Oh. Oh. And you asked her that thing about kill one, fuck one, marry one, the yoga right. instructor, the next door neighbor. Right. Okay. I'm going to give you an F, marry, kill. The pottery guy, the yoga instructor, and your hot neighbor, the girl. You have to F one of them, you have to marry one of them, you have to kill one of them. Go ahead. Uh... I guess Kelly would be the one that I would be with. You'd fuck or you'd marry. No, I guess I would marry Kelly. You know, that's so screwed mm. up. But I, I don't want to. I would kill the pottery instructor. Well, that's good. And you'd, you'd sleep with the yoga guy. I guess fuck. I would sleep if, I, if it was just a one time thing. I so guess you would, would fuck the yoga the, guy. Well, He's because probably I, listening right now. <laughs> These people live in Calabasas. It's. it's some of them have never been to Hollywood Boulevard or Sunset. Right. They think this shit is real. And <laughs> I know they don't see it as entertainment value. Right. And then you got neighbors that all of a sudden you're not invited to the card party or the pool so party. So you were an outcast in the neighborhood. Uh, have you been ostracized? Yeah. Some people are going, you know, please don't talk about us when you go on there. Right. Yeah. They don't want to hear it. This you... is everywhere you go. Your family says it. Your neighbors say it. Yeah, and your yeah. ex-wife says it. <laughs> my ex-wife. My ex-wife is hitting me for so much money now. Wait, but I thought you divorced. How could she we hit are. you for money? Because they could always come back and revisit and uh, go for more child support. Right. And I am giving her so much right now that literally I, could, I couldn't even afford to get divorced again. Right. I mean, if I went home and caught Melissa and bed with like three guys at the same time basically all i could do is say everyone's set with drinks and snacks and everything i mean I, <laughs> but you but you worked through all of this in the court you paid you, your divorce was finalized yeah, but it's not over no it's not it's because your child support. child support is never finalized wow aren't your kids in their 30s now oh that's yeah, jessica's 30 right and uh we'll see if she turns 31 after this thing now today and uh at least she's supporting herself yeah I'll my daughter's her uh Aaliyah's 18. I have a son that's nine, one that's five, one that's three and a half. Jesus Christ. You just do not let up on yourself, do you? No. 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 Man. No. I think you maybe your theory is right. You yourself into yes. this situation. Is your, uh, how are you doing with your wife, though? The, the, the present wife, are you, is she cheating? Uh, I don't think so. You don't know for sure. I, you don't whoever so. knows for sure. Do I, you, uh, uh, do you keep tabs on her? Do you ever, uh, like one of our guys, Sal, caught his wife getting text messages from a guy, 143, I love you, 143. <laughs> I mean, the poor bastard is like uh, beside himself. No, but I did. Uh, it's kind of weird when you're on the road for like two weeks and you come home and the first thing your wife says is nothing physical happened. I, I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, you did know, it really deteriorate. She seems so in love with you. At no, point. she is in love with me. I don't we are we're, we're getting like along it. great. We are. We're getting no along fucking, great. Uh, no fucking on New Year's Eve. I didn't oh, say ever. Right, I mean, it. we did it in June. Um, I worry about you sometimes. You know, I know. I don't no, want you to get so great. depressed that you're I'm not, not funny. depressed. I mean, you know, you got to stay funny that's the, yeah that's the key i'd like to be you're leading me into areas where i can i have to defend myself that i'm not dying like today or <laughs> that my kids are, f are fucking around and, <laughs> and my wife i mean so where is the comedy boy i never heard of a wife being able to ask for more child support yes oh I'm, you've heard of them reopening the these cases, these cases over and over again Gee whiz. nothing physical happened you know i would believe it if it was my ex-wife because if she was a ride at disneyland it would be a ride you wouldn't need a seatbelt for <laughs> well, i've had on. some of the best naps in my life laying on top of my ex-wife. Oh. <laughs> oh. you, are you saying that you think a woman is only good in bed if she moves around a lot? Well, I'd like to, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm impersonating a necrophiliac. <laughs> oh. so. But do you think some of that could be your fault? In other words, maybe the man... Of course she's it's my it. fault. Yeah, I mean, you get on top of her and she goes, oh, I don't even want to move. I mean, this is not fun. I don't even me. have to get on top. I could, all I have to do is say, hey, you want to do it? And they're going, ugh. So it's like, <laughs> are you bad in bed? Am I bad in bed? Yeah. Uh, not when I'm by myself, I'm not. I'm, I think I'm pretty good. Uh, it's just, I hate to see you go to all, all the waste. I mean, you're such a I'm not guy. going to. I'm going to be 59 tomorrow. Wow. Do you want to get off the road? Do you want to stop doing these comedy appearances? Are you How's done with it? No. First of like all, it? I love doing it. Second of all... Gets uh, you out of the house. Yeah, it gets me yeah. out of the house. And, yeah. and I want to be, you know, if I keep going, I could actually literally be the last comic standing. Right. You don't, you don't be, care about the TV show. You want to be the last comic standing in the world. For real. Yeah. I want to be 75 and work in the Funny Bones. Right. So, uh, and also, when you go on the road, it gives your wife a chance to socialize with uh, people. I would yeah. imagine, yeah. 
Anyway, uh, you've got to go see Robert Schimmel's comedy <laughs> special, Life Since Then, on Showtime. That's a big accolade yeah. when you can have a show on Showtime. It's been uh, the last hour special I did was in 2000, right before I got diagnosed. Wow. Isn't this a lot of so pressure for you? Because now when they put it on Showtime, you have to come up with a whole new act when you travel around the country. You can no longer do that act. Right. Am I correct? Yeah. you can. Yeah. I think you could do it once because people want to see you live that's only saw you on Showtime. Right. But the second time around, it's not like a band where you could do the best of. Then they go, we've heard this already. I'm on Conan tonight. Ah. I, uh, we, I taped it. I'm curious to see how much it's going to actually air. What did you do on there? Well, they make you go through standards and practices, and you have to run the whole set. It's a whole different uh, set of rules on No, it really is. Yeah. And they're really great to me there, but, you know, standards and practices are really, really sensitive. So I was going to do this thing about... Um, me going to Puerto Vallarta and going parasailing, and that I'm standing on the beach wearing a parachute like a mental patient, right. and then this rope pulls me into the water and up in the air, and when I'm up there, I get diarrhea, and I'm shitting on the, you know, while I'm in the air. And they said, oh, no, no, no. You can't say mental patient. No. <laughs> you can't wow. say mental patient. Wow. Yeah. You didn't because even get they're afraid. No, the diarrhea thing's right. okay. Yeah. The mental patient, forget it. Wow, no kid, I'm shocked by that. Yeah, so then I get on there, and, you know, Conan says, have fun. And so I <laughs> think fun. he really means it. So oh. I go out there. Right. And I said that uh, my wife, we were in Maui, she wanted me to go on a three-man sub with her. And I said, the way my life works, this guy's going to take me to the bottom of the ocean, stop the sub, and say, you know, here's the part where one of you guys blow me or we're not going anywhere. <laughs> and, and you don't know my wife because she'd be going, Bob, you better hurry up because we're going to miss the luau. And I didn't run that by them. And I looked at the audience and I said, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever had sex on a submarine, but my ears were popping like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> well, I got off and they said, what? you didn't run that by us. Right. Well, you didn't. And I said so. And they said, "Well, you're you're you know hinting that you had sex with a guy." <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, but he wasn't a mental patient." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are so right about this standards and practices thing. I read a thing in the paper. Will Ferrell was promoting a new movie, uh, a play, a play and, on Broadway. And yeah. in the and in the commercial, he says douchebag. Uses the word douchebag. Now, I know because I've been through the mill with the word douchebag. I used to yeah. say it on the radio in Washington. Yeah. When I came to New York, they stopped me from saying douchebag. They took Will Ferrell's commercial. They pulled it off the air. No douchebag. Can't say that. And I was very shocked by that with the first time it ever happened to me. I mean, what do you mean you can't say douchebag? What's a douchebag? They go, well, that's a bag where women put in, uh, <laughs> Douche. in their vagina yeah. and this and that. I said, you're being a little too literal, I think. Yeah, no, I mean, they really do. Because actually the beginning of the bit was that I was claustrophobic and that I can't even go on the sub at Disneyland. <laughs> and uh, that doesn't even go underwater. And I said, now they changed it, and it's like ne it's the Nemo ride. It's the same fucking <laughs> sub from when Disney was still alive. They just have a different color fish they shake in front of the window. <laughs> so there's like a line, and it says two hours from here. So I said, to, when I was running the set, I said, I told my kid, I'm not waiting in this line. If you want to go on this ride, you better start stuttering or limping or something. Because I, and then he was like, you know, I did Nemo. They said, no, 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 no. You can't do that because somebody might call and say, hey, my kid's like that, and that's not funny. Right. I can't believe you're still at that phase of your life where you're going to Disneyland, Nemo, all this. Stuff. I have a five-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old. You're too old for this stuff. No, I'm not. Yeah, of course. I'm too old for this stuff. I'm younger than you. This is too much for me to, to even comprehend. When was the last time you were at Disneyland? Uh, never. There you go. Hey, uh, so you're going on Conan. You yeah. taped it already. Yeah. Now, are you allowed on Kimmel now that Sarah's mad at you? I think maybe um, you'll be banned. No, no. I, actually, I got asked to be on there, and I don't think that there's a connection between that. And, the, and I don't think he connects me to Jess, just like she doesn't. All right, let's see. Because, really. I don't know, because Sarah has it in for you and your daughter. Not for me. Yes, well, not for you, but indirectly, she's got to take it out on you. I think you're in big trouble. Okay, well, uh, what, what else is you? new? Uh, Bob Schimmel, uh, as I was saying, a comedy special, Life Since Then, this month on Showtime. That's a big deal. What's that, an hour? It's an hour. Premiered last an night. Hour. Yeah. The DVD of Bob's special is available at Amazon.com. Yeah, thanks to all you pirates out there. They're releasing the DVD the same time the special comes out. And Bob's <laughs> book, Cancer, on $5 a day, is still available on paperback. It just came out on paperback. Right, right. It was available in hardcover, uh, and now, now it's paperback. in paperback. And uh, let's take a couple of phone calls. Hi, Matt. You're on the air. Bob Schimmel is here, and you're in Pasadena, California, Matt. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, apologize for something I said to Bob like 10 years ago. 
What'd you say? Well, I was in a comedy club. I don't even remember this, Bob. It was in uh, Rhode Island, and I'm in a wheelchair. I had kind of, I'm a comic. I kind of had the run of the place, and I was totally wired out of my tits. And uh, I went in there, and I was trying to prove, I guess, that I was a comic. I had worked with Lenny Clark the night before, and he got out of doing this interview by saying he had a thing the next day with uh, early in the morning for kids with cancer. And I go, I go to Bob, I go, can you imagine that? Kids with cancer, does it get any better than that? And it wasn't until the next day when I sobered oh, up God. that I realized, holy shit, he was looking at me like, are you an asshole or an idiot? You know, most What kind of thing is that? Bob. I don't even understand the story. It's well, crazy. It's the most famous thing, if you only know one thing about Bob, is that he did this incredible bit about his kid dying of cancer. Yeah, I know that. But uh, Yeah, it was on this show. It's yeah. that, that's the only place I ever did it. Yeah, but we feel very honored, by the way. Yeah. That Bob would do that here. But anyway, I'm really sorry, Bob. I don't All know right, remember. thank you, man. That's okay. You know what? I don't. I didn't even remember that you did it. And I, I, and I don't, you don't know don't what wired it. out of your tits means, really. Yeah, that's a, that sounded very strange to me. And quite frankly, from a guy. Yeah, I don't think you really let the audience affect you when you go around the country doing these shows, do you? No, well, I don't want people to be offended. I thought he was going to say that he was offended that I did a joke about a wheelchair and that he came over and he was in a wheelchair. But uh, no. I almost fell asleep during his story, quite frankly. I, I, <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. Uh, so anyway. I'll tell you who texted me, though. Um, Taya Parker. Taya Parker? Penthouse Pet of the Year. She, I hosted the Exotic Dancer Awards when she won. So she started texting me going, I'm going to be on Howard Stern. She said, why don't you fly into New York and go on with me? And uh, Melissa was like, no, you're not going to go on with a stripper. On t you know, every time you say we have problems, you're going to show up with her. And she texted me yesterday and good said, you. good luck on there. Do you She's do that, a really nice girl. Do you do that with your wife to make her jealous, that kind of thing? No, because she knows that Taya would never do anything, and neither would I, because I can't afford to. I right. can't. No, you, you, you can't, not with what you're paying out. I know, like, Sports guys that pay less than I do. Well, Why are you sure? I don't because they could get, Yeah, yeah they mean, pay well, less than I do. Why did you? What, what, what does your lawyer say about that? Did you say to him? I know rappers who pay less. Yeah, um, he said, you know, you don't have any money to pay me to ask me any questions anymore. <laughs> so this guy has like a twenty-five thousand dollar retainer, and then he calls me up and says, "Who do you like in the playoffs?" And I said, "Is the clock running?" Because <laughs> they charge like crazy money just to read a letter. Oh, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, yeah. it's 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 a nightmare once you get involved. Yeah. In that stuff. And well, she's, you know, my 18-year-old moved back in with me, so she lives with me now, right. and Vicky only has Jacob. And to want more money for him, where there's no way she's spending that kind of money on him. 120 a year. She's living with a guy. Right. And when I performed in Vegas last time, um, Jessica called me up and she said, you know, Mom is coming up to Vegas with her boyfriend. And I said, so? She goes, I hope you don't run into her. And I said, you know how big Vegas is, and there's a lot of people here. <laughs> and Melissa was going to come up to surprise me. And mm. Melissa and Vicky don't really get along. And uh, if they would have wound up together in the lobby of the hotel, it would have beat the uh, Oscar De La Hoya fight. And uh, <laughs> Why don't they get along? Mother why don't they get along? Bad, no, huh? they, it's because they, why? Because both of us put her in the middle. I see. So and that's bad. They don't want to be there. She had to choose. So then Lee calls me up and goes, okay, this is fucked up. Now, I wasn't supposed to tell you this. Melissa's on her way up here with the kids, driving up. Right. And Vicky's on her way up here with the boyfriend. And I said, so what? So what? <laughs> Vicky's staying at the hotel I'm performing at. <laughs> And I'm coming into the lobby from press. I'm on the marquee. I'm on a billboard on the 15 freeway. Why would she want to do that? She's angry with you. Why would she want I to I walk in. There she is with the yeah. boyfriend who I never met. This guy's living in my house. And right. she goes, what a surprise. What yeah, a surprise. it would be a surprise if you ran into me in the ladies' room at Circus Circus. Not <laughs> here in the hotel that I'm working in. Why would you show up here? And... <laughs> And then, I'm not making this shit up. You know I'm not. I know. I... And then I said, I want to meet your boyfriend because I haven't met him. He lives with you. She said, there's no reason for you to meet. And I said, yes, there is. I have a nine-year-old son that lives in the house with this guy, and I've never met him. That's true. So then the guy comes over. I said, you know, I just want to tell you that Aaliyah, my daughter, and Jacob told me that you're a really nice guy, and you treat them really cool, and I really appreciate that. Right. And he said, can I talk to you man to man? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, why? Could, could one of us be a girl? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and he puts his arm around me and takes me like three steps away, but an earshot of Vicky and says, you know, why don't you be a man and step up to the plate and give your money, give some more money to your wife? Because we can't live on what you're sending. Oh! We, we 
can't live on oh, what yeah, you're yeah. sending. Uh, wow. And that's exactly the amount that she's asking for is the amount he asked for in the you lobby at the Monte Carlo. <laughs> so then that wasn't enough. D- does he work, though? I mean, can he uh, help uh, out with, uh, I mean... Why no, would he? Busy. Why would he when yes, they have why a? Would <laughs> why would he when they have a Jew donkey like supporting them? So um, <laughs> he's busy helping. Can to you Jew donkey? Can he's you say to, to the? Spend Bob's I hope my parents don't hear that. Can <laughs> you say to the judge, "Look, I don't believe they need this much money. This the, can you at least appeal? Can you throw yourself Are on you the mercy kidding? of the court? Mercy of the court? Yeah. I spent the night in jail when we were going through divorce. There's no mercy there. Are you kidding? Why did you go to jail when you were going through a divorce? Because. I can't keep my mouth shut. So here's what happened. When they were trying to figure out spousal maintenance and child support, right. her lawyer had a chart on the wall. It was really big. And they picked the year 2000 to pick what income they were going to judge the spousal maintenance and child support on. Oh, 2000 God. is the year that I, mean, I shot a, the they pilot. Have, they have a big chart of all the money you earned on, yes. on the wall. Yes. <laughs> so it's this Robert Schimmel. 1999 to 2000. Right. That's the year I shot my HBO special. Right. I had the record deal with Warner Brothers. They I shot the, best the pilot with career. Fox. They picked the best year of your career. Yeah, and yeah. all the personal appearances. And right. it has that number up there. And underneath, it said Vicky Schimmel, and there was a red zero. Right. And her lawyer <laughs> said, as you can see, Mr. Schimmel earned this amount of money in the year 2000, uh, and Mrs. Schimmel earned nothing. And she said, what does that tell you, Your Honor? And I said, well, it tells me she should get a job, because it looks she's not contributing. Right. I mean, her own lawyer is showing you. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that, they I, threw you in jail for that? Yeah. Contempt of court. Contempt wow. of court. Look I just spend you. the night in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, and now i got to go back to a hearing, and Lee or somebody's going to go with me, because they're afraid to let me go by myself, because I'll get tossed again. Why didn't your lawyer put up a big picture of your wife, what she looked like in, let's say, uh, 1995, and then what she looks like now? And then, and then start, if you want to start making comparisons. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. that doesn't work, especially because we had a female judge. Uh, and, yeah, that uh, would suck with a female judge. Well, female sorry, judge. going through that. I've never no, met, I've never met uh, your first wife. I don't know the boyfriend you know they're probably lovely people they are it's just you know it's a hard situation you know it's a tough situation what are you going to do a lot of people in show business have that story because show business your earnings are so sporadic and then they picked up the best year and then you know well it's not only that have you ever had a year like that since now no i mean for god's sake i haven't had i haven't had three years in a row that have added up to that (laughs) and and they don't know about show business in phoenix that's where the divorce was so when you tell a lawyer wait a minute don't go by that number because I got an agent that gets 10%. Right. I got right. a manager that gets 15%. And you might never have another year like that ever. Yeah. So she oh, said, they're putting up before commission? Gross oh, before Yeah, gross. Com- it's the gross number. Oh, so my the judge God. goes, well, what does your agent do? Well, he procures my work and yeah. he gets 10% for that. Right. She said, well, then what does your manager do? And I said, well, I've been trying to figure that out for like three years. <laughs> then I said, I have a CPA. He charges 5%. Right. That's right. Then reaming. you have the lawyer. Then you have a publicist. Reaming. Then yeah. you have like at least 40% to the IRS. That's so that money. money is just, that's a false number up there. Was the Very judge, false. Did the judge understand that or no? No. Did not understand that. Well, Artie, return the cupcakes. What are you doing? <laughs> the guy needs food. I'll tell you what, if I were him, I'd be like, I'd be like if I got a Danish from the corner. These are, this is a $200 box of cupcakes. If you yeah. were him, you'd be that's heroin, nice to right? say on the air when I'm fighting to tell her I don't have the money to give her. Well, it's a gift. It's Two hundred dollar right. cupcakes. <laughs> no, uh, these, these are a buck fifty tops. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, in fact, uh, as a treat, I'll show you how good these cupcakes are. Howard TV sped up uh, Artie eating your cupcakes mm. in high speed. Oh yeah, really? He just I had two of them. them. He had two of them. Here, look at the, look at the can- look at the screen if you can see it. There, <laughs> and there goes Artie. This is my favorite. Use a napkin. Yeah. Well, you need a napkin. Thank you. you, thank you. <laughs> what am I, an animal? <laughs> While we were doing the interview, here's what Artie was doing. <laughs> All right. Well, good. I don't want to. You know, you guys are talking about serious I, shit. I did an interview yesterday, a phoner with this guy that came back to see us when we did that show up in was it Rhode Island or wherever? Right. Yeah. Not yeah. the not the tent. With Chicopee, the, the Chicopee, Massachusetts, that, like the that, Chinese restaurant place. No, wherever it was where Bill Blumenrice had the bottle of Jack Daniels or whatever is in the yeah, back. Yeah. And he said, I was going to buy or Johnny Walker. Right, Jack, he said, Jack gonna, Daniels. He said, I was going to buy you like the, this best one. And he goes, I, he goes, I don't care. I don't know the difference. <laughs> and he 
You went up there. I don't know how you walked on stage. I was convinced that I was going to be on the liver transplant list right. just from being in the green room with him. Yeah, he drinks a lot. He went up there. He's supposed to do 45. I'm supposed to do 45. Right. He opens with this thing about the N-word where I haven't heard it that many times in my life. Right. And he's the just N-word. going and going and going and going. You don't use the N-word at all in your act? Uh, no. No. You, you use foul language, though. Yeah, I don't think it's foul language. But it's it's language. Uh, appropriate to what I'm talking about. He's a good. He's a really smart, dirty comic, Bob. Right. It's, like, yeah. you know, uh, it's not in the punchline. It's not gratuitous. Right. Yeah. Uh, listen. <laughs> yeah, that was a t- Bill Blumenreich. There's a guy. I've well, I wish lot. I had his money from comedy. Bill yeah, Blumen. he said he could stay at our house, and then he's complaining that he doesn't make money, and he's a, a Rolls Royce in the driveway. Remember that? <laughs> he picked this up in a Bentley. Yeah. Got, this guy promotes comedy. You know, right. picked us up in a Bentley, and he goes, well, you can stay at my house, because we had one gig in Cape Cod. The next gig was in, like, Chicopee, Massachusetts. He goes, you stay at my house in Cape Cod. So we're like, great. He picks us up in a $200,000 Bentley that says comedy on the license. Oh. <laughs> and me and Bob are in the back home. We're on the wrong side of the business. <laughs> he pulls up to a mansion on the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and he's singing the go blues. Be, go be funny, Jew donkey. Uh, yeah, yeah. he's singing the blues. He had a Jew and a guinea donkey. For You're him. not kidding. See Robert Schimmel's comedy special, Life Since Then, on Showtime. Time. I encourage you to see it, to see what a real master is like when he's working at his craft. And the DVD of Bob's special is available at Amazon. That's right. Com. That might actually get me the money to pay my wife. Uh, I doubt it. It sounds like you got a big <laughs> night. Bob, on the road, do you still do this? You take a suit everywhere. He's yeah. real old school. He old takes a school. suit. He's got, you know, the the, 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 the tailored suit pressed I and everything. I like when a com- comic comes out and he wears a suit. It means he's taking his job seriously. Oh, no, yeah. He yeah takes it you're all. in the hands of a professional. That's right. I would like to see you go to that. When you lose a few pounds, you'll get a nice suit I need, and you go out there. I need, we need four of Bob's suits. To Artie, go Artie was so funny <laughs> that night. And you know, he toasts the audience, and that yeah. gives them the message to start sending shots up to the stage. <laughs> and, he no, doesn't, a and he doesn't want to, you know, offend anybody. Right. So He's a gentleman. He just He's drinks gentleman. them. like I mean, they were lining them up on the floor like they were lights Artie, in a runway at Artie the airport. Artie hates to offend. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the DVD of Bob's special is available at Amazon.com. Bob's book, Cancer, on $5 a day. Read it. Real funny. Now available on paperback. Anything with cancer in the title is always a scream. Uh, Bob, I love you, and it's always great seeing you. Good uh, luck. Good luck. Thanks. I hope you make the 120000 this month. <laughs> I really do. I'm pulling for you. Uh, we'll be back right after these words. The great Bob Schimmel, everyone. Robert. Hey, man. How is it being back on the show? Oh, it's great. Are you kidding? A year is too, a year is too long to wait. It really it is. It is, man. Yeah. So you brought cupcakes for Howard's birthday, and yeah. Artie devours them. <laughs> Well, my manager called me and said, you know, Artie loves cupcakes, bring him a cupcake. And I, I knew that McCartney brought a guitar in yesterday, but I can't afford a guitar. I could basically, I was going to try and go to Sammy or Sam Ash and get him like a guitar pick. So uh, I just figured I'd get a dozen donuts and then they could all split them. Make for good. But Howard's been great for me. And, uh, but, you know, in my real life, in my real world where I live, people think that everything in there is absolutely 100% the truth, and uh, some of them don't want to be in show business. <laughs> so you had a good time today, man? I had a great time. Great. Thanks for stopping. First time in, like, five or six years that I was alone without Jessica. Oh, really? Let me look at Paul McCartney. There look at he this. is. Look at you. Hello. You got a guitar. <laughs> a very merry on birthday to you, to you. A very merry on birthday to Howard. Hey, oh, you that's for you, man. That's a gift. Oh, it's a nice. birthday gift. Where wow. am I going? Get the hell out of here. To the couch. To the couch. On the couch? <laughs> to Howard. Happy birthday, Paul McCartney. Very is this nice. one of your base bases? No. Oh. <laughs> what is it's you yours. Just that up? No, really. Was this, where'd you get this base? Um, it's me and the crew here. Wow. Concocted. It's for your fourth column. But what is this uh-huh. base? Tell me so I understand what I have here. My it, hands. It is a Hofner base, similar to the one that I play. Right. And, and, uh, and I'm going to I am going to cherish that. I yeah, hope so. I recognize it. You know, I mean, I really have this unbelievable feeling about you, and I'm honored you would be here today. Yeah. And I'm so happy you're here. I even went home last night, listened to your new record. Yeah. Fantastic. I was playing some tracks from it this morning. I think you, I think you had a home run with this. Key. You're well, who's this guy? something with this music. You should keep with you it. You think so? <laughs> Stick with it. The guy youth, right? <laughs> That's the guy you work with. Yeah. And the, the, but it's a, it, the project 
is called what? Fire? Yeah, what Fire. we do, it, it started a long time ago, and uh, we decided to kind of go under a pseudonym, me and him. He's a DJ kind of clubby yeah. kind of guy. Right. He wants to do a mix for me. So we decided we'd go in the studio and just have fun. Right. And not work. Right. So we, we concocted this idea of the fireman. So we went in, and we kind of made sort of like clubby ding a dong a ding a dong a ding a dong music. Right. We just made a couple of albums like that. No vocal tracks. No vocal tracks. Right. But so this time we went in, we said, let's do it again. This time we went in, we started, he started saying to me, well, what about a vocal, man? Right. I said, uh, I haven't got a song. He says, yeah, well... But do you sit there and write a lyric? No, so I just stood up at the mic, and we had the track going, you know, kind of, we, yeah. we got a groove going. And I just stood up at the mic and went, Well, it's somebody, yeah, yeah, okay, now, well, we are. And just started throwing things at it, you know. And then I'd hear a bit of a lyric, or we'd look in a poetry book or something, and we'd see, Silent lovers, oh, yeah, angels smiling. So I, we just started to concoct it and put it together and paste it. That's it. how you do it? You don't yeah. sit down and write something down in well, a book? And no. So that's the fireman. That's the whole thing about the fireman. He can do anything. I think it's real good stuff. Thank I, you. I like it a lot. I've, I, I played a couple of tracks this morning for everyone, and, I, and I'll play some more. But uh, it's exciting for me to see you making new music and oh. to put your voice down on there. It's good. It, you're, you're doing a good thing. Have you ever gotten into a slump with music? Have you ever said, you know, I need to be away from it for a while, or has it always been you there know, for you? I, I'm very lucky. That doesn't really happen. You kind of think it will. Mm -hmm. Why you are know. so many of the songs deal with the light? In other words, I see references to light shining through. Mm -hmm. And my theory was, I was being a psychologist, you went through a dark period, shitty marriage, which, by the way, who told you to get the prenup? Do you remember? Stop it, Howard. When you were on my show. <laughs> Let's not say I told you so. I'm going to do a little I told you so. You said to me, I know I'm in love. I said, and you told me a whole story how an owl told you yes, and this is the right move. Do you remember the owl story? No. You, you, you forgot. Everything. I deny everything. <laughs> and I said to you, never mind an owl. I want you to get a prenup. And you said, some people believe in love, and some people believe in romance. Oh, you don't no care about prenup. that. No prenup. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, of course you got to do one. Come on. No, man. Do hey, well, didn't Michael Douglas do one and then he's kind of canceled he it? He ripped it up. Yeah. But yeah. he said cool. that doesn't count. He's insane. Yeah, but he's yeah. 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 He's not he a might, beetle. You know what? He right. might just be in love. Yeah. I, if I was you, I'd find that owl, and I know you're a vegan, but I'd Strangle eat that owl. <laughs> I, if once you make an exception, and eat the bird. Oh, oh, but, um, <laughs> I was worried, you know, because I, I said all these references to light. Yeah. It says almost you're saying now there's a light shining on me. I'm free. Yeah, I feel better. Well, you know, I'm the happy. thing is, when you do a project like The Fireman, because you're not actually sitting down and crafting the song, I think what happens is, psychologically, I think stuff that's just in you comes out, because that's all you've got to, to pull on. So yes. I think love and light and, you know... And it's a darker, edgier album than you, I think, you've ever put out. And yeah. I think it's because you went through a dark place. And sometimes, creatively, that's maybe what you need. You know, that could be, that could be true. Maybe I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. The, the eventual birth of something good. Hey, by the way, I feel now yeah. that uh, there is almost like... A TV show going on in front of our eyes, The Bachelor, starring Paul McCartney. <laughs> Everyone's trying to date you now. No, I don't know about that. Well, hold it a second. Are you? Well, uh, Robin is, and I'll get to that in a minute. He's after me. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of girls here that actually want to throw themselves at you. But here, here's the thing. There was a period of time after the divorce, I saw you dating Renee Zellweger, a couple of dates with her, who I think is attractive. I like her. Maybe Sweet she's, girl. you know, she's good to me. I, Mrs. Paul McCartney, Mrs. Renee Zellweger, well, you know, I like that. Zellweger McCartney? I thought Zellweger McCartney might work out. <laughs> I saw I saw Christy Brinkley, when I saw you over the summer, yeah. she was throwing herself at you. Throwing herself at you. Howard, Paul, you, you know what, Howard? You one. read too many newspapers. <laughs> oh, uh, this is it. See, I'll tell you, you want to know the truth about that? Yeah. I was at, uh, they had a series of concerts out in East Hampton. I was there. You were there. I saw you. And, um... At one of these, uh, my nephew, who I went with, right. Lee, right. he just sort of said, oh, Chrissy's over there. Do you want to say hi? Yes. So I go, yeah, sure. You know, so, you know, I've known her over the years, sure. Billy, Billy's wife, and right. when she was Billy's wife. So I just went over and said, hey, how are you doing, Chrissy? And I did it. Mwah, mwah. And they photographed. And they photographed it. it. <laughs> so then the next thing, you know, Paul makes up to Chrissy. Wow, it's the big new thing. It was all over the English newspapers. 
And then, same thing happened with Renee, really. She was a friend of a friend, and we got, I went to a lunch where she was. And so then, you know... But um, hold it. The but thing aren't with you Renee, trying to meet these people? You go to a yeah. lunch with her? You're more social than you've ever been now. I'm a you're social, out you got I'm a social put, person, Howard. No, you have to put yourself out there because you're dating. And you are a man who needs love. This is why I feel very connected to You don't like to be to alone. You. I feel you're very evolved this way. Does anyone like to be alone? Uh, no. I and think, I feel you know, guys like uh, romance. You love. never made oh, well, I do, anyway. You never made out with Renee Zellweger? I did not. And now, Howard, you're going there again. <laughs> yeah, I remember last time I came on the though? show. She's fine. She's a very nice person. But not your type. No, I mean, we just... We the date sort of, didn't work out. We wasn't like that. But it is like that. No, it isn't. If romance. you Howard, like her, you I was out there. there again. I was there. Are I you was attracted the guy. to her? Are you attracted to her? I think she's a very nice person. But you would not go out with I her? I think you're a very nice person. Would you go out with me? No. I would. I would uh... Uh, was there a thing with Rosanna Arquette? <laughs> yeah, now, Rosanna Arquette, that was the other one. There were some ladies in that, during that summer right. that I did date. and uh, I would you know, love to have sex very... with her. Roseanne Arquette. But Howard, I think you would love to have sex with anyone. <laughs> I mean, who would. or am I wrong? You are right. I thought so. So you were into this whole dating scenario that I was following because Ooh. I'm worried about you. I am. Uh, I want you uh, to find love. Well, I want you to be connected to somebody good. Hmm. I uh, was horribly uh, affected by your divorce. I didn't like what was going on one bit. Mm. And I, was I don't very know vocal if you heard us during that time, but... No, I didn't. I was in England. It probably uh, a good thing, was it? <laughs> you know what I respect uh, about you? You took the high road. You know what, man? I mean, things don't always work out. You're and, you know, me. I, you know, you know that. Right. And um, I like the idea of trying to be kind of reasonably dignified. I don't think it helps to really go mouthing off all the time. And you, the other thing you've got to remember, i got kids, you know. And you got so a daughter. With I, I, got, I got a little baby, yeah. And so that's very much part of the equation. So in truth, what I'm trying to say to you now is I don't really talk about that. Good for you. So should we talk about the fireman? Are you happy? Yes, I'm okay. going to talk about the fireman. Are you, are you uh, happy with this new broad you're with? No. You, who's that? The new woman. The, the, new the, the, the rich one. I like her for you. I'll tell you <laughs> the why. The New Yorker. The New Yorker. I'll oh, tell you why Yorker. I like her for you. Let me, and I'll get off it. But let me tell you why I like this yeah. one. Uh, I don't know her name. Nancy. Mm. I like her. You do she, know her name. I, I, I had to think about it. Why Look. do you like her for him? Because Nancy <laughs> Chevelle. She got her own You money. don't know her name? And that's a good thing. <laughs> Paul's got to be, Sir Paul's got to be very, very nervous about that. Everyone knew her You're a very Nancy. wealthy man. Everyone knew her as Nancy. Yeah, you know the one. I know. Okay, right, right. <laughs> it's all coming true. They said her name was Miguel, but she called herself Lily. You understand what I'm saying. So, so my, my point is, this one, I don't know her from a hole in the wall. What do I know about you and your dating and right. whether she satisfies you sexually? I don't know. What I can only guess. Yeah. I mean, who could satisfy you sexually? You're Paul McCartney. You. You think I could? I've got a feeling, Howard, and that's really why I came on this show. You never made love to a man. <laughs> so, no, I haven't, actually, no. There's a new book out about John that claims... Have you, you read that book? Have you read that? You know, I, that rumor came out a long time ago, mm. and the thing was, the person that started the rumor, the, the book that it was in, right. he didn't know John. Right. And whereas I did. So I, I said to people, you know, around about that time, I said, look, I was on tour with John. I grew up with John. We kind of, we slept in the same bed in right. hotel rooms. We topped and tailed it like kids do, you know, and you're growing right. up. And I said, I never once did I see any hint of that. Now, you know, we spent drunken nights together. Right. I think there would have been a hint don't you? When he's Here's what the guy. Somewhere. Yeah. If he was right. gay, yes. I think there would have just been a hint somewhere. Mm. But it was a rumor started uh, years ago Here's that I think it's a, it's a nice story if you can make it stick. But I don't think it's true Here's at all. what the book claimed. Your sexuality was so powerful over him. He was so enamored of you, so attracted to you almost. Wow. That you could have your way with him, not sexually. Did you feel a power But in business, over him? No. that you had a that that he was sort of at your mercy because he was so in love with you. That was the theory in the book. Well, you know, I mean, I I like that theory. Yeah, <laughs> you wish that could have been true. <laughs> no, man. No, not to have sex, but to be able to control him more because it would have been a little bit easier no, business-wise. But, but Howard, listen, man, yeah. you can make up theories about anything. Do right? you imagine you know? if you were gone and he was here, they'd be saying he had the power over you? <laughs> I, I <laughs> yeah, think that might be very. 
very yeah. true. I right. mean, you know, we can make a belly do that. And that is really, particularly with the Beatles, that's what happens. They just take one tiny fragment of evidence right. and they blow it up into a, a book even, you know? Yes. Now, the thing is, I mean, let's start right here now. Why is she behind that glass? Because she is so... Away from you. Robert That's is right. so powerfully <laughs> attracted Could to I, you no. and the power you have over well, her. That's true. You know what I mean? We, we can make that stick. Sure. Make it stick. Yeah. She's in love with me. Trust me. Uh, you, you wish. Already, oh, come on. He's you already wish. started that rumor. Do you want 30... <laughs> while we're talking about love for a second, yes. before because I want to play some tracks from the record, and, uh -huh. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very complimentary because you did a good job here. And when you do a good job, I'll let you know it. Thank you, Harold. All right. <laughs> now, uh, Robin, do you want to say something to Paul about how you feel about him? Well, and, uh, I just you, you said this morning you would say, like. Go ahead. I'm throwing my hat into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need someone to be with, and I'm here for you. Mm. And uh, I'm a vegan. So we don't have that issue. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> what is going on? I, I mean, I, I'm thinking I'm just coming Paul, on a radio Paul, show. And I this think is, we could be very happy together. It's the together. dating game. I was shocked. I she said she wants you. I think we could be very happy together. Um, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm very flattered. Isn't no, she a perfect, no perfect date for the inauguration? <laughs> <She's> a, <laughs> Take me to the inauguration, Paul, yeah. please. <laughs> Now Artie wants you to, but I'll let him talk about that. Too. He can have his turn later. In all seriousness, there does seem like there's a sweepstakes out there for you. I've, uh, it's a dating sweepstakes. And uh, listen, and you know what I'm going to tell you? Enjoy yourself a little Just bit. Just imagine being an eligible bachelor. Yeah. It's like At your, this time. That'd be good. <laughs> it's like your daughter, Stella, said. Dad, be a little more selective. The kids would Did like she say me, say that? Paul. Yes. The kids would she... like me. Kids like me. Yeah. Do they? Yes. Well, okay then. <laughs> it's inauguration all the way. So, so uh, well, you listen, Howard. You are bad. You know, you come on this show. You just, you just make all this up. I love you. What have but I made you're up? You're bad. What have I made up? You were dating this girl. No, Nancy. you made that up. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you throw no, throwing Rob, Robin no. at me. She's I'm throwing me at you. Show Paul your breasts. Oh, right, stop it! <laughs> I don't think he would like that. You ever date a black woman? Ever gone interracial? Sure he has. Oh, what do you mean? How do you know? I that? know all about it. Have you dated black women? <laughs> yes, I have. You have? Hmm. When was that period of uh, time? Back in the day. Before was, Linda? Yeah. In the day. It was really? before John fell in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Too much. Yeah. All right, listen. We have to get to a lot of stuff. When you come in here, I it's not I'm often I get rejected. a hold of you. Oh. <laughs> I think you were just I'll rejected. Live, I suppose. Robin, has, <laughs> Robin owns two homes, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. What do you think of that? Honestly. Right. So I now, made, you know, like I was, I was thinking of making my pitch all this time. To do, you got to answer some Beatle type questions before we get to That's that. Okay. That's okay. I like the Beatles. All right, all right, Very fine. good band. Just tell me something about Abbey Road for one second. Because yeah. we were having a discussion before he came in and everyone was throwing out questions. Uh -huh. I had heard that Abbey Road was not supposed to be called Abbey Road. You were going to call it something like Mount Everest or something. Yeah. Where all, this is true? That is true, yeah. What is the story there? Well, you know, um, you, you're making an album and towards the end of the album you start thinking, well, we need a title for this. So you're looking around, you're fishing around. And the engineer, Jeff Emmerich, who is our, our Beatle engineer, did all the great sounds for us, was smoking cigarettes called Everest. They like a kind of menthol right. cigarette at the time. And we kind of looked at that and said, Everest. It's, good it's name. kind of, you know, it's big, it's heroic. That could be good for the album. So that was the working title. But the more we thought of it, we went, no, this is not great. And just one day we were in Abbey Road working, and I just sort of said, well, look, you know, why not Abbey Road? Because if we did that, we could just run outside. Right. There's a there's a level crossing as we call it out there, zebra crossing. Uh, we could just stand there. We could get photographed, come back to work. It'd take two seconds. Right. I said, and it's not a bad title, you know, Abbey Road. To us, it was kind of just the name of a studio. But I thought if you take it out of context, it kind of sounds like Monastery Lane, Abbey Road. Isn't, it's got it, a, isn't got it a certain weird? Isn't it weird how just a simple thought like that becomes a legend? I mean, that's like yeah. iconic now, Abbey Road. Yeah. And yet well, it could have yeah, been called I, Everest. And that would have yeah, required yeah. the Beatles to fly to Mount Everest and do a whole photo shoot. shoot. So in yeah. a way, it was sort of a lazy approach. It was a cheap approach. It was a cheap approach. <laughs> what do you think of Ringo now coming out with this statement? He will not sign anything. Did you say peace and love, yeah. peace and love? Yeah. Have you oh, heard that? I love him. Oh. It's the great. I think he's cool, man. <laughs> I mean, you've got to love Ringo. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you know, I, so the truth is, Ringo was always like that. That. Right. Really? He was the one, if fans came to his door, he'd just say, piss off. 
Right. And he would not have anything. He said, you know, this is my private life out there. I'm a Beatle. That's fine. And I'll, right. I'll do things, you know, when we go to shows. But I'm at home with babies and a wife. I don't want that. But it's a big statement to come out with. Yeah, I know it uh, is, All of yeah. a sudden, I will not sign anything. I, yeah. even, I said on the air, I said, listen, Ringo's not that busy. I mean, he Paul said McCartney, he was too busy. He said he was too busy. <laughs> I mean, no, but listen. Busy. What is he busy with? That <laughs> he's, he's so he's, busy. Now he's signing mine now. <laughs> right. I mean, I've you sent him mine. Things. You sign things from time to time. I, I mean, just signed outside the abso- studio here, Absolutely. Yeah. It's not a oh. big deal. Ringo. No, but the thing is, listen, he has the right to do whatever he wants to do in life. You know who and he doesn't want to do that. And I think it's very brave of Ringo. I like that about Ringo. He just go, you know, peace and love, peace and love. I'm not going to sign. <laughs> and everyone go, what? I mean, you know what happened to him? Yeah. He went up to Liverpool. They, Liverpool has just declared the capital of culture in right. Europe. Right. And so it was a big year for our hometown, uh. Liverpool. So Ringo goes up there, and he, he opens the ceremony. He plays. The whole city loves him. He's the favorite son. Right. And he comes back down to London. He goes on a talk show. And the guy sort of says, well, you know, you must love Liverpool and miss it. He goes, no, really. <laughs> and so all the people in Liverpool going, ah, ooh, ooh. And there was some, you know, the topiary stuff where they, they make f- statues Animals out of stuff, uh, yeah. Yeah. out of hedges? Yes. Well, there was one with the Beatles, you know, up in Liverpool, <laughs> and his head got cut off <laughs> shortly they were, after. They were mad at him. So, they were mad at him. So he, I he mean, you know, you've got to love way. him. I love him. I, I love, I play that statement almost every day on the air, but you know how you get well, him Well, they're now mind. saying that he's refraining from making any new messages because he got so much flack from that. You know yeah. who's sitting and waiting to sign things? Pete Best. <laughs> and he'll sign anything. We've had him on here, you know. <laughs> when you release these early Beatles anthology things, you know, Yoko gives you permission whenever you have to go through all that mess. Mm. How are you two doing? Yeah, how are you and Yoko? Doing? Fine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a 13-minute track you wanted to release that the Beatles had done, and then you, and Yoko said no? It wasn't Yoko, actually. No, I think George didn't like it at the time. Right. The thing is, um, I was asked to do something in the 60s, and I I was kind of grooving around London, and, and uh, the other guys were kind of living out a little bit in the suburbs. Right. They'd all got married. So I was just kind of grooving around, and I got asked to do a piece of music for a thing called the Carnival of Light, mm. which is a real sort of hippie thing, man. Right. And it was great, you know. And, and the guy said, you can do anything. So I just went into the studio um, before a Beatles session, and when the guys came in, I said, look, can we just have 15 minutes where I'll just organize a little bit of craziness is everyone up for it? The guy said, yeah, sure, you know. So I said, okay, well, just wander around and just hit anything you want, just say anything you want, just play a bit, ding on the piano, right. or go boom, 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 on the drums. And say, avant-garde hey, avant-garde music. Music. Yes. Avant-garde. Yes. As George used to call it, avant-garde a clue. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I said, well, we'll just do this for 15 minutes, and then that's me covered. Hmm. I'll give it to the guy. We'll put a lot of echo on it. Right. So we did that, and it's, it is 15 minutes of avant-garde Beatle music. Now, because the Beatles was such a big thing, it now is of interest. Right. But, you know, I meet uh, people at like my kid's school, there's like a nice dinner lady there who I, I chat to. She said, ooh, new Beatles music, 15 minutes, ooh. Right. I said, I don't think you'd like it. Right. <laughs> Nobody might It's like not it, what you're you? thinking it is. Right. It's kind of, hey, about you. Yeah, whoop, 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 whoop. But you were willing to let it out there, but uh, cool. George was against it. You know, and I, yeah, I thought it might be good on the anthology. Right. Where we were putting everything out. It was like every old bootleg we'd ever done. And I thought that might be an interesting part of the kind of 60s story. Is that I thought that was the perfect place Is for that it. good for Pete Best financially? Because some of that stuff did include him. Does he get a cut of yeah. some of the dough? So yeah. that's nice. Do you ever that's write him nice. a check? Do you ever say, you know, I feel so bad for this son of a bitch when no. we threw him out of the band? No, don't, I don't feel anything. No. <laughs> I, I, I feel it. You know, I, I know his... his, his uh, I know his brother. I right. know I know the family and stuff, and we, we chat and he stuff. He hasn't written you letters from time to time, so listen, come on, help me out. What, what, it's killing me. You <laughs> guys, a reunion. You He's guys, got his <laughs> pride, Howard. He does. Was he thrown out of the band because he was so good looking? No. It was he, his drum. You know what? The truth was... Uh, we just kind of fell in love with Ringo's drumming. Right. Ringo was in another band, and we had Pete, and we were working, and we used to go see this other band. We said, God, that drum is good. Right. And one night, uh, Pete couldn't do it, and Ringo sat in for him, and we all just went, <gasps> uh, It was like, oh, my God, what is what happening? Do do there was something funny going on. Yeah. Behind us was this powerhouse. 
and this person who was like taking care of the job and we went oh dear is the lesson Just learned from that never, never be miss work. never miss work <laughs> just show up and don't give anyone that opportunity that's probably even if you're it. very ill right show up now, don't I, let ringo sit in for you i haven't spoken to you since uh george harrison died i mean mm -hmm. that i mean how are you doing with that that's got to be major well you know how are you doing with everyone dying you right. know like your mom and dad i mean you know I've, I've lost both my parents i lost john lost george lost linda um it's it's very tough you want them back right you want them back all the time you know but i think in the end you do what i do i think most people do which is just remember the great stuff right you know you can't get them back are you sad Every yeah. day, do you wake up feeling like there's an empty hole in your heart? Uh, Especially with no, Linda not, gone. not every day, but you know, through my life now, you know, if there's ever a, a reference or if ever I think of a story, including George, right? Obviously, there's a sadness to it now that wasn't there before. Is his son in touch with you at all? His son looks yeah. really like him. I mean, yeah, it's just like the he's same. great. Danny's a lovely boy. Yeah. What is he? He's a musician. He's a musician. Yeah. He's trying. He is, yeah. He's uh, he's he's really good. Big he mistake though for any kid of a Beatle to go into music, right? Well, you know, but again, what are you going to do? It's like children of famous actors, children of famous anything. They're born with the gene, yeah. so you either just go no, and I can't top that, or you move into another field, um, or you just have to go with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you've had Julian. Right. You've got John's genes, you know, you've got Sean, Sean. right? and uh, Danny. My son James is a, is a great musician. He plays, doing an album with him. Um, so and the Ringo's to, kids, you know, are all great drummers. What's you know? your philosophy with your kids? Does James have to go out and make a living, or do you say to him, look, I'm a wealthy man. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to give you a couple million bucks. You've got a trust fund. Go ahead. Live your life. Go be a musician. And if you never get a job, I don't You know, I think what you end up doing is kind of something in the middle, because... I, I want uh, anyone these days, particularly my kids, obviously, or, or the other kids we're talking about, to have a hunger right. that we had. How, how do, do they have that? that? And how do you get it? Well, that's what I mean. So I think you can't get it is the answer. Um, so you have to come in somewhere in the middle. So if your son says to you, I want to be a musician, you support that. Yeah. And you don't say to him, hey, go get a regular job at a florist no. and, uh, you know, make a job. Or no, you know, if he wanted to get, you know, studio time and yeah. that kind of thing. You know, if he wanted to go and, you know, be a florist, he would have done that. Right. But it's in his genes. He's, since he's nine, he's been playing guitar. Are you depressed by the world situation right now? Um, yeah, I'm not exactly happy about it, um, but I'm, I'm an optimist, you know. I think, I think you've you? been around. Yeah, I think we've been around a little while. You've seen stuff. You've seen Vietnam. You've seen Nixon. You've seen 9/11. Right. You've seen, you've seen all this stuff. And so, I mean, we're at a not very good place at the moment, especially with the economy. Right. But I am an optimist. You know, I, I sort of think it, it comes around. It'll, you excited it'll, about the new president? I sure am. Where are you? Li where I are you really am. I'm reading his book. Where are you living right now? Like, are you just are you England? England. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Oh, well, totally. You don't go out to the Hamptons anymore. I do. In the summer, I go right. out there to be photographed by the paparazzi. Right. <laughs> and, and, and to have my privacy intruded on. Absolutely. We'd love to see Why you not? date. It's fun. <laughs> I like it. I heard uh, Christy Brinkley, by the way, just to finish that story. Yeah. was very into you and was really on the hunt for you that night. That's really? what I heard from you my heard friend. Well, yes, and she yeah. even got dialed up and was looking for him in a lot of different places. Okay. That's what I heard. She was stalking? Yeah, Paul? not stalking, but very interested. Well, you know, you who can her. blame her? You should do it. <laughs> Give it to her one time. <laughs> Howard, you are just so bad. <laughs> and, and how do you like being... A father now with a young kid. I love it. You love it. I really. Are you love hands it. on? Yeah, man. What do you mean? I You're mean, walking around okay. Here's here you go. Let's see. Typical morning, which will be uh, Monday morning. Next Monday. Go ahead. I get up at six thirty. I make breakfast. I get her up. We. I get her dressed, and we watch a TV. There's TV no thing. nanny. I no nanny. What? I take her. I drive her. We go to school. I talk to the moms. Talk to the teacher. Drop her off at school. Pick her up uh, after school. I love it. You're not too exhausted. No. At this point in your life, you've done it all. No, I know what you mean. You, you know, certainly getting up at 6.30, you go, what am I on? But um, 
I love it. I do. Yeah, but I you love have to her. Share, but you, you have know? to share custody. Isn't it hard to let go of her and send her off no, with her mom? No, you know what, Howard? In truth, I don't really want to talk about that because it's right. very private. Very right. private. But, but you should talk is, about it with me. Go ahead. The, I can tell you because yes. nobody listening. No one is right? today. <laughs> but to all the people who might be listening in their cars, right. I want to send big kisses and hugs. Okay? That's right. But we're just saying, you, you know, you hate to, you know, miss the days with her when she's not with you. You, you know, she's, uh, like I say, uh, let's let's assume like I'm trying not to talk about her. Go ahead. But she is edible, right? She's five years old. And she's a beautiful, beautiful girl. So I want her to have a privacy. Right. But in answer to your question, yeah, I'm very hands on, and I really love it. It's it's a thrill. It, there's such an education. Do you think you're a different, Dad? Yeah, I'm I'm different now. Yeah. You're better. Well, the other yeah. kids are jealous or resentful of no, your young child? No, they've got all their own kids to deal with. They've come to peace with it. They don't feel like don't this kid's they... going to get more of the loot, the, no, the McCartney no, no, fortune? No. <laughs> right. They're not worried about that. No, that's, no. <laughs> what is it, Gary? How dare you interrupt my interview? Mr. McCartney has to go very right. sooner right, so than let we get thought. To the, so let, let me talk, talk about, about the new record. record. Now, I took the album home last night. Yeah. And I listened to this because I said, is this going to be good? And it is good. And I'll tell you my two favorite tracks. Okay. Because I played them already, but I'll play them again. Now, I don't know if you put... Do you put out a single with a record like this? You kind of put out like a radio play single kind of thing. Yeah, but it's What's not like... single? Uh, sing the Changes. Is, That's uh, is, number three, I think. Is, yeah. yeah let, me, let me play a little of this. But yeah. the, the, I feel the tracks that you should go with yeah. are singles. And what do I know? You well, know you saying? might know something. As you know, my favorite McCartney song is Blackbird of all time. You oh, understand you. that? Oh, thank you. Well, of course. Everybody should have that as their favorite song. No, they shouldn't. They should what have your... Maybe I'm Amazed. That is from Wings. Mm, mm, on the cusp. On the cusp of the yeah, Wings. Okay, all right. I like the two tracks, oh, hey, Highway Jude, and hey, Jude, Light Jude. from Your Lighthouse. I feel you really hit the nail on the head with these tracks. Oh, well, cool. let me hear Let's play them. What's all the right. single. First. All right, here's the single first, because I didn't play this this yeah. morning. I'm not saying this is a bad track. I like it. Yeah. I'm into it already. <laughs> Listen I want to that dance. guitar. <laughs> I love this. Now, how could they just make this up in a day? Now, by the way, that's pretty impressive. Made up in a day. You're saying there's 13 tracks on the record, and you did one in each one in a day. Yeah, and I want to hear one of them now. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Voice sounds good. Good cue. You're excited about a new record. Why not? Look at you. You want to go out and perform It's like you're 20 this? years old. Why don't you go out and perform yeah, some of these songs? Yeah, you want to go out and perform this? You want to be doing? back on well, stage? I am performing it now on your show. <laughs> go! <laughs> I didn't know you danced. Sound good. It's the heaven. Oh, yes. So you're saying you made up the words as you went along. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, don't you have, doesn't that lead to regrets, though? I mean, don't you go, maybe I should, maybe I should put more thought You know it. what it's like? Improvisational theater, improv, that I've heard about for years. You hear actors talking about it. And. I always thought, I wonder what that'd be like, you know, just making it up as you go along. And this is that. Yeah, tell you, you don't want to tinker with it at all while you're listening. Well, no, because once you do it, I mean, that's it. You've, uh -huh. you, the whole idea is that you're kind of dredging up something from your own subconscious. Mm -hmm. And so then you're just going, okay, now what is this? And uh, actually a journalist the other day from Rolling Stone was, um, he, he read me back the lyrics to this one. Yeah. And it sounded like a poem. I'm going, wow. Because I've never heard them. I just made mm, it up. Mm. We cut it and pasted it. The, the producer did. And I just go, yeah, that sounds nice. It's a good record. Um, but here the to lyrics me, are actually not bad. Here to me is your uh, best track on here. What, I mean, it was what, based on one album. Listen, you know, this is good. Very good riff here. I like this. And I like your voice on this. Highway. Yes. All right. Come around. What that sound? <laughs> oh. 
She had sex with Renee Zellweger today. So <laughs> it looked like he was doing it give right it to, here. Give it to her hard right there. <laughs> wow. That's good. Howard, honestly. Let me t- that's good. And the other one I really like is, um, and I'll play these all the way through later, but because I got, I got limited time with you. Here's uh, This is another one. Uh, by is, the way, uh, uh, if my children are listening to this, don't listen to Howard. <laughs> Ever? He, he can sometimes be a little vulgar. Don't grow up like this, children. Oh, uh, come on. He's nice. He's lovable. But you love him. Did you, I do love let him. Let me ask you a question. But Personal not in that question. way. Did, did you have to go to your daughter, Stella? She was very vocal against you getting married to your previous wife. Did you have to go to her and say, honey, you were right? Uh, no, we, you know, we don't talk about stuff like that. You don't just, with the kids? You just get on with it. It's okay. You've got a better attitude than I do. Do you play Guitar Hero? Do you play any of these video games? No. You've seen any of these new movies? I've guitar. seen them, yeah. They're doing, they're doing a Beatles one. They are? Yeah. You, you, you're you okay with that? It'd be quite cool, yeah. Yoko said okay, we'll, we'll do one yeah. of these. <laughs> I would love to we be We all meeting. said okay, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's, it's going to be pretty you know, cool, actually. I might learn to be a Beatle. In the office, we were talking about how, you know, can you believe that they're still playing Beatles songs yeah. and young people are turned on to Beatles music? Oh, my kids Did love it. Did you ever dream in your, you know... Oh, you know, we didn't think we'd go beyond a couple of years. That uh, was the truth because nobody did in those Crazy. days so we just suddenly after a couple of years we were like oh we're just starting how about my and daughter just finished the, she just graduated college mm-hmm. she just finished a college class in the Beatles yeah and yeah. loved it like her favorite thing wow. like like a college class I know it's That's amazing insane. It? yeah well really you is. should let your kids uh, grow up listening to Howard I grew up listening to him and look what happened this yeah well see, <laughs> see? <laughs> children <laughs> take a look at this guy Paul let me ask he's you lovable Artie <laughs> Artie this is Artie, Paul. Artie's struggling with drugs. You struggled with cocaine for a good year, right? True? In your, in when you were with the Beatles. I didn't struggle. I never heard that. Yes, I never heard drugs yes. with him. Paul struggled. Never heard drugs with mean, him. He got arrested. I, well, was, I was a young man, right. and that was part of the picture at that time. But I would advocate young people not to do it. I know it's that. It's no good, man. Yeah, but how did you get off cocaine? You were addicted. Um, were you? I was yes. not addicted. No, you I were was addicted. Oh, you were on it for a year. Honestly. Everyone knows you were addicted. <laughs> <laughs> why are you lying? <laughs> you didn't know you were addicted. But you, you know what? I was actually very lucky because it, all this stuff, is, as you know, and everyone knows in the world, the kids know particularly, it's a peer group thing. Mm. Yes. Suddenly it appears and somebody's doing it and then you go, oh, I don't know. And you don't have the wisdom to sort of say, no, I can stand back from this. Um, but you so, tried heroin too. No, not really. Yes. No, what do you mean, not really? No, I didn't. Well, what happened was the same person I knew who who uh, had introduced me to coke. Um, di- he did heroin, and he once sort of said to me, "Do you want to try it?" You know, right. and I just the fear. I just, just said, "No, no." Like no, snorting no, no, no. it, right? Or not, yeah, yeah, no needles. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah no, but no, John no, no. and Yoko got into you. Were you? I were, understand they did, but you know that was not when I was with them, so uh-huh. I don't want that to kind of say anything. Thing. You know, that's I don't know. Right. No, but the good thing was that I kind of got really fed up of it, because you can get easily fed up of it. Yes. Because it's a kind of... <laughs> oh, really? Because I, really, I, I wasn't making a joke. I, I had read that for a year you did cocaine, and you, you felt that you were addicted no, to it. No, I wasn't addicted to it. No, I, no. I, I, I sort of did it because it was like the thing everyone did, you know, at that time. Um, but I was very lucky, because it was actually just before it broke mainstream. So for that year, I just sort of did it and then went, oh, you know what, this is a mugs game. And I stopped it. And then, like, just about everyone I knew in the world, including lawyers, bankers, businessmen, right. everybody, the, the, kind of, the straight people, <laughs> suddenly started being really heavy into it. So I was very lucky. I actually got out. Good. Right there and then. And I said to kids, because a, a lot of people knowing, you know, the good thing about this is you can advise kids. Uh, what I used to say to kids, I say, look, I know it's a peer pressure thing. So um, what I would advise you to do is you can't kind of say, oh, no, I've never tried it. Because then, you know, the, oh, you've never tried it, sucker. Uh-huh. So I said to him, no, what you do is you say, oh, no, 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 I've been through that. I gave it up. And now, go, wow, cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point. Just, just bullshit them. Why bullshit them? Do you still bullshit smoke bullshit. pot? Do you still well, smoke pot? You no, st- no. You don't smoke weed? I don't You're do still nothing vegan? Like You're that. still veganing up? You I'm know? vegetarian, not vegan. Oh, Why? Why? Yeah, why not vegan? Um, You'll eat eggs. I like cheese and eggs. My (laughs) my thing about it all is kind of cruelty to animals. That was the original thing. So you don't have to kill a chicken to have an egg. Why did you? In fact, if if you leave a chicken's egg, if a if the cockerel hasn't got there, 
is she will leave it too. So that's kind of doesn't hurt anyone. A chicken really is a, a, an egg is a chicken abortion in in, in a sense. Not true? really. It's yes. not how we like to think of <laughs> scrambled <laughs> eggs. But um, <laughs> anyway, Howard, listen, I'm no, really glad you like the record the, okay, Let me take, ask you a question I'm, about fireman. I'm pulling it back to the Why original. didn't you call the record McCartney record? Why fireman? Because uh, I felt like I kind of would have betrayed this whole idea of, of the new, fireman. Right. If you think about it, when we made Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, right. that's the Beatles hiding behind that. That was the original idea, right. was that we had a song, we said, let's pretend we're not the Beatles. Because we were getting a bit fed up of walking up to a mic, oh, this is a John Lennon vocal. I've got to sound like him. I've got to be like... I said, well, look, let's not do that. Let's just pretend we're in another band. You are Dirk. You right. are Barry. You can go up to the mic and free yourself of all of that sort of baggage. But why fireman? You can just do that. Why the name uh, fireman? Fireman, I like, um, I, I work in the woods sometimes. It's a little hobby of mine. I make uh, You w trails. walk in the woods? I make trails in the woods with my chainsaw. That's what you're busy with? It's a, bit, it's a, it's a balancing thing. So I, consequently, you make fires out in the woods, so I, I like that. My dad was also a fireman. So you are so, a f you identify with firemen. That's yeah. the, that image. Mm. All right, listen. And plus, getting, putting on the concert for nine eleven, right. you know, yeah, with the, the firemen. The Next time, if you ever out. come here again, I want to talk to you about coffee enemas, which Robin oh. receives. I want to know if you're into that at all. Oh. Oh. That's right. Robin oh. is into that. But I may never I be back. <laughs> You'll come back. You, you, I'll see <laughs> you, you again. Don't ever have Paul, I'm getting the high sign, but I'm going to leave everyone with a song that I think is one of the best tracks on the fire. Let's record. do it. I'm going to play it right now. Howard, thank you for having thank me. You. Robin, thank it's you for proposing to me. Oh, do me a favor. I love you. I never have enough time with you. I would like you to guys. You see this movie, Frost Nixon? I need yeah. you to give me 18 hours. Yeah, okay. We'll sit down, we'll videotape, Yeah. and it'll be your complete life. It I will, will go through everything. It, it will, yeah. Be great, I, I want Robin suggested I do this after she uh, this has sex with proposal. you. This is my next Nervous just because I'm a big fan of Howard. Howard is the man. Seen the movie. I uh, love Fart Man, by the way. That's incredible. I want that to come out. Uh, but yeah, excited to be here. You know, hopefully we get into some, some deep issues. Never know what to expect on Howard, though. That's Brody, good. you're yes. on, man. Oh, I'm on. Oh, jeez. Yes, I'm going. Brody Jenner is here. Brody's on a show called Bromance. Artie was making jokes about the idea of bromance. I don't get it either, like why any guy would go on TV trying to be... Well, he's a pretty good-looking guy. <laughs> this kid has banged more hot chicks. This is one Have of his... Have you seen him? Here's one of his throw... I haven't seen the kid, but here, he's, here's one of his throwaways. What is that? That is a hot chick. <laughs> I don't know. And bra so and... Well, who is it? Hey, is this What's one of your... Name? Hey, Brody. This is one of your throwaways, huh? Look at this kid. You're my kind of hero. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Who is where, this chick? Where did you find that? What's her name, Cara? <laughs> uh, Cora, yeah, yeah. Cora, wow. Yeah, yeah she's, she's with she's a name cute. like Cora, you have to have a body like that. You gotta, I mean, is Jay, I hope Jay's buying that, right? When you see a good-looking girl like this, yes. and thanks for coming on the show, bro. Oh, thank you for having me. And uh, we'll talk about bromance in a minute. No worries. And you are a good-looking kid. There's no question about it. You know it. The girls know it. <laughs> Even guys know it. When Even... did you know? <laughs> when did you know you were that good-looking? When did you start having the power over women? Uh, I mean, you, to you... be honest, when I was, like, you know, 13, 14, I was actually kind of chubby. I was, I was like, really? kind of... Yeah, I was a little chubby, you know, yeah. but it was good because, you know, my friends would always squeeze my little rolls and stuff. And, right. Would and, you go to the gym? You start working out? I, no, I actually started surfing. A ton of surfing and, and hit the growth spurt. Yep, it does. It's right. better than being chubby when you're 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this girl's name is Cora. Yes. She's a, Cora. A, a model? Uh, yes, she's a lingerie model. I'm looking at a picture of this girl. She's perfect. How do you meet her? She's I mean, do you just call the agencies and have them sent over? <laughs> I mean, you know, we did that a couple of times. <laughs> oh, you did? I did not. <laughs> My wow. friends did. What a girl. But, uh, no, yeah, she's beautiful. We met uh, out in a club. How old were you when you lost your virginity? I was I was 15 actually 15 years old. So so you're Bruce Jenner's kid, right? And but Bruce wasn't around a whole lot when you were growing up. It was more you and your mom. Your mom was yes. on Hee Haw, she was a good-looking woman. Yes, Linda Linda Thompson. Linda Thompson, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, your dad. Do you see him now, or is it kind of like, eh, we don't have much of a thing? Um, no, we do. You know, we're definitely kind of rekindling that. Uh, growing up, 
obviously he was with the Kardashian. He lived with the Kardashian family. Right. Um, and I stayed with my, actually my stepdad who was on the show, David Foster, yeah, who, David wouldn't, Foster. who wouldn't take the elevators. I, right. <laughs> I love that story. I love how you roused him and kept him downstairs. That was great. You had kind of one of those screwy Hollywood childhoods. In other words, Bruce Jenner's your dad. Right. Linda Thompson's your mom. How old yes. are they? How old are they when, uh, how old are you when they divorce? Uh, I was about two years old. Oh, two years divorced. old. Yes. Your dad moves out. Yep. Somehow he takes off and does his thing. Yep. And your mom remarries David Foster, famous music guy. Right. He becomes your stepdad. Mm -hmm. And yet he kind of, when they divorce, he you don't even hear from the dude. Yeah, yeah I hear from him occasionally. occasionally but Is I, it I, weird for you? It's a little weird, you know, growing up and, and seeing somebody who's there for you, you know, almost pretty much your dad. You know, Did you love every the guy? Day. Yeah, of course. Of course. I still do. I still and, love and him a lot. And you had a good relationship. With I had a great relationship and still do, but I know he, he's kind of at that time in his life. He, he's reliving the past, I think, and he's really enjoying, you know, being single and being out there. So, do you feel rejected by him? Uh, no, I don't feel rejected. I really don't feel rejected. I, I'm kind of used to that. And as far as yeah, you know, my dad, I'm, and and to be honest, I think it made me a stronger person. You David know, Foster not, has a daughter. Uh, yes, Sarah a few Foster. of them. Yeah, he has Aaron, Sarah, Jordan. I used to watch Sarah on MTV. I beat off to her. <laughs> what was that like? Did you live in the house? Hey, man, I used to spy in the showers. And <laughs> yeah, I bet. No. Did you, uh, did you, Step. did you, uh, that's your stepsister? Yeah, stepsister. Not by, your mom no didn't blood. give birth to her? No. So no. did she live in the house with you? No, uh, no. She, she lived, lived with her, her mom. mom. Yes, exactly. It's so dysfunctional. You're it's living. crazy, yeah. It's, yeah, did you have one of place. those holidays where you're running around to different households? Honestly, uh, they tried to do that you know yeah. the, all the families try to get us over there for each little holiday so but if you had to bang one of your steps or something, I'm talking about <laughs> Sarah Foster or Kim Kardashian oh, who's more geez. your type who would you rather bang <laughs> or any of those Kardashian yeah. girls which one's better I mean uh, it's 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 hard to say that you know I for mean, me it's not uh, I'll tell you who well, my choice is <laughs> I think yours is Sarah right Absolutely. Kim Kardashian's got an ass as big as a fucking trunk. Beautiful face, though. Beautiful face. <laughs> you know, but a lot of people like that, you know? A lot of people I like don't the, like that. Big well, you know, I, some like people the, do. I like the little uh, Kardashian one. Which one? Chloe? Uh, well, I don't know the name. What is she? Nine? I, hope it's, I hope it's not my little, my little tiny little, little nine year old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Marty likes him young. Hey, hey watch that. And no. that one is, hey, that one is blood. That one is blood. No, no, so. no. The, uh, <laughs> the, um, the smallest Kardashian. Bro. Chloe. You know? It's Chloe. That's the nine year old. That's a nine-year-old. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can't go out with her. No, the, the nine-year-old's a Jenner, right? Actually, yes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I'm talking about Card a Kardashian. You want a nine-year-old to sit on your face? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I, who put up sitting on faces? Where the fuck are you sitting? You're crazy. You're out of uh, your mind. I like the littlest, the, the one. The, the, the Kardashian. One, yeah. right. All right. The okay. Chloe, Chloe. Does the little one have the big ass yet? Uh, you know, I think no. they all are, are, are they well the endowed in the in the butt ass. area. Does yeah. anybody actually work out over there, or they just let their ass get to be the size of a house? Not a little one. If you can find a picture of her, is is she's she's. I mean, I like the she's I like cute? Kim too. I like Sarah Forsen. They're all hot. What the fuck? I so mean, when you say Casey, my my actually my real sister uh, Casey is beautiful. As well. Yeah, she's married though. Oh, yeah, everyone's so beautiful. Uh, you know, I'm looking at you, him and he I'm looks, saying he looks that... more like his mom. Though. No, he looks a lot like Bruce. No, he does. He has. His original nose. Yeah. Hey, what'd your dad do? Original. What'd your dad Did you ever say to your dad, what the fuck did you do to your face? You know, I thought it. I, I definitely did. thought it, yeah. I've seen pictures of him back in the day, and I didn't Good think there was guy. any. I didn't think. I, you know, I think I'm, I'm right there with you, so. I, I think probably little... what happened to him, I think he was so famous and mm -hmm. such a big deal. You know, Bruce Jenner, all-American athlete, right. everything, and photograph. He probably just... He focused on something on his face that right. only he saw. He was yeah. a good-looking dude. Right, I agree. And he must have gone plastic surgery nuts. You're not into any plastic surgery. No, right? You're no, a good-looking no, dude. No, no. You yeah, don't need no, any no help. plastic surgery. No, no you I'm don't need to that. Stay away from Did you talk to your old man about it? You said, Dad, you think I should get plastic surgery? Never had that conversation with him. No, no yeah. I never had that conversation with him. You know, you know I'm, I'm a very close to my mother. I tell my mom that all the time. I tell her, do not get plastic surgery. So, so. what happened with you? you? Not only are you a good-looking dude, but you get on TV. You get on uh, what the hills. What yeah, is the hills? Well, I don't even know, man. I'm sorry. I'm so out of it. I'm turning into an old <laughs> bastard. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, know if that. it's a show or a real. I don't know. What is it? Nobody really knows it, whether it's real or not real. But, you what know, you of must course, know. I got, well, it's it's totally real. It's real? <laughs> I mean, yes. It's as, as much as they can write. It must. Be, exactly. You know, it, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of these shows are. How'd you get on that? Uh, my best friend at the time, Spencer Pratt. I don't know if you know who Spencer Pratt Heidi is, Montag and Spencer Pratt. The Spidey couple. Yeah. yeah, so at the time, we actually did a show, executive producer show, and created a show called Princes of Malibu. You created I was that? Yeah, I created it and, okay. uh, when I was 21. 
And it was crazy because Fox would only pick it up if we had to pretend it was totally real, which was basically taking advantage of my stepdad and pretending, you know, like I hit golf balls into a studio and stuff. And they said, hey, we'll pick up the show, but you have to make, pretend this is totally real. Even though we created it, we filmed it ourselves to sell the pilot to, uh, you know, Fox television stuff, but we had to pretend that we were really doing this. You should, what's the matter? I have to say something. What? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. That's, no, no worries. I'm sorry, bro. Benji, I'm going to throw up for a minute. What is Benji doing? <laughs> look, 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 excuse me for a minute. What are you just fucking doing? What are you look, doing? Come on, Ben. This is like, this that's is ridiculous. typical Benji. This is so gross. <laughs> oh, yeah. look, at the, look at that fucking th- shit he's putting on that salad. Benji. It's, it's what is that? I can't smell. It's, I can't it's, smell. It's, 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 it's 7 13 in the I morning. I know. I was like, where are the eggs and it's bacon? Like a and... deli, it's like a deli back <laughs> oh here. Look, he's got this shit. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing, Benji, he's real quick. You're, interu- you're interrupting Ranch Brody. Dressing he's over here promoting. Salt. <laughs> what, 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 what are you doing? I have a salad. You yeah. gotta leave with it. You gotta go outside. Go outside, man. <laughs> I can't. You're gonna make me throw up. You gotta Art, get him you don't, okay, wait. I'll get rid of it, but Art, you don't smell it. You looked at it, and then you saw it. I smelled it too. I thought Brody. Brody had a problem, honestly. I didn't know what was going on. You guys don't smell it. I said, thank God this good looking kid at least smells. Bench, I smell it. I'll take it out. I do smell it. If I took it out, you wouldn't be able to guess if it was in or out. Yes, I, I would. How well, much you, you want to fucking bet? I, I'll bet you anything minutes. you want. All right, you don't want to do this now. Right, just take it out. Take it out. Here. Brody's got limited uh, time, too. Well, do you want me it to eat like... McCartney? No. no, I don't want you to eat that at all. That's 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 intrusive. All right, let's that's, get back Sounds like me and my friends right there. Yeah. Sounds like us. Does Spencer Pratt eat like this? Uh... I don't know. Let me see. Actually, he does kind of, yeah. Maybe for lunch. Brody, tell me what your life is like, though. So you you, you become a television <laughs> producer. You're right. a young, good-looking guy. You start to date these chicks. It's a quite an impressive resume. I think anybody would be impressed with the amount of chicks you've banged. You say you started having <laughs> sex at uh, 15. Yes. 15 that, that's old. an unusually young age, isn't it? I actually, my brother lost his virginity at 13, so I thought I was late. I was kind of bummed. I was like, damn, I didn't, you know. I'm, as a, I'm young, that's a cool late. family. As a, <laughs> that's a very cool family. That was, was it, late? Was it an, I mean, that was for me at the time. Was it an older woman that you were with? No, she was the same age. Same, same age. age. Yeah, so. And then I was going over your, let me let me to some of your resume here, and then I want to get to this bromance idea, because I'm having trouble understanding some of this. No These worries. guys wanting to be your friend that badly. It, it's, you know, you we, know. Got, we got them crying. Quite frankly, <laughs> I, I, he's convinced. Convince me. I want to get on the show. But do you want these guys to be your friends based on how they're acting? You don't want to be around these guys. Well, I mean, you know, it's the thing about bromance is, is when Ryan Seacrest Productions came to me and kind of had the idea, it was so out there. How big and a douchebag is Ryan? I actually like Ryan. You like Ryan? Okay. I do like. All I right. mean, Ryan, you know, he's he's a workaholic. He's always right. so he's, he's, he's there and he's on there. The show, Have right. you ever seen yeah. him with a broad? Uh. Have I ever seen him with a broad? No, I feel like he's working so much, but have we talked about broads? Whatever. Yes, we've Whatever. talked about it. I'll have to say that. Yeah, he's working a lot. <laughs> All right, so you and Ryan work yes. hard on the show. Mm-hmm. You had this idea of bromance, or Ryan brought it to you? Uh, Ryan brought it to us. All right. person. So why do these guys want to be your friends so bad? Do they think they're going to get pussy just by hanging out with you? To be really honest, I think no. that uh, I think that a lot of people in doing any of those kind of shows, they come to be on television, you know, a right. lot of time, and they don't really know what to expect. They hear about a reality show being filmed, they want to come try out, and then when they got there and, and when asked the question, when I asked them the question, you know, why are you here? Why don't you explain to me why you're here? And for guys, it's so hard to, I feel like for a lot of guys, it's very hard to open up with your guy friends. And when I would ask that and talk about their family life, I mean, every single one of these guys started crying and, and really started breaking down. And it was, I mean, trust me, for going into the show and filming, I didn't think it was going to be like that. And well, it almost well, why, turned why, in, why are they crying? Because I, they want to be your friends? I don't, I don't think it's... How good an interviewer are I mean, you? Well, right. I, no, I don't think it's You're like about Barbara being Walters. friends. No, no, no. But it's, the tr- but, no, but it's the truth. I don't think it's about, you know, being friends with me as much as they had never had a, a male companion where they can actually open up and, and do that. Another they did words. all of a sudden, which they're used to, you know, I would say, they're used to the quote unquote that's gay you know you can't right. open up you can't front, you know cry in front of a guy but is that what you're asking them to be a, no, a confidant no uh, not, <laughs> not at all and that's it just happened that way and they started you know crying and then it, it, it came from are they ugly dudes they don't have anything going on no they're you know I, you know you got to judge for yourself but i think you know there's some good looking kids and, and they're all they're all really nice kids so the theme of the show is bromance in other words they want to be your friend so bad right. that they even cry like bitches <laughs> 
because they <laughs> because they they want to be in your in a circle. They want to be around your your friends and your whole life. Well, yeah, I guess you know. And yeah. coming, are in you the, willing to have? Is that the prize? Are you going to let them into your circle? Yeah, oh, they get a they get. I have a you know beautiful condo in downtown L.A. That's and they get that for a year and they get to you know they hang out in your that. condo. No, no, they get to. I give it to them. I'm you giving. Gi- it to you're going to give them your condo. I'm giving it to them completely. Why would another you do big that? surprise. Because uh, I got another place in West Hollywood, so I'll let them, I'll tell, let them take the downtown L.A. one. <laughs> really? yeah, so you're not home part of a commute. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to a warehouse. Uh, so I'm getting the feeling that then. you're really not going to hang around with these guys if they win. Let's well, be honest. I wouldn't. You're probably disturbed. To be honest, the guy that won is actually very, very cool and down to earth, and, right. and I really enjoy his company, and I would hang out with him. Do you hang out? Does he sit there and talk to you about his problems, and well, he wants the, a deep relationship with a man? We're actually not allowed to hang out because oh. of the show. Oh. I was well, gonna say, this is like the bachelor. Yeah, I was standing over. It is. It's like the bachelor. You can't now see your best friend. Well, I mean, well, it, it's you know, it must be hard for you. The show was just so crazy. Going, you know, I I wanted to do something different. I love trying things different, and nobody's really delved into the whole male bonding and male relationship factor. So that's. Do, do you thank doing. God every day that you don't look like myself or Benji or? You know, I, you, do, I'll, do, I'll do, be do honest. You, you must, guys, yeah. I, I love you guys. So I would never not. I'm not gonna say that. But it must be disturbing to to see guys that look like me and and Benji. Benji, uh, these type of guys. No, are, no. Uh, Benji you should see my friend. All my, all my friends. Are, are your friends as ugly as we are? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I can't imagine. Are you the queen bee or what? Uh, no, no. I got, you know, we we yeah. all mess each other. What are you, uh, Who you are should... your friends? You got other uh, famous well, we got, kid um, friends? For, first of all, understand, he grew up in the home of David Foster. Now, David Foster He had, knew everybody. So right. you, Michael Jackson would be in your right. home. Now, you're a nice-looking guy. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, any oh. hanky-panky? Uh, does he that is... Want... It's really funny you actually say yeah. that because there is a picture of growing up that was in our house that was me, uh, Michael, and a bunch. And we, <laughs> I'm right next to Michael, you know, kind of right here. And all my friends would walk by with their cell phones and take pictures of me <laughs> next to Michael. So every time I call, would pop up and be like, hi. And, and, and uh, they would always give me grief about well, Michael that. You never enjoy- had any overnighters. No. How not, old were never you been to you, Neverland. How old were you when you met Michael? Were you a young child? I was young. Yeah, I was yeah. probably about six, seven years was old. Was he probably. taken with you? I know he loves children very much. Uh, not that I could tell. You know, it was yeah. very brief. Did he ever say to your parents, why not let him come to Neverland? <laughs> why does he, Why do you not let me babysit? I mean, yeah. I think, uh, no, yeah. that never happened. Never I happened. actually wanted to go. You know, I, I wanted to go to, I wanted to ride the rides and stuff. Well, I you ready. didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> you stay home. Now I'm kind of glad I didn't. Right. Explain right. David Foster to me. Should I know who is it? David Foster is a famous music producer and right. writer of songs, songs, right? Right, yeah. 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 Very Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. And uh, even Dion. your mother wrote a lot of songs. Yes, she did. Celine Dion, would she come over the house and hang out? Yep, she'd her, come over. Her and Renee, the husband. Yes, Renee. Yep. He would be there. Would be and, there. and Barbara Streisand and Barbara herself Streisand, would show yep, up. Is a good friend of the family. So this is some way to grow up, right? It was cool. You know, to me, it was just, it was just, that was the circle of their friends, you know, wow. and that's who they hung out with. Wow. You know, Never his was. mom was my also parents. a my girlfriend parents. of Elvis. Yes. yes. My parents had the worst uh, friends, so, you oh, know. Oh, please, I mean, you don't want to hang out with them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, Get out um, of the house. Your mom went out with Elvis. Right. Did she ever bring up Elvis's name? Uh, it, David would hate that. Right. Oh, she would. Uh, I'm sure. Actually, oh, it was, uh, there was actually a really funny story, if you want to hear it. Uh, yeah. Larry King, uh, they were at a, some already. kind of... Uh, yeah, That's how every funny little, story begins. It was, a, it was a, like a banquet kind of thing, and Larry King and my mom were sitting there, and they had done an interview about Elvis's, about Elvis's death or something, and... Uh, and Larry's talking to her, oh, man, I can't believe you dated Elvis. Elvis can't believe Elvis's Elvis Elvis. penis. And, oh, and, da- yeah, oh, and David was sitting right there, and right. David just went, you know what, Larry? Why don't we talk about you and all your ex-wives that you fucked? Like, oh. <laughs> I mean, oh. And, Good for and him. Larry, and, David, and Larry's like, you just insulted me. And they almost got into a full-on. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was. Wow. You know, good, uh, for your, good for David. I, was, I, mean, I thought it was funny. Your mother's a very, is she still a hot uh, piece of ass? She, I think she's. Beautiful gorgeous, guys. yes. I guess she's, the she's shots of her life. and Elvis are really, you know, mean, she's a beautiful she woman. Did she ever yeah. describe, she, bring her in with you one time, because I need to talk about what she would, did with yeah. Elvis exactly, if, okay. if you could stand it. See, I, <laughs> you know. I'll let you guys, do, yeah, I'll you'll, sit you'll, out of the room. You get out <laughs> of the room. <laughs> I'll plug my ears for that I one. mean, like, what did she do to Elvis? Do you ever wonder what was going on with Elvis? She's, Elvis got, was, some gr- she's got some incredible stories. Yeah, but the ones I could get are probably a lot better. I'm sure they would I bet Elvis wouldn't give her oral, I guarantee it. Elvis never went down on a woman. He never did that? 
Never, never. Very rare. He was eating, he was eating everything <laughs> else. Did, mother, did you ever say to your mother, because I've asked my mother if she's had anal with my father right. all this. So I don't know how right. honest you are with your mother. Did you ever say to her, did the king ever go down on you? I know he doesn't like that. I, I've never asked, but hey, right. I'll, I'll ask her. <laughs> Believe me, bro, you're normal <laughs> for never asking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't believe you don't you ask your mother that. if she's <laughs> oral. I can't <laughs> believe it. You, know, you have a very uptight relationship with your mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they well, say Hollywood is so liberal. Right. Yeah, well, my mother reacts when I ask if uh, she's ever had anal. Uh, so, so where, bro, where do you grow up? Like Malibu? I is grew that? up in Malibu. That's yeah. a nice place, and you get Beautiful. into surfing yep. and all that stuff. And what do you do? So you do the surfing, you work out with the weights. And, uh, it never occurred I actually, to you that you needed to be an athlete like your dad? Uh, to, to be honest, I was surfing, and that was my thing. I love surfing and snowboarding. I would, you know, miss a bunch of school and stuff, to be honest, to go snowboarding and, and and, and do that. I never really got into the track and field. And well, that's like athletic. That. In Brody I mean, Jenner's yeah. life, I'll tell you what, I don't think many people would uh, pause to trade places with you. Brody is currently dating 2008 Playboy Playmate of the Year, Jade Nicole. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there she, she is. Like. Well, she was in here. Look at her. She's a hot chick. Oh, yeah, she was in girl. here. She's way hot. She loves you guys. Uh, I loved her. Oh, wow. Oh, man. How'd you get her? At the Playboy Mansion, did you go? Uh, you want to hear this story? <laughs> Why not, man? Well, uh, I actually was was actually hooking up with her best friend. Uh, okay. This is and this is years ago though. This is uh, yeah. about two years ago, and she was her best friend. Jade was her best friend, and so right. I always just knew her as a friend and got to know her like that. And me and her best friend started, you know, stopped hanging out. Uh, later on, I ran into her in Canada. Cause she lives in Canada at the right. Much Music Awards. Ran into her. Um, we started talking. She totally blew me off. She was in San Diego one time that I was in San Diego. And I was like, yo, come to my, you know, hotel. Let's hang out. Completely blew me off. I was, you know, I was just kind of, ah, oh, man. Because I, I thought she was gorgeous. She was right. a very cool girl. Uh, blew me off. And then she texted me before the Midsummer Night's Dream Party that was coming up. I was extremely excited. However, I found out later on it was a mass text message. So, uh, I see. You know what I mean? So, but, so you get to go to the Playboy Mansion for the Midsummer Night's Dream Party where all the girls are in lingerie. That's, and, yeah, yeah, right. it's, 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 it's pretty what cool. What does that mean? She yeah. sent out a text to a bunch well, of people? She sent it to a bunch of people, and I thought it was just me. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. I'll be there. I'll see you there. And then uh, I found out later on as we you know, started dating that, that it was, it was a ma- Well, she was giving it to our girlfriends <laughs> and everything. Like, hey, hope to see up at the mansion. But, These uh, women you date are in a league all of their own, and uh, when you're in bed with a chick like this, right. it's hard. I don't know if it is for you because mm-hmm. you've had so many odd chicks. Is it hard for you to hold out, I mean, in order to give them pleasure? Uh, you able to, uh, are you, do you wear rubber with these chicks? Uh, of course. You, I mean, you have to wear rubber. You know, right. obviously, you got to think about, I mean, there's birth control and stuff like that, but if right. you're not on birth control, you got to obviously protect yourself. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, does that slow that, you that, down? That, that helps, you know. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, that helps. Right. Because uh, these chicks are probably expecting big things from you because you're a good looking guy, you got a big fantasy thing going with them, uh, you're in good shape. Uh, well, you, when you whip out the schlong, and you, you, the main thing is you gotta you gotta clear the pipes. That's the that's I'm gonna be honest. So you, you gotta clear the pipe. The date. You gotta you've gotta be a lot. You know, you gotta do that. that. I do that. You know, it's just I always I always beat off before it's, I bang a woman. You know? Even t- at this advanced age, I'm you, telling you, <laughs> you gotta. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when you say you lose your virginity at 15, right. that doesn't include BJ's, right? I mean, you were getting blown before that. Uh, I was. I had a couple of those before I that. Be, yeah. I, bet 11, <laughs> I bet you were 11 when you got your first blowjob. Am I correct? No, not 11. No, maybe huh? 13. 13. 13. Good yeah. lord. See, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm, 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 life. I'm different. <laughs> I already got blown for the first time last week. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm different. Where <laughs> he's 41 and he had a pay. I always. Uh, I always jerk off after a day. <laughs> <laughs> So you, uh, I always clean the pipes after the day. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've, I've done that too, Artie. So, no, no, no. <laughs> so this, are you faithful? God, we have so much in common. Are you faithful to the Playboy Playmate? One hundred percent. Honestly, she's one of the most incredible girls I've ever met in my entire life. So 100%. until two thousand nine. But a no, guy like you can't great. get married, I don't think, because you just got too much fun, you got too much play going. Well, on. I I got a lot of stuff I need to accomplish in my life. Of course, yeah, I'm thinking yet. about marriage. You know, obviously at this stage of my life, she would be the girl that I would want to marry, but. Uh, I think there's a lot, for both of us, there's a lot of things that we need to accomplish. Get to a thousand chicks. You know what I mean? Do how that. Many, hey, man, how do you know I'm not there yet? Uh, you know what? <laughs> how far Maybe you are. <laughs> he was there when he was 15. <laughs> Give me a rough estimate. Yeah, but, Give me a rough estimate. So, so oh, you, I don't know. Can you bang? <laughs> That's the point. I lost count past 10. Can you bang a chick at the Playboy Mansion, or do you have, or is that dangerous? Um, 
I never have. It's right. it's uh, it, it's a lot people of do it. You know, to be honest, I've walked into the garage and people are getting wild in there, and but too right. many people are. It's kind of a you know, it's like an out. orgy scene. Yeah, it's, you, it's you've never orgied. You never had two girls at the same time. I imagine you've put that together now. I mean, honestly, yes, I have had two girls one time. Look at you. Yes, I, I actually had four at one time. To be really, oh if, you, if you want to be perfectly now, honest, now what do you do with four? <laughs> yeah, is that difficult? Is it four four women and just you? Right, no other guy in the room. Uh, it, you know, it's it's a little it's it's a lot of work. I'll say that yeah. you got to make sure that they're into each other you know a lot of right. it is them hooking up with each uh-huh. other would so the this, winner of bromance so get one of the four were these girls playboy playmate <laughs> types were they that uh good looking that type they were they were very uh, they were very pretty where girls, do you meet yes. four girls where you can bang all four uh, in one night I, to be honest i didn't bang all four okay. but i i was with a, a a girl that liked girls right so um so she what type of girls a famous girl no no not no, a famous just, girl. A just a nice a, girl yeah, yeah beautiful right. girl and yeah. she liked girls and so you know she was a beautiful girl so she was girls that you know flocked to her right. so that would happen and she so would kind of take advantage and she'd take them were all you at a club that night and met three women who all wanted to come into your room and hang with you guys i, I mean I, they liked her to be honest right. they were after her and and i just kind of i just got to be there so when you go there <laughs> in the right place at the right time let's say <laughs> so brody when you walk into the room and the, 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 like like you know you all go back you're probably drinking and stuff you're hanging right. out it's probably at a hotel or something right. no it's back at yeah, back at her condo. place or, or, back yeah, at the condo place, okay the condo. so you get all the girls and you know something's gonna happen because this is a wild group and they've probably already been all over each other right you bring them back and then they all start giggling and stuff right. and after they do this fucking masculine and everything else and and ecstasy <laughs> <Masculine>. <laughs> You gotta get them going. Was it 1978? Masculine. All right, my day was masculine. <laughs> Show my age. All right, All listen right, to so, me. So, yeah, lewds. Yeah. lewds, whatever it is you got. Right. So, yeah, so they start giggling and stuff, and then they like get naked, and they get in the hot tub or something, and they all start like partying. Right. So, what do you do? Like, what's your game plan in a situation like that? I mean, you just, you got to go with the flow. You, you know? get naked, you, you, you go, beat off in the corner and just don't <laughs> lay back? Or no, t- I, was, I was with the girl that I had already been with. So right. I obviously would pay most of my attention to that. And then, you know, obviously watch the show, see what's going on around you. And You didn't pay any of the other out. three? No, I didn't. You no. did not? You didn't no, touch I didn't. I, I really didn't. But no, they blew you, went. some of them. You know, there was some there was some hands and some and some mouths involved. Let's say wow. that. But uh, look at you. But, uh, You're living hand to mouth. <laughs> look at this. You know, I think Nicole Richie is very right. attractive. Mm-hmm. Now, yep. some people disagree with me. You went out with her for a long time, right? Uh, for yeah, we did. We yeah. uh, I've known her since I was a little kid. So same I would kind like to bang thing. her. You would go over her house, see Lionel Richie and these type of people. Yeah, we yeah. Have, uh, family friends. Um, and she lived actually lived in the same building as me uh, in wow. Hollywood. So she was right upstairs. Um, and yeah, we got to you How know, really know each other. It was. Yeah. Did she? She get good heroin? <laughs> oh God, he's more. He's into heroin. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was she your first? Uh, first? Uh, no, 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 she was not. No, she's not my first. No. Could she go to bed? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. Wow. She seems she was, nuts. Yeah. yeah, she was. No, she was. I know. would like to do her. <laughs> hey man, would I, I enjoy well, she's, that? She's mad. Well, uh, she yeah, you, you'd enjoy. It. She's married. Did now. you go I got to the, the kid. I didn't. No. You did not. No, I didn't. Why? Because you're an ex-boyfriend. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't get the invite, so yeah, maybe that's it. Well, did you ever get to bang Paris Hilton? No, never. But they were Always. friends, right? Yeah. All through that. Yeah. Why would you never bang her? I don't understand, especially when she was younger. Um, just. It never, you know, it just never really? happened. Never they didn't, happened. They no, didn't we, go that yeah, way. no, we didn't go that way. We're just, we always were just friends. <laughs> you just weren't attracted to her. No, it had nothing to do with about not being attracted to her. Just honestly, Flat with ass. her and Nicole, we were just, you know, I think we're she'd all be growing all up as friends. I figured she'd be all over you. Uh, no, I've known them for so long. You know, Nicole just kind of it happened. Um, but how long you get? How long were you banging her? Uh, <laughs> I, like, I mean, she's got a kid and Joel. Jo- jo- I like Joel, jo- but. Uh, you know, we were hanging out for about, I'd say, six months. Nice. Like four, five, Is it a pain in the ass to get rid of a broad like that? I mean, how do you break up after you've been friends your whole life with her? Uh, you know, you just you just go your separate ways. You don't really think about how you're going to do it or strategize how you're going to do it. it just Especially a happens. chick with a black father. It's hard to get rid of him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I tried. It's tough. Oh my. Right, Robin? Tell him. <laughs> <laughs>
You know what I do? I just do something freaky, and they want it like, a, I'm going to eat your it. ass, and I'm going to get out of here. The, I know, I know if, if I'm hanging out with a girl for six months, if, if, I'm, if I'm dating a girl for six months, I know exactly how to get rid of them. I, I try to kiss them. <laughs> I just go, I'm going to eat your ass like a lollipop. And just, uh, I'm out of here. Uh, you Can I have a kiss? What? You're so gross. I don't know how big a fan of the show you are, how often you get to hear our show, but uh, J.D., is he hates oh, you. Man. Yeah, but you know. A lot right? of guys must hate you because of bromance and, and oh, everything. Good. Yeah, but come on, he's obviously a, perfect, a nice guy. Yeah, but, but JD, JD would have been a perfect contestant on Bromance. Mm. No, he yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> oh, yes, he would. Yes, he would. You know that JD would want to be bros. Absolutely. He might be too he, hostile. He has the same problem hey, with Brody JD. You're the opposite of this I guy. No, no shit. I wouldn't have made the Bromance <laughs> because according according to the bro man show rules. You had to be able to get chicks, and I can't get chicks. So. Is that right? You have to be able to get chicks? You yeah. Give it, no, I mean, he, that was just the first little challenge, but you're, nah, you can't give up no, that no. easy. You're, that was on extra, I got, dude. You said that on extra. I got, I got faith in you. I think you could get chicks. Well, oh, no, I might do. Yeah. I, mean, I can't. You try, you already tried. You did. You, you banged that, uh, the chick uh, kissy fur. Didn't you? <laughs> no, Kimberly Kane. Oh, Kimberly Kane. Really he banged Kimberly Kane. Oh, Kimberly, okay. Kimberly okay. Kane. He doesn't know. Whatever. He knows he, who Kimberly he, Kane is. He got laid at, in Vegas while I was there. It cost me uh, a yeah. grand. <laughs> Dude, does that count if you pay for it? Uh, yeah, it counts. It yeah, counts. It counts. Yeah, it counts. Yeah, you can get girls. Yeah, come yeah. on. Well, all right. I never well, said you could, you know, throw out you, some you, cash. You, but, but, but be honest. You hate Brody Jenner. He's everything that you're Let's, not. I, I don't know him. But from what I see on the TV and whatever, I hate his guts. I think he's the biggest <laughs> douchebag ever. Why do you think he's a douchebag? Be honest. I think mean, Brody can handle he's it. He's not, not a douchebag. Yeah, he's, 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 he's all good. Yeah, I, think no Brody, I think Brody will forget this soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like he's going to care. But Why is he a douchebag? I think he Bring jealous. It I think he seems like a nice kid. He does. Yeah, he's nice. Oh, he's going to be a douchebag here. But, yeah, well, uh, douchebags are douchebags everywhere. Yeah, they can't yeah. turn it off. What, what does, does he do? His whole Tell life me. is just flaunted in front of every like sort of media, like TMZ and, and the TV. Or but that, that's not necessarily. That's not up to me. I don't go home and call the TMZ uh, cameras and say, hey, come, you know, go to the Yeah, sure. And the Hills isn't uh, real or fake or whatever. What's the, well, he's trying to make well, a living. Your is job is to tape it his isn't life. real or fake. What's the, you tape his life. While, I mean, really. Arden's right. Your he job lives, is to tape his he life. He lives his life, and your job is to tape his life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, so, I'm, so glad, I'm so glad I came here so everyone could laugh no, at me. What what our job is to talk about his life. Uh, what is the douchiest thing you he's saw him do? He's the only one do? living a life Be honest. in the room. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. Brody I'm curious. I'm, yeah, yeah, what is the douchiest thing? Come on, thing? come on. Let's I, I, well, you know what? I read, uh, I read a story oh, like reading, page, reading, page reading. six or something. Right. Well, like no one you knew released the story. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, about let's how he had to turn it. away girls at a party or something one time. There were just so many girls that he couldn't handle them all, and he just had to turn some away. Is that so his fault? So yeah. was he a douche for that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you, he sounds like he's jealous. That's fair. I think it sounds. Brody, I think. Hit the jackpot there. <laughs> you know, when you were hanging out with Ryan Phillippe. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. What about that? Yeah. You were uh, jealous of him, too. I mean, you were jealous of him. No, I was not jealous of Ryan Phillippe. Phillippe? No. 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 Well, he was getting all the women. Well, they, well, no, he had a girlfriend. He has a girlfriend, so. Well, if he hadn't had a girlfriend there, all the women would have been hitting on him. Well, Do you want you me to what? send you out to Malibu and you hang out with Brody and his no, girlfriend? No, that's okay. Brody. I, I, I you know. Come go, on. I bet you he'd get you laid. Do you know how to watch yeah. surfboards? He <laughs> could at least get you, He could hook you up with uh, Nicole Richie or someone like this. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, hey, my, lady, my lady's got a ton of hot friends. They're all playmates. <laughs> oh, so okay. I could hook you Turn up. Turn him down, yeah. J.D. Come on now. You know what? Me, me, Benji, and you will go out there and <laughs> yeah, see, who could, see who could fuck. You yeah, have to come to the mansion right? with me. Why That's a bromance. You, uh, why did you kiss Lindsay Lohan and stop at that? Was there a smell? Was what was going on there? Why did you? Why didn't you do? Why didn't you complete the deed with her? Uh, um, just you know, <laughs> never really got around it. We were we were just kind of friends, and it just happened. We just kissed. That In other words, it. when you get as much pussy as you do, Lindsay Lohan's no big prize. In other words, you've got your pick. Did of she it. look like trouble? <laughs> yeah. She's a, she's a, she's fun. She's a fun girl. I'm gonna yeah. say that she's a very fun girl. She's disturbed. Is she up? Is she disturbed? <laughs> no, not that I. Not but that I. But something must have happened. You started making out with her, and then something said, "I got to get out of this." What was it? Yeah. Was she sloppy? <laughs> what was it? Samantha. It was Ron's actually she dick? had no. Nah, she had. <laughs> she had what? We were. Uh, I was in the middle. I was in a bed, and I was in the middle, and she had. It was her on one side, and then one of her best friends was right here. So I mean, we weren't gonna go past uh, making out. I, I'm just gonna so. leave. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna go kill himself. Now he's really. <laughs> now he hates you. <laughs>
I don't know why no, he's holding that, that again. That's all good. She was with a friend, and it would have been uncomfortable to make love to her in front of the friend. Yeah, and I just, honestly, yeah. she was a really fun girl to hang out with party. And a lot of times when you, you make love with somebody, it makes things more complicated than it needs to be. So. Is Nicole Richie one of the best in bed that you ever had? Uh, she, you know, she's good. She's no she's, she's good. She's good in bed. I'll be honest, the gr- my girlfriend right now, love my, she is what makes absolutely a girl, incredible. What makes a girl good in bed for you? Uh, I mean, they got to be a little wild, you know. They got to be a little wild in bed. And what is wild to you? I th- just, you know, I mean, well, I'm sure it's the same as you. Wild, just fun, and obviously they have. Dirty Sorry words. to be. I'm gonna. You I'm gonna get. I'm gonna bring it. You know. Bring it on. Multiple, multiple orgasms. I right. think is is what's incredible when <laughs> a girl what has. Been, is that what right. I've been missing? It's the truth. When a girl has multiple orgasm, there is no better feeling. Because you in the feel world. great. Oh, like, yeah, hey, you know, great. she's having a good time. Yep. You're delivering the goods. Exactly. It isn't necessarily licking her. And these or, are real yep. orgasms. It's orgasms. Oh no no no. Oh, I mean, I have <laughs> scars on my back to prove it. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't. I would like to bring on just one orgasm. Yeah, you like to have a scar. I've never been in the room when a chick has had an orgasm. What is that like? And tell me what it's yeah. like for you. I understand, like, you can go to a club. You right. can get paid $20,000 mm-hmm. to just show up at a club right. and to go to a party. Mm-hmm. Is that right? And, I mean, you do that quite often. Yeah. I mean, you know, when it, gets, when it gets offered, obviously, it's $20,000. And wow. you know, what, what some people do for $20,000, I mean, I, I feel so fortunate and grateful to be able to go to a, a nightclub or an event or something like that and be able to make that kind of money. And what do you do there? You just hang out and you um, sign autographs? Yeah, or? you sign autographs, take pictures with fans, and, and just hang out and really and party with them. You know, wow. They, they, they can actually see. get to you because usually uh, yeah, I yeah. think you guys are totally away. No, no, no. For the, you know, I, I'm, I love, absolutely love my fans, you know, and I love people that support me. So, it, you know, obviously it gets a little crazy sometimes and they, you know, come in. You, you know, ever bang any of your fans? Like, do you ever go to any of these things unless you're partying and you're getting paid and you're all not that? And, uh, honestly, a trick there, yeah. honestly, no, not really. Not, really? I don't, yeah, it gets a little. It, a lot of them are kind of, you know, I would say maybe stalkerish, kind of a little. It's just you don't. It's yeah, not you the. Be careful. Yeah, it's not really. No one know, ever stalks me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's it's fantastic your life. I, I have to say something. I understand why JD is jealous. Uh, the new show, by the way, is called Bromance. The, the Brody's having so much fun in life. People that, are killing themselves to dudes, try to be friends. With. They want to be friends with them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty incredible. That is. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what. It's a pretty amazing life. What it's, the hell? I don't think it gets I, better than that. I think life is about, you know, celebrating it because life is so short. And I think that, you know, as long as you're doing good things to other people and having a good time, I think that's what life's about. Mine hasn't been short enough. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne from Brooklyn, quickly oh, for Brody. Oh, Brody, get it. I want to hide for Paul McCartney. But isn't Kathy Lee gifted your mother? I mean, your godmother? Oh, you must oh, be hiding my daughter, Nicole. She's a big oh, hill fan. Oh, all right, is Kathy Lee Gifford your? <laughs> is she is she your godmother? No. Oh. No. <laughs> no, but that you know. Uh, no. All right, Rick, Could you imagine ahead. the yapping gossip that must go around that broad's house? Oh my God! She... I heard that Kathy Lee Gifford is her godmother. <laughs> oh, you should call. You should call. Is it Nicole a fan of romance? Oh, uh, Rick, go ahead. Hey, King, I just wanted to ask uh, Brody, Doc, yep. you dated Kristen Cavallari for a year. Does she like to have her ass spanked, and is she shaved down there? Kristen Cavallari <laughs> is who? We, we refresh my memory. She was on uh, Laguna Beach. Right. She very good-looking girl. Yeah, she's pretty, is she shaved girl. fully? Uh, yeah, she is. She is. <laughs> and does she like to have her ass spanked? I mean, what is that all about? I mean, I think I think most girls do like to have their ass spanked. You're a spanker? Yeah. I, I'm not, no, I'm not necessarily a, a, a spanker, but, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of girls are into that. So I mean, You don't choke women, do you? You know, if, if they ask for it. <laughs> she does whatever the fuck no, you want. <laughs> all right, let's go yeah. to, uh, let's see. Okay, that was Rick who wanted to know if uh, Brody had spanked Kristen Cavalieri. Uh, all right, here's Joe. He says he doesn't like you. Okay. Let's find Another out why. One. Joe, why? What has Brody done to you? Hey, now, Howard. Hey, now. I agree with J.D. 100%. Uh, you're a douche. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all good. No, hey, listen, I just wanted to, uh, I did want to ask you, why, what do you think the perception is of 
your friend Spencer, Spencer Pratt. He's always like vilified by the media. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every time TMZ has him on, uh, you know, everybody uh, reports on him. Just is Spencer to, um, uh, vilified in the uh, press, and is it is fair? It un- yeah, he uh, warranted. This is the thing about Spencer: is that he he got labeled as the villain very early on. You know, people yeah. obviously didn't like him. They didn't like his take and how he you know deal with Heidi and the whole Lauren thing. And so he got labeled that, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Right. You know, he he's he took that a role. Career. He took that role and said, that's fine. Put the big finger in everybody's face and said, that's who I'm going to be. So all those little cheesy things you see him doing on Valentine's Day and all the little... It's his character. It's putting him in every, you know, on every website, every magazine. And, you know, for, he knows exactly what he's doing. Jason, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, hi. Hey, I, I, got, a, I got a real problem with this, man. $20,000 to show up at a fucking party. But I need jealous. Well, then don't pay. No, I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. <laughs> I Please am. Just hear me out. There are people out there with real freaking jobs. These shows like the OC and the Hills and whatever. I mean, what kind of a reality are you, are you a fake reality are you putting out there for these kids nowadays? It, it, it's, it's so... Well, who are you mad I at? I don't get it. You sound yeah, angry. I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad at, I'm mad at general. I'm just mad in general at what I see when I turn on the TV. It's just nothing but all these rich kids flaunting. And it's not his fault how he was born or who he was, uh, you know, yeah. uh, you know, born to. But, uh, I mean, it's just flaunted. It's in everybody's face. And, you know. It's hard for you to handle. I see what you're saying. But poor kids, since the beginning of time, time, poor kids yeah, like I mean, watching uh, rich kids. And, you know. and I, that's one thing that I wanted to do in the very beginning was separate myself from my parents. And I got a ton By of way, shit By the way, are you up. a rich kid in the sense that, like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, Foster was your stepfather, but he's no longer your stepfather. Not at all. And, that's, and your mom I probably pay, doesn't have a lot of money. I pay all my own bills. And that's but one thing. But his mom has a lot of money. Does she? You know, she's she's not poor you right. know she's but no she by no means does she have she a ton of money she no does not in, you. not in the, and you know what that's one thing i did growing up was wanting to separate myself from my parents right. which was you know i actually got david a paycheck you know i got david paid for the princess of malibu and there was there was no better feeling for me than you know to create something and do something that was sold to fox what was your first car uh, my first car that i ever bought was an escalade Mm-hmm. God, but then I bought myself, you know. And obviously, they, right. they, I was, you know, I was raised with privilege, and they bought me things growing up. But the one thing I want to do is separate myself from that because I did get a lot of grief for being the rich kid. So you didn't get a car until you bought it yourself? Oh no, no, I, oh no, they bought me a car when of I was course. sixteen. The but I mean, I, but then my, ne- I bought my first car ever was an F two fifty. They bought me an F two fifty pickup truck. All right. All right, Dan, go ahead. You're on the air in Philly. I was supposed to say this dude's, uh, is, he's a fucking butthole. I <laughs> thought I wouldn't get through if I said I hated his ass. <laughs> no, you would That's get why through no matter. Fucking, I met him. You met, you met him? him? No, I, I had oh. to say that to the screener. I thought I wouldn't get through. Oh, okay. All right. Well, listen. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Fucking smack dance and this bro shit. It's a fucking gay shit, man. <laughs> See, <laughs> that, that's fucking that idiot. What the fuck that, is wrong with you with the bro? That you know right how, there, you know though. Artie, you know how Artie feels about the bro thing. <laughs> but see, but that right there, and that's you that's the thing with that's the thing with bromance. A lot of guys People like are uptight that. about bromance, and it's because everybody is saying this whole gay thing, <laughs> gay thing, right? You think it's gay? Queer? Nothing it's gay. Like about, something happened to you as a, as a child about or something? Fucking the Playboy playmate. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on now. <laughs> okay. But do you have a, a bromance? Do you have a friend, a guy that you can open up to? And of course. You yeah, do? I think okay. it's I think it's therapy in a way. Mine know, is friend. Be able to. Fred. Yeah, you got to have somebody. You know? Never mind bromance. That's my romance. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's go to Ralphie Boy. Hey, no. hey, no. hey, yeah, actually, one of the one of his friends on the show was like almost in tears because Brody was looking for a new friend. Oh. Right. He ran out like a girl. <laughs> you know, I was sort of in the JD camp. I thought he was a douchebag. I was even working on a list, like, because he's got his name tattooed on his body and he wears his pants around his ass like a wigger, but you know what? He's coming up pretty good on the show. He seems like a cool seems dude. Seems like a good guy to me. I yeah. like uh, Brody. Uh, might have been wrong. He might yeah. not be such a douchebag. That's right. <laughs> thank he you might very not much. Be. And let me tell you something. Ralph's a douchebag, and it takes one to know him. <laughs> right, Ralph, thank you, Ralphie. He's not in my category. That's right. Well, listen, Brody. Yep. You're obviously controversial. I mm-hmm. think some guys are always going to be jealous of you. Mm-hmm. You got the life. You know? But is that a bad thing? Nope. You know, like J.D., you know, he's angry. Mm -hmm. J.D. wants to be you. That's J.D.'s problem. What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, you got a good thing going. You got a couple of these TV shows. If people are hating on you, you know you're doing something right. That's right. You got the broads. Listen, the the, the, the sexual frenzy you're in is uh, few will know. You understand what I'm saying? (laughs) Right. Uh, It seems to me it's your job to pollinate every little flower out there. Yep. And uh, <laughs> give it to them hard and give it to them fast. That's all the advice I'm going to give you. Did you ever bang Sounds any of your good. teachers? 
Never. Never. No, no. Yeah, never. I had a couple fantasies, but never had Boy, never if anybody could have done it, I figured it would I was going to say, the teachers weren't hitting on you. Yeah. Uh, no, nah. like I said, I was chubby back in the day. So. <laughs> Looking at all the guys in this room, including myself, we never got to bang the teacher either, oh, so okay. don't feel too bad. Definitely right, not. Good, good. I like Thank you. you I think much. you're a good dude. And Thank uh, thanks for stopping by and telling us about all these bitches. <laughs> Thank you for I'll having tell me. you that. You got Appreciate a lot of famous it. ones, not so famous ones. It doesn't matter. It's all good. <laughs> exactly. You ever bang a fat chick? Probably not. Huh? Uh, you got to take one for the team every once in a while. <laughs> really? Look at you. All right. You're a good man. Just for the fuck of it, right? Yeah, you right. got to make him happy. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll uh, do me a favor yeah. before you leave. Let JD yes. smell your finger. Oh, okay. Okay. Both of you, let him smell your hand. That's that's, that's so, fine. Uh, he can get I'll a little. He, he wants to get a little of that stink. Okay. Right, we'll be back right after uh, these words. Brody Jenner, everyone. Brody, how to go, go, man? Oh, it was incredible. What do you like was... about doing the show? I just love how real it is. You know, I just love that you can say anything, do anything. Yeah, is it hard to say anything? Like, you know, you talked about like your your past girlfriends and. Sex life? You think you're gonna get in trouble for anything? Hey man, it's or? Howard Stern. I get, I get the, I get the getaway free pass right there. I gotta say, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do on Howard Stern. So, what do you think about JD? He wasn't too fond of you. I mean, it's all, it's all good. JD can. I liked him. I thought he was a nice guy, so it didn't bother me at all. Why do you hate him so much? Because I hate it. Like Rice says, I hate everyone. <laughs> yeah, but dude, if you, if you had the opportunities he had. You telling me you wouldn't act the same way? Well, I don't know. I haven't be, had those opportunities, so I don't know. You wouldn't be banging every hot chick that walked by you? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. He's just living his life, man. That, no. He's playing the. Well, I don't the need to know about it. I don't need to see it on TV all the goddamn time. So don't watch it. It's not. Yeah, who's who's making you watch it? It's my job to watch it. This is the best of the wrap-up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. On Tuesday's wrap-up show, uh, we talked about Howard had discussed on the show. He took a bunch of us to a real fancy New York restaurant, and uh, we we learned what we did wrong. Uh, we learned that I can't come late and that Robin ordered $800 bottles of wine. We discussed uh, how Howard instructed us about the things that we don't do correctly when we go out to eat. Check it out. What did you think of Robin's reaction, Gary, when Howard asked her what was the deal with the three bottles of $800 wine? As uh, Jeff Probst would say, you were completely blindsided, weren't you? She totally didn't see it coming. When Howard said, I got to talk about you, Robin, she really, I mean, I don't think she saw that coming. And when you're on the show and that happens, that is the worst there could be. It's one thing, like, if I, like, Benji left that dinner knowing he was 20 minutes late. You, and Benji, you knew you were going to walk in and take some shit today, right? You had a feeling? Yeah. Right. Yeah, did. Robin did ha- Robin had no idea and that's when it's the worst. And I understand Robin is extremely generous. I mean, everyone took great pains to talk about how she, you know, she wouldn't do something like that if if, if someone had done it to her and it was her dinner. But it irked Howard. You could tell. He definitely was was set off by it a bit. Yeah, it's just one of those weird things. It's just it's just, you know, when you get the bill and you know, if you're treating a bunch of people to dinner, I've been down that road before, you sort of calculate it in your head. And when you get thrown a curveball like that, it's just shocking. Benji, what did you think of it? The dinner? Well, the dinner and the, the oh, situation. Oh, Robin's eight hundred dollar wine. I try to be real careful when I order when someone takes me out. In fact, sometimes I don't like it because you don't get what you want because someone else wants to cover. I agree with Benji. I it's like sometimes I might want the lobster tail special, but I'm not going to get that on somebody else's dime because it's just you know it's just not what you do. But I knew there was a, I knew there was an issue because like I said, I had seen the bill and I had seen how much it was, and I thought to myself, well, that's a lot. I know this is a phenomenal restaurant. That's a lot for food. So the first thing that that went off in my head was the wine must have been expensive. And I knew there were three bottles. And what happened was I went home and I looked at the wine because they gave us these beautiful little folded things with the label for the wine. And when I got home, I started online for 400 So I said to my wife, that had to be at least 800 bucks a bottle. I kind of I agree with Robin, though. Like, once she told Howard to check the menu for, like, do you sure you want a second and third? Maybe she should have been a little bit more insistent. Like, look at that menu, Howard, you know. She should have just said no. it. She, when she got it, she, she should have. What she probably should have done was, Howard, I'm thinking about getting this bottle here. What do you think? Right, right. And then it's and then you see it. But uh, even asking someone, what do you think? Of course, they're going to say, Oh, sure, go for it. I guess you're right. You know what? Howard wouldn't say, No, don't get that. It's eight hundred dollars. It's 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 a weird thing to be in. And Benji, your issue wasn't what you ordered. It was the fact that you never ate it, or you were missing all these signals that I, have become very apparent well, to everybody and, and else. If you notice, because Gary said to me during the break. 
Howard made a big deal that I was a half hour late, but I said I got there at seven twenty. And Gary, Benji did get there at seven twenty, but it was still by seven ten. Howard was furious. But here's what I don't get, Benji: you're still twenty minutes no, you know, late. This well, is hold what on, happened. hold okay. on. You're still twenty minutes late. Right. Howard said you're sort of on the fringe of the Fab Five, or whatever right. you want to call it. Wouldn't you take you know great pains to make sure that you're there earlier because you don't have that far to travel either? Well. Howard had said it's at 7 p.m., and I, f- I thought about saying to him in advance, hey, do you mind if I get there like a half hour but late? But why? Already, already you're, you're – Yeah, you're why are you being fashionably why, late? Why are you making trouble? Because I like to sleep first during the day. But, but see, you're and, off. And, and, and this isn't about Howard. I mean, but but so, I decided on. not to make a big deal about some it. Of, just try to get there as soon as Some of this is about Howard, but I'm going to take Howard out of, the, out of the, the, the equation for a minute and say we all worked at IBM, and our big boss, who doesn't take us out very often – said, I'd like to take you guys out for dinner. If you walked in 20 minutes late, it's as big, a big, it's as big an issue. It's sort of like it's, sort of like it's rude, you know, and, and it's, especially when it's your boss and it doesn't happen every, very often. And listen, I'm not saying I'm a goody two-shoes, but I'm going to tell you right now, Mary came in on the train, and she had a choice of a train that got in at 6.15 or 6.45. The 6.45 train probably would have made us five minutes late. I'm, I'm like, there's no need for us to be late. Right, yeah, it was a bad idea. And you know how Howard... It didn't, it didn't go over like the big hit that I expected. Well, you know how I mean, Howard but, but, is when it comes to stuff like that, too, in terms of punctuality. I, I guess, like, to me, maybe, you know, because I like Howard so much and like you guys so much, I just look at it as a casual dinner with friends. And when I'm Did going you out really with, look at it as a casual... I mean, I, I, I wasn't nervous about dinner, but I know, like, Howard's putting this on. You know he's so precise about these things. You know that um, he hates lateness. You know that he wants everybody... He mentioned to us several times, make sure you're dressed right. You know, he, he's very precise about these things. He wants it to run a certain way, and you're aware of that. Now, I'm not saying you have to agree with it, but I'm saying you're aware of it. See, I always think of it like there's a dinner more than, like, four people. You can be within, like, a half hour or so. Like that's Based on th- what? I just think that's, I don't know. That's, but that's you just a, made that up. Uh, yeah, it's not in Miss, <laughs> Miss Emily Post. <laughs> but it's, I've never heard that, that from any, like, no, uh, t- so, like, if it's more than, if, if we're having eight people at dinner, then you can be a half hour late? Yeah. But that's just insane. Well, now, now now it can be. That's part of the change. All right. Now Benji's aware. We'll get out of the vortex and go to Bill in Scranton. Bill, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, great show today. I uh, really like it. Uh, it's, it's kind of obnoxious uh, of Robin to order an 800 bottle of wine. It's, it's irrelevant whether someone can afford it or not. If, even if you're out to dinner with Bill Gates, an $800 bottle of wine, uh, $800 bottle of wine is still an $800 bottle of wine. And, and quite honestly, you know, Robin or anyone else at that table wouldn't know the difference between an $800 bottle and a $20 bottle. I, I know I don't. I'll be the first to admit. I only took a sip of my wine, and I poured the rest in my wife's glass, and when the waiter went to fill up my glass, I, don't, I just don't drink red wine. Do you? Think- but if it were white wine, it would have been, instead of $2,400, it would have been 3200 I would have tanked that right down. Bill, do you think uh, Robin was hurt when Howard brought that up? Um, yeah, I think she was hurt, and probably she deserved it. I mean, that's 2400 bucks for three bottles of wine. That's, you know, that Robin with all her, uh, you know, altruistic uh, uh, endeavors and the, the women in Altria. It, 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 it's just incongruous to order $2,400 bottles of wine and then say, you know, go off on a tangent on other times you're helping poor women in some other country. It's just. But why can't, it, she, do, why can't she do both? Why can't she spend her, This wasn't her money, but why can't Robin spend her money the way she wants to and help oh, people in another country? You know what? If it was her money, that would be fine, but she's spending someone else's money. It's, it's, I, I think the proper thing would have been to do, you know what? Let me buy the wine. You're buying dinner. I like this wine. I know it's a really good wine. Let me offer to buy the wine. You know, Bill, I, Bill said, I, actually, no, you- I actually think you're off of that. I think the proper thing to have done was to go for a, you know, Robert said, you know, even the lower end bottles of wine were like 100 or 200. Get a $200 bottle of wine. And I think that would have been the way to go. But, again, she, you know, Robin didn't do it with any maliciousness. And I did really feel bad for her today because she did not see it coming. And she was she was stung by it, stung really hard. All right, Bill, thank you for your call. Ralph Sorella, you're back on the wrap-up show. Bill said all of that pretty well. I mean, it really is disgusting. I mean, beyond disgusting, especially in this fucking economy, to go out and order an $800 bottle of wine. Wait, wait, wait. One bottle. It's just disgusting. Wait, Ralph, just if you're like, if she just went out to dinner herself, you'd still say it's disgusting? Oh, yeah. But and then to heap that on somebody else, and it's... Like, she's got to know Howard. <clears throat> Howard has a tremendous respect for money. 
and he doesn't throw it around like that. And uh, you know what I mean? I, I really don't see Howard sitting down and ordering $800 bottles of wine. And like that other guy said, who at that table is really, you, you know, understanding that? And if it is, like, if I was drinking the $800 bottle of wine, I'd want to know it. You know, please right. announce it to the table. <laughs> right. I, I, right. I wish I would have known because I would have yeah. taken a few more sips and I would have tr- said, okay, let me log this away. This is what $800 wine tastes yeah, like. But, but, oh, I mean, but, but how do you present that? Do you come out and you say, don't. now, this is an 800 I mean, what do you, what do, you do? It's so tacky. The whole, the whole thing is tacky. Don't get started with an $800 bottle of wine. It's ridiculous. But if Robin wants to spend that kind of money on herself, why is that disgusting? Oh, because it's just it's just because because it's no respect for money. I mean, she doesn't she doesn't know the difference between a twenty as much as she thinks she's an expert. She's not going to know the difference between a twenty dollar bottle and a two hundred dollar bottle, and it's just a waste of money. Doesn't she have anything better to do with her money than waste it? What's up, guys? It's Teddy. On Wednesday's wrap up show, we discussed Artie's uh, most recent nap. Uh, from being exhausted as a New York Times bestseller. And uh, some of the callers on the wrap-up show are actually pretty pissed off, so check it out. Will, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. Um, dude, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Artie's a fucking sleep. He just left the show. I mean, that's disrespecting Howard so much. Dude, I mean, I know everybody just squats to be whatever and let Artie do that, you know, whatever. But he's a fucking drug addict who's just disrespecting the show. And I love Artie. I'm a big fan, but it's just, I'm tired of it, man. Come on. Well, the only thing I could say to you, is I don't, I don't disagree with a lot of what you said, is I follow Howard's lead. And Howard, at this point, does not have an issue with it. But- but, but Gary, Gary, listen to me, man. I know you love Howard. You're loyal. You're a good guy. That's why you come off as a good guy. You're a really loyal, good guy. And I know you love Howard. You you understand that Howard makes all this possible. I, I see that. I see that with you. I mean, Artie doesn't realize what Howard's done for him. And, you know, he all the bullshit in the book that he dedicated everything to him. But he's not showing it. He's fucking sleeping on the air. That's a slap in Howard's face. I mean... I mean, it just is, dude. It just, it's Howard's show, and Howard loves his show, and he, he would do anything for the show, and Artie's just fucking just making it like he don't give a fuck. I don't know, man. It's just it's frustrating. As a fan, it's frustrating. Well, I, I, I love I, Artie. I don't think I agree with I love Artie, and I think that there's some level of disrespect, and I agree with a lot of what you're saying. And you understand, like I said, if it's not bothering Howard, then I follow Howard's lead. You don't think deep down it might be, though, and Howard just don't want to make a big thing out of it, you know, because he knows that if he does say something, Artie might flip out? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think he, I don't think Howard's afraid of Artie flipping out or anything. Well, I don't think he's afraid. I think maybe he just, he just, he don't want Artie, because he, maybe he feels Artie might hurt himself or do something crazy, you know. It's not that Howard's afraid of him. It's just he, he thinks, like, if he tells Artie, you know, Artie, if you do this again, you're out, and Artie leaves the show, he might, you know, go on a binge, and, you know, maybe, maybe Howard fears, has a little fear of that, uh, you know. You might be right. I don't know that anybody's thought it through that much. All right, Will, thank you for your call. Um, speaking of Artie, that Rolling Stone article, uh, it's a rough article. I mean, Howard makes a point saying, you know, it's what the book's about, so it's good book promotion, and right. I, it does, I, it, I agree with that. It does the job if you're trying to sell more books. But it's a rough article. Yeah, I thought so, and, and I voiced my opinion. I said that, you know, uh, I made the analogy to the Belushi book. It shows all the bad side of Artie, which exists, but none of the good side. It only shows one side of Artie. Benj. Yeah. Is, uh, do you know if Artie woke up? As of uh, right now. No, like Langford was outside waiting for him. Yeah, Langford, crew, Langford, Langford is, for him. is you, just to cr- give you the visual, Langford is standing outside the door, the closed door, with his microphone pointed at right. at it to capture when he first comes out, I guess. And I'm, I'm sure Artie will be in a fantastic mood when he comes out and sees well, Steve's that. The pace comes walking by, and the pace goes, uh, how come nobody's going in there? I go, why poke the tiger? I said, come on, it'll be fun. I was like, do you really want to rattle him? I go, if the guy wants to sleep, let him sleep. So... The pace went in there with a camera, and already got he woke Artie up for a minute. Artie got really irritated, and then he just left. It is a little scary though, because like, of the past and the history that we know. Like whenever that happens, like what if God forbid he died or something? It would suck. Yeah. What, but what should we do? Like keep a heart. Should we should we do a drug test? He's he's taking a nap, you know, and we'll see uh, if and I mean, when he, he wakes up. He could lay down at home, and the same thing can happen, Benj. I mean. The, the the life the lifeline has been thrown to him. He's got to if he wants it, he's got to pull on it. We have well, a I, we have a defibrillator in the kitchen. Oh, do we? Yeah, yeah. 
I might take that to he my ho- I might take that to my hockey game on Thursday night. <laughs> uh, Tom, I'm playing with all 50 year old guys. Tom in Jersey, you're on the wrap up show. Gary, you should have Sal and Richard go into that fucking room and rub their cocks against his face. Yeah, then we'll just get to see a replay of the Artie Teddy incident. Oh, he would. I, you know, listen. It, it's not right to. It's not right for two wackos to rub their penises on a heterosexual man who's sleeping. And I love Artie. I'm a big fan of the show and a big fan of Artie. But I really think he's taking too much, you know, too much credit and too much uh, deliverance to, what, to, to his success and the book and everything. He just doesn't give a fuck. Do you know anybody in a work environment that will allow themselves to go and sleep in the middle of work? That That's unheard of. I, if, you, if anybody can come up with it, please give me the call and let me know. Yeah, but it's not unheard of here. Right. He's done it before. But who else has oh, ever well, done it here? Nobody you know, he gets away. He gets away with it over and over again. So why not continue? He gets paid, he paid a million bucks a year to sleep. Nice. Well, I think he does a little bit more than that. Well, you know, but he's still giving himself way too, you know, way too much uh, freedom to do whatever the hell he wants. And you know what? I blame Howard a little bit because Howard lets him get away with it. He should set his foot down and tell him, "Listen, you're here to work. You're here to entertain. Your absence from the room is, you know, people feel it because you're not you're not putting your share in, and people expect to hear you." Let's go to Keith in Connecticut. Keith, you're on the wrap-up show. Artie does a lot for the show, even being like he is now, and that's part of the reason I think Howard, you know, lets him get away with stuff hey, because so- it makes for good show, you Keith, know, Keith, whatever I, it is. Do I do a lot? Do you think I do a lot for the show? Oh, absolutely. Do you think it'd be okay if I took a day off or maybe took a nap halfway through the show? Because I do do a well, lot. For the, I do a lot for the show. Yeah, but it, you, you're two different guys. You're doing. You're a producer. You're doing the mechanics mechanics of it more more than he is. He's an entertainer. Okay, Benji. Benji. There. Benji is also falls into more of the arty category. Should Benji sort of come and go as he pleases? I never heard Benji being sick on air or sleeping or anything. No, I mean, so I'm I saying Benji does a lot for the show. So my yeah, question yeah, is, should does. he get you know be cut more slack and sort of? Yeah, and Benji, if Benji shows up late, he gets a lot of shit. Yeah, he's in a different he's in a different category, different league than Artie is too. Who, I, who I, else I, is in Artie's I, league? All you guys over there. I, I don't want to. Howard. Like Howard should take naps. Sorry. I was going to say, who else is in Artie's league? Well, you're all you're all so different. You all do different things. I mean, the show couldn't get along without you and Fred. I don't think at all. And and Robin could get along without, but you know she adds a little comedic whatever to the show, and she does her news. And Artie's the Artie's the uh, whatever he is. You know, I, I love the guy, and I I think that you know he needs some help. Obviously, and it'd be nice if you get him some help. But I think part of the reason everybody tolerates him is because he, he creates buzz like this. Everybody's talking. Right. Steve Langford's got something to do. You know, everybody's. All uh, excited about it, mad, upset, whatever. But yeah, it, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate show. with you a little bit, though, and I'll say, like you said, you know, you think the show could live without Robin a little bit. Maybe Robin should just start doing seven and nine. You know, skip the first hour, skip the last hour. That be all right? Well, well I, it would be all right with me, <laughs> but it's up to it's up to Howard and I, you guys. I'm just playing so devil's I'm advocate. Everybody is diverse. Everybody has their own has their own role on the show. And I think Artie's role is to be the clown or the comic or the fuck up or whatever you want to call him, you know. And he plays his role real well. And he, I mean, he's a talented guy. You know, I could have been friends with him in a different life. I'm 57 years old. I did heroin. I did coke. I did LSD. I did everything you can think of back in the 70s and 80s. I don't remember the whole decade between 70 and 80. So, you know, he, there's there's a way to stop this shit. And it's too bad because he's a talented guy. But there is a reason you guys let him do what he does. And and I think this is it. Did you go through a right rehab? Now. Pardon me? Did you go through? Were you an addict? No, no, no. I never got that. Well, I called for coke. I was. I did coke every day for probably four years, but I never, I never shot anything. I never mainlined anything. The coke was just a snorting thing. What made you and, stop? No, I never went to rehab. I never went to rehab. What made you stop, Keith? Yeah, I got married, had kids. That'll do it. On Thursday's wrap-up show, all the conversation was about Will the Farter farting in his mother's face, and I've seen a lot of crazy things on this show and heard a lot of stuff on this show. This could be one of the most wrong segments, I think, that it, that's ever happened. And uh, I think I've got pretty good sensibilities. But this time, I mean, there was so much to talk about. A 70 year old mom farting in her face and then not being able to talk about masturbating on a, on a website? Well, anyway, here's our discussion. One of the most disturbing segments ever done on the show, and that's saying quite a bit, and that was Will the Farter, who came in with his mother, who's 70, is that right, Gary? 70. She, could, she looked good. 70-year-old mom. A spry 70. And proceeded to fart in her face in order to get some money to fix their car. 
Do you agree it was one of the most disturbing moments, Kara? Absolutely. And uh, I looked up at my monitor at one point, and, you know, we had done that bit that we always do where, oh, you move, start the clock again. And my favorite one, Will is an evil person. Will goes, Howard, I saw her lip quiver, start the <laughs> clock again. So at one point, she had her hands over her chest, and she had her eyes closed. She looked like she was in a casket. She was laying perfectly still like she was dead, and he's blasting him out. And we got to the end, and he hit like what I call a really like juicy wet one, and she didn't move. It yeah. was it was he was squatting over his mother's face. Now before that all started, she was saying how proud she was of her son. I mean, she definitely Listen, I guess takes pride in his accomplishments. If your mom's not your biggest fan, you're screwed, right? That's true. So of course she's gonna love him, but you know I guess you have to support your kids in whatever endeavor. I don't know. I don't even know. I, I'm laughing as I say that statement. I guess she supports him in what he's doing. He's now, a nice guy. Now did you know that he was born without an asshole? You know, the funny thing is, I vaguely remember him mentioning that once, but when he says it, it, it like almost doesn't seem true. But when his mom says it? Yes. Th- when his mom said it, then it makes more sense. But he, even he was saying today, he's like, Howard, I told you that before, but I think we might have glossed over it. So he had a colostomy bag for three years. Which is like a big diaper. Yes. And then he uh, <laughs> and then he was... Uh, I, I wish my kid had something that instead of clean those diapers, <laughs> he just empty the bag. Oh, man. And then uh, he had an operation, and, and then... Achieved great success using that very uh, that that tool, and he was in a diaper and a bonnet for this. Is is that right? Yeah, I don't know that we asked him to do that. Oh, that was all Will. Yeah, yeah, we didn't say get a diaper. Okay, and if you missed it, here's just a little bit of Will uh, farting in his mother's face. One Ted. Tell me when you're ready, Will, and Priscilla. Tell me when you're ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's get this over with. Right, so get I can that die ass in right in your mom's face. Don't shut oh. up. Oh my God. How are you doing in there, Priscilla? I'm li- I'm li- Start I'm the li- clock now. I'm living. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm living. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Howard TV moment <laughs> of the year. This is as wrong as it's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> Even Robin's saying this is as wrong yeah. as it's ever been. Yeah. And interns were walking by my office, and they were like, Oh, my God, he's really doing it. Just the whole thing was, like, really, you know, just skeevy. Now, what kind of relationship could Will have with his mom, at least psychologically, to be comfortable enough, I guess, to do something like that? She loves him. He loves her. They need money. <laughs> that's, that's how I looked at the segment. That's it in a nutshell, I guess. But uh, when the website came up, it was a whole different ballgame. Oh, game. it was so great. Artie was just com- was so brutal to him today. So, I mean, I guess we can say now... You know, if you go to his website, I guess he does some wacky stuff. He's not gay, but he'll do some stuff. You know, it's on it's on the website. But he made it really clear that he didn't want his mother to know that. And Will, who works here, is like, you know, how just bring it up. It's on the website, you know. She could go to the website any time and see it and know what he's up to. But he was so freaked out. And Artie was just completely, you know, Artie had a phrase for every day of the week. Artie was merciless. Merciless. And you could see how uncomfortable it was. And it was so genuine. Because she was like, what's going on? She could clearly tell something was going on. And she's like, all right, who's making it up? And Howard was so nice and saying, you know, no, no, no. Artie's just kidding around. Now, based on what he does, why do you think he didn't want her to know? Listen, you can pawn the farting stuff off as juvenile, sophomoric. But you, the other stuff is just plain old getting paid for sex. Yeah. Well, well he's not having sex, but getting paid to, to perform a he, he, He's beaten off. Yeah, he was awfully nervous about his mom finding out. Let's talk to Dave in Arizona. Dave, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, John, Gary, great show. Love your show, guys. Thanks. Hey, uh, yeah, man, I was driving in my truck, and just the sound of that was making the cab of my truck stink. Man, that was, oh, holy cow. But uh, he's the natural fart man. The what? The natural fart man? Yeah, he's uh, oh, he's a born fart man. Yeah, maybe we should throw him in a superhero outfit. He always deli- yeah. he always delivers every he, time he comes in. I have to say that he's the last in a long line of you know go to farters on the show. We had a Dan the farter, and we had a Will the farter. We had a bunch of guys, but he's been our longest running go to guy forever, and you know he's so dependable. Yeah, man, it uh, that the show today though, holy cow, man! I just uh, I about shit myself laughing, but it, it was starting to stink in my cab just thinking about it. Yeah, he's good. Junior, Junior was another uh, Junior. That's right, one of the legends. And of course, Mister, uh, Mister Methane. Well, let's go to uh, Nick and Scranton. Nick, you're on the wrap up show. How close was his asshole to his mother's face? Within two inches, maybe less. Less than that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right there. Was there any splatter or no? No, I think that might have been why I put the diaper on. (laughs) 
Oh, but yeah, you said there was a hole in it, though. His asshole was actually exposed. Yeah, there was no splatter. <laughs> Will's a professional. Did you say the father-daughter, it just wrong, tops the Will farting in his oh, mother's face? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, on every level. Because you know what? There, it, while it's gross what Will and his mother did, there's no sexual connotation. You know, a dad addressing his daughter. What about this new product that he mình thắp lửa trái tim yêu để vững lối đi qua điều chăn chờ đưa em đến nơi tận cùng nỗi nhớ cùng hoa thân như gió mong mây kèm đem nồng nàn dâng cuồn hết đam mê màu sao tất bao bồn bề lo lắng cùng đắm đuối bù lúc xa thầm lặng buồn nóng nan cho khoảnh khắc yêu thương tình chúng ta sương vút tựa cánh diều như lúc nhỏ thấy chiều vui kia mình thắp lửa trái tim yêu để vững lối đi qua điều chăn chờ đưa em đến nơi tận cùng nỗi nhớ cùng hoa thân như gió mong mây kèm đem nồng nàn dâng cuồn hết đam mê màu sao tất ba bốn bề lo lắng cùng đắm đuối bù lúc xa thầm lặng buồn nóng nan cho khoảnh khắc yêu thương tình chúng ta sương vút tựa cánh diều như lúc nhỏ thấy chiều vui kia mình thắp lửa trái tim yêu để vững lối đi qua điều chăn chờ đưa em đến nơi tận cùng nỗi nhớ cùng hoa thân như gió mong mây kèm đem nồng nàn dâng cuồn hết đam mê màu sao tất ba bốn bề lo lắng cùng đắm đuối bù lúc xa thầm lặng buồn nóng nan cho khoảnh khắc yêu thương tình chúng ta sương vút tựa cánh diều <cười> Ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la Một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng Lặng nghe sông vỗ di dầm Như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi Ngắm nhìn mấy lượn lờ trôi Bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi Nắng vàng như miệng ai cười cho hoa đùa đó Cho người thêm xuân Ngắm màu xanh thẫm núi ngàn Chung chung điệp điệp
ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng lắng nghe sông vỗ di dâm như lời du thua ta nằm trong đôi ngắm nhìn mấy lần lờ trôi bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi nắng vàng như miệng ai cười cho hoa đùa đó cho người thêm xuân ngắm màu xanh thấm núi ngàn chung chung Ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la, một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng. Lắng nghe sông vỗ di dâm, như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi. Ngắm nhìn mấy lần lờ trôi, bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi, nắng vàng như miệng ai cười. I have to have rest and people are running around and going crazy. I was just saying, that with case the Barbados, that is a busy fucking time. Because it's loaded with scripts. Nắng soi khung cửa buồn Tình qua khu vườn vắng Em là mấy cuồn cuồn qua đời anh giang giang sông trôi qua đồng bằng mưa mịt mùng bên mộng em làm hoa dấu lặng bài nhạc tình mênh mông nỗi lặng im bình bông vẫn nằm thầm chẳng nói Nắng soi khung cửa buồn Tình qua khu vườn vắng Em làm mấy cuồn cuộn Qua đời anh giang giang Sông trôi qua đồng bằng Mưa mịt mùng bên mộng Em làm hoa dấu lặng Bài nhạc tình mênh mông Nỗi lặng im bình bông Vẫn nằm thầm chẳng nói Giang giang sông trôi qua đồng bằng mưa mịt mùng bên mộng em làm hoa dấu lặng bài nhạc tình mênh mông nỗi lặng im bình bông vẫn nằm thầm chẳng nói
Louie. So I start playing Louie Louie. Ugh. But that's the only fucking thing I know. <laughs> it's two chords. Yeah, C, F, and G. Three. It's hard to, three. It's hard yeah. to go wrong So I'm Louis playing Louis. Louis Louis, right? And and we were doing our thing. And Stamos, is, he's getting mad that everyone's such a fucking bad musician. <laughs> yeah. And he's, and, he, and he's bad-mouthing Mark McGrath. And oh, Mark really? Ma- yeah, what? Mark McGrath. Oh, I thought they were gonna, there was going to be a spat. It looked like they were going <laughs> to fight. They were going to fight. Because what did he? What was Mark doing? Because John goes, "What's with this guy? He's a fucking singer, and he doesn't know any songs." And, but, and, I, and I go, "I go. Does it really oh matter? Well, I'm, the only, I'm the only real musician here. If he's gonna uh, yeah. drum. You better know what you're doing." I said, "We're all high as a kite." You got to hear this. Johnny Knoxville was there. Uh-huh. Johnny shows up with his uh, wife. Is that his wife or his girlfriend? I don't, I, know, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I, Johnny Knoxville looks like he's 80 years old right now. Right, right. He's, I mean, he's, be- he's beaten his body <laughs> so much. He walks around. He's like an old man. He's like, got a case. Like, it's, so it's catching up with him? <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're just have it right down here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, he's oh, real polite. Okay. And he's real super polite. Like, yeah, not, everybody's I mean, ma'am and sir. But he, look like, he, looks, he looks like he's like 80. Years old, he's got like his his business is all screwed up. I yeah. guess that jackass thing is not a good thing to do. He's still putting that catheter up his cock every oh. day, twice a day, and and, and I mean Damn. Johnny looks like the, 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 that'll listen. age a guy. I mean when you get your dick broken, like everything after that is like down here. <laughs> oh, what a mess! <laughs> so uh, we're t- Johnny. I'm talking to him, and Jimmy has a full beautiful bar. I'm drinking vodka. He goes, never mind that shit. He goes, Johnny oh. has. Johnny pulls out a jar. Like a, a jar, like a jar, like a, a like, a, like, a, like, a, like a jelly jar with a <laughs> screw top. And he goes, a mason jar. He goes, have, have a drink of this. It's moonshine. I go, moonshine? What the fuck is moonshine? What do you get mean? Moonshine in Beverly Hills. He's a hillbilly, and these guys, from I Tennessee. guess, from Tennessee. His cousins or something. His cousins make moonshine. They make their own alcohol. This was blue flame moonshine, oh. which is supposed <laughs> to be the good stuff. Well, I took a smell. Like, I just took a smell. And, uh, and uh, Ashton's wife, Demi, says to me, you're a real pussy. Drink the moonshine. So I said, well, what, what do you mean I'm a pussy? I'm not going to drink that crap. That's probably poison. Yeah, I mean, Johnny Knoxville's uncle I said, no, no. I said, look at Johnny. <laughs> she was calling you a pussy because you called Stamos a pussy, and then Stamos drank it. And the first thing, I walked into the party, and Stamos was like, you're a pussy if you don't drink this. <laughs> right. It was like the first thing. And I'm like, Everyone, okay, well, I don't want to be a pussy. Do you, you know? <laughs> I never felt such peer pressure. Because I mean, after all, I mean, there's Demi Moore saying, call, you know, like, like waiting. You can't for, have that. She sees I'm not a real man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, uh, Was and then, she drinking it? And then like Courtney comes. Cox is drinking the oh moonshine, and she goes, "Come All on, these man!" These girls are. She's are... like, "She's like, man up, drink the moonshine." And I go, "Are more manly than you." I, 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 I'm such a fucking woman. I won't drink the moonshine. I wouldn't. I smelled it. I knew. I, that's why Johnny looks like he's 80 years old. He's drinking moonshine. It's either that or lighting himself on fire. One right, or the yeah, other. Yeah, or smashing your balls into yeah, a truck. Something. But uh, yeah, but well, I mean, you know, they make. It's not prohibition. You don't need moonshine. <laughs> But uh, it was fun, right? It was, uh, the moonshine was pointing. I mean, it was heavy stuff. Then, uh, then you kept saying you don't know how to play an instrument, but then you got up and then you're playing the piano like uh, Billy Joel or like something. Like I took like three, when I was like seven years old, I took three years of piano or something. I don't really know how to and play. And your wife's a good singer? She was up she singing? Was singing? My wife can do anything. She's, she's, she's singing. She can do whatever she wants to do. She can. She was really great. I, I didn't tell know you. she sang. Well, if you hung out at the kind of parties I hung out at, you would know this kind <laughs> I of shit. I guess I would. You're too busy going to charity benefits. <laughs> and she's like, I'll do my thing. You do yours with the moonshine. Talk to me about charity for a second. How does a celebrity pick their charity? Now, are you trying to get rid of the sex slave industry or something? It's human trafficking, yeah. Human trafficking. How do you, I mean, there's a million charities you can get involved in. Why... Human trafficking and sex slaves. I saw this thing on uh, like one of those like forty eight hours special thing Nightline or whatever, and they, and it was uh, it was these like six and seven year old girls in Cambodia, right? That were working in these brothels, and these grown men were going in and sleeping with the six and seven year old girl. And I, it's, it's not really morning talk, yeah. But it, it was just so disturbing to watch to see what was happening with these these kids and. And I started researching and researching, and I found that there's twice as many slaves in the world today as there were when Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Wow. I didn't even know that. And it's, it's like a $32 billion industry. So you got involved with that. Yeah, because Rob is involved with every fucking charity yeah, but that. Yeah, isn't uh, Demise involved with something called, like, the Rebecca... The Rebecca Project. Yeah, I don't know. I just I saw an email getting passed yeah. back and forth about, but I don't know. I don't know whether she's a, but associated with it. Everybody's we, helping everybody. We just started our own foundation. That's uh, the DNA Foundation. 
Well, anyway, so you got a new movie coming out, but uh, but that party at Jimmy's that was fun. It was fun, but that's not a big deal to you, right? Because you guys don't you party with like uh, Brad Pitt and uh, we don't go out that much. I mean, we're so you know, like when you're in New York, you stay home mostly. You know, it's like right. you're not going out. That's when we're in Los Angeles, we don't really go out that much. So Jimmy's party was unusual for you guys. Yeah, well, I just got off work. Like I came straight from work and went straight to the party, and then well, it was a big deal. Rick yeah. Rubin. Natalie Maines was there. Jeff Probst flew in for it. Wow. I mean, it uh, was a party you fly in for. Jeff was, Probst flew in for it? Yeah, he had to do the Survivor finale. He flew out that night because wow. he wanted. He, he didn't want to miss it? He was in New York. He flew He <laughs> flew to the party and then he flew back to Survivor. <laughs> That's <though>. crazy. <laughs> yeah. I had a good time. I was uh, busting his balls pretty good at that party. Jeff? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Why? I'll tell you all about it. Okay. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, it, is, it was good. It was really good. Ashton's new movie is Killers. This is where you play a spy. You quit the spy business. Yeah. After you quit the spy business, you get married to Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl. Is she a pain in the ass to work with? No, she's great. Why she get a bad reputation of being like cuckoo? I don't know. I think she had like a thing on the on the uh, what, what was the getting the knocked up movie. She had like a thing with the that it was like a the, the guys in the movie and the thing. I I don't know what it was. Right. I didn't really get into it with her. And and yeah, she had some sort of thing. Yeah, and, and I think you you know when you have one thing like that spike up, then you know every time you know they do want to make a story out of it every time. So working with her was, was easy. Yeah, yeah, you liked great. her. So you're a spy. You quit with the spy business. She marries you. You never tell her you were used to be a spy. And then all of a sudden, um, some guys put out a hit on you. Yeah, there's a hit. There's a contract hit put on me, and it's and it's like one of my friends or neighbors, but I don't know who it is. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, I mean, it's a base, pretty basic plot line. So what's like you're Superman thing, but... because because all of a sudden when your wife learns you were used to be a spy, she's kind of freaked out. Yeah, she's kind of freaked out, but she's also kind of impressed. Yeah, right. She digs. I it. get to kill people. Yeah, it's fun. I just wanted to shoot a gun. And all you get day. to do all that. I get to shoot guns and jump through windows and dive off boats. and Yeah. That's yeah. fun. And make out with Katherine Heigl. So let, so bad. We were it's just, like free cheating, you know? Yeah, I know. You know there was a picture <laughs> in the Post view yesterday making out with another chick. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. That's going well. You're making that movie now. That's in a movie. That's a movie, yeah. No, yeah. I understand that. But you get to make out with... Like, there's a picture I know, of him, it's like free your mouth, cheating. But your mouth yeah. is open. And your your tongue is practically down her throat. That's not picture. true. That's not true. It's and, and, it, it might be t it might be a touching a little, but not a down her throat. Isn't that tough on your marriage? I mean, you're constantly fucking making out with other she chicks. Gets, she does it too. She I know, to but but I mean, Jesus Christ! Between the two, do you get jealous when you see your, your wife in a movie or or or, or, or you're doing this? Trip? I get a little jealous, but she's just good. She's good with it. I don't know. She's okay with it. How's the marriage going? Great. How's the sex? Amazing. Are you having as much sex as you used to have? Yep. No kidding. It still goes down. After all these years. Seven years. What is the secret to you Lots and to me? Lots of sex. Is that true? Yeah. Do you instigate it mostly? It's mutual. What do you, how do you instigate it? What do you, give me some tips here. How do you keep it fresh? T sexting. Sexting? Yeah, you know, the texting. But You're sexting. big with that. Oh, yeah. And you, and you write her dirty messages. Yeah, all day long. I can't you don't send pictures. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. really? But just across the text. Thing, of your yeah. cock? Yeah, yeah uh, whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you send to me pictures of your penis. Penis. <laughs> not, not the penis. 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 <laughs> not, not, not necessarily that. Sex oh, turn now. No, no like, wait, but like, I, I think you have to like, just be like, don't, f just wait till I get home. You're going to get, I'm going to ruin you. I'm going to ram it into I'm you. I'm going to ruin you when I get home. Really? Yeah. And then you do it. Yeah. You get home and you actually f follow through. Yeah. Will she put on outfits and stuff for you? Or nah, she... we don't do all that business. No, no, no. You get in the room and you get down to business. Yeah, just get her done. Do you think you got enough fucking out of your way? You got married very young. How old were you when you got married? Nah, I, wasn't, I was 25. 25 when you got married. That's not that young. I'm from Iowa. People get married in Iowa when they're like... That is true. But... You, you, 13, so he really 12. waited. It's like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> when you were young, I mean, you start. how old were you when you started modeling? 19. Modeling's a nightmare? Well, it's not. I mean, it's hard to feel good about yourself when, you, you know, it's like. <laughs> Howard would feel uh, really good. I would no, feel but, great if someone would pay me but for it's that. But it's there's not a whole lot of earnership there. You know I, what I mean? I, my wife has said to me, being, uh, um, she said when she used to work with male models, it's a very, very strange career. For women, it's not such a stigma, but for a man, it's kind of weird that, because you're really not doing a lot. It's like getting you, a jigsaw puzzle that's already put together. 
Right. You can't feel really good about what you've done there. Like, it, you, it's just, it was, that's just what it is. Did you, just, you do the runway and all of that? Or, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah. Imagine the pussy you got when you were doing that. I, it didn't ramp up. It's hard to be like, you know, because part of it's like what you do for a living, you know. The girl, it's like, oh, I'm a male model. Like, you, you know, it's not like really like girls aren't like, oh, shit, I'm going for that, you know. It, girls are turned off to male models. They don't see them as ambitious. There you go. Right. I don't think I, yeah, it wasn't, that, it, it wasn't like flowing then. So when you got that job on TV. That helped. That was like, thank God. Yeah, that helped. I'm done with that. That helped. And when you were a badass growing up, right? I mean, you robbed a store or something? What did you, you went to jail or something? Yeah, I had like a th- third degree burglary thing. What kind of a thing. store was it? I, I broke into a high school, like my school. It wasn't like a school store. No, just the school. School. <laughs> you broke into school. That's into the crazy. school. I want to get out of school. Why? I was. You know, we were trying to rob stuff out of the school. And you I were trying to rob. Job. I actually did something what like do that. You do, what is there in school that you want? Come on, they got all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> all that equipment and <laughs> electronical <laughs> stuff. My cousin was like trying to break into the soda machine and try it out. You know. Yeah, they, they got they got free yearbooks. Yeah, they got vending <laughs> machines in there. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, they keep it all in there. <laughs> when you got married, you did a Kabbalah ceremony, right? Yeah. Are you still into that? Uh, I still study it a little bit, yeah. But the me's more into it. Mm, we're both into it, kind of equally. At You're not pop- wearing your little bracelet. Where's your red string? Oh, uh, no. I'm, well, I'm doing a movie right now, so uh, I can't really wear it. Well, but Demi doesn't wear it. Yeah, she does. I don't see a, a, a I, I mean, I looked her over. I didn't see no any red didn't see it. No. Maybe it fell off. I don't know. Uh, so when you get married in a Kabbalah ceremony, mm-hmm. what, is, what is that? I mean, is, is that like a Jewish ceremony or is it something? Yeah, basically. You, you step on the, the glass. <laughs> Who's that guy? That's your rabbi. This is oh, the is actual he? ceremony. Wow. Nice. I do. I do. So some of the things you got to do is uh, you got to dance around a, a circle. around the, the bride circles the groom seven times. Seven times, You yeah. did all that? Yeah. No kidding? Yeah. Whoa, now what is it? So are you Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. For, but you're Kabbalah. But that's yeah. Judaism. I don't understand. But here's the thing. I don't, I, don't, uh, I, I think religion's kind of awful. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that there are probably more wars created because of religion than piece that's actually ultimately created yeah and so i i you know but i it doesn't preclude me from you know studying spirituality like i believe there's a god and i believe that right that uh that uh, you know part of that's within us and i think i have a soul and so i you know i i i try to stay grounded through spirituality right so so but i don't like to like follow all the rules and do right. you just know, like learning like, about it you feel spiritual yeah. and that's it and that's as far as it goes well you know it's all you know it's like do unto others as you want done to yourself and everything else is sort of kind of how-to book so when you're making a movie with natalie portman yeah. i got the, I, I was obsessed on this picture because i'd like to make out with her she's too cute, right? yeah. she's super cute she's, she's like five fun. foot something tall though like i stand next to her we look like we're different species yeah how tall are you I'm six three, but she's like so. She's uh, it's we we have like a really weird height thing going on. When you do a love scene with her, do you they put her on a box or something? To make I her haven't little... done it yet. I haven't done a love scene with. I had to well, kiss her. In, I had to kiss her in the scene, so we we're just standing there, you know. Right. Uh, but I had to like lift her up to even kiss her. Do you get turned on at all? Um, Let me be honest. Dep- no, no, well, I mean, do in a scene like that in yeah. a sex scene? Yeah. Did you have sex scenes with like, Catherine Heigl in your new movie? No, nah, I don't have a sex scene with her. Nothing. No kissing, nothing. There's a like kissing, but not like a sex scene. Nothing, uh, nothing hardcore. No, like I kiss her boobs or something. I don't you know. kiss her boobs? Yeah, just like you know, <laughs> just kiss them. <laughs> kiss her boobs. How do you but write in that scene. into a script? See, that's why Hollywood scene. marriages can't last. <laughs> do you, do, do They've you, been doing pretty it's well. Tough. Yeah, well, we're doing great. Well, how do you know if they're doing well? Uh, they're still together. I'm just counting years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the party, you guys seem super tight. Yeah, she's my best friend. Yeah, yeah. She was. She got up there. She encouraged you to get up and play with the band. You were being kind of shy. And wow, because I don't know how to play an instrument. You I don't know how to sing. And, uh, no, come on. You were like jamming out songs on the... Man, I felt like I was on top of the world, Ben. Look who I'm jamming with. All these fucking Hollywood He's people. He's ready to start a band again. Yeah. We might start a band. I might actually go up, book it on a talk show. See, now that would be that would be one of those vanity projects, right? right? Where yeah. you have all your buddies you book it. Sure. who uh, you know funny. have names, and then everybody would just go and because we do it Louis was Louis. you guys, and then they'd listen to this bad music. So, 
When you're on the set, it's like when, it's like when all the, when the bands break apart and then different factions right. of those bands try yeah. to get back together and this form is, that new band, this like is the a Revolver. Super bad group. What is that Revolver? Yeah. <laughs> Revolver. Yeah. Hey, so if you're if so if you're on the set with Katherine Heigl, you don't get physically attracted to these. I don't understand how it works. Nah, you just don't. And we, you know, but they're also telling you like, okay, I want you over here. I want you to, you know, it's like square off to the camera a little bit more. But you get actual boners and stuff, don't you, when you're making out with Natalie Portman? Uh, I haven't, ha I haven't, I haven't gotten there. No yet. wood. Well, I haven't done a scene that t has taken it there. But well, it's you've not worked to say with that, Cameron Diaz. It's you've not to say that some... you wouldn't in a sex uh. scene with someone. Yeah, sure. I mean, you could. So. And so, do you have to sort of detox after something like that? So you go home to your wife and you got to be like, you know, oh shit, you know. <clears throat> well, like when I was doing that movie <clears throat> Spread. The, yeah, I, I, like at the end of the day, there was like f seven days in a row that I had like s like sex scenes that I was shooting. Right, and then you'd go home and you'd just be like, "I'm so over it." Like, I, it's like, ugh, like it was just like enough. I can't even really? have sex. Like, I I could imagine how a porn star would feel. No kidding. Like, I think the porn stars would like get done, get done at the end of the day and be like, I, well, "I'm not." Yeah, interested. you would think. Well, that I would understand. But I mean, you're working next to all these actresses and stuff. I just don't know how to, I don't know how you go away on a movie set for four months or something, and you're you're hanging out with all these hot chicks, and you keep your marriage together. Well, it's how, quite remarkable. How do you like, we'll go on location it? with it. You yeah. know, we'll just right. go together. So it's like we're not apart. That's for smart. Very long. That's a smart move. We have like a two week rule. We are, we're never apart from each other more than two weeks. Right, right, right. You know what it is though. The porn stars when they make a movie, they're finishing. They're actually coming. Um, and they're sick of sex. The problem is you'd have all this foreplay. Ramp up, ramp up. Yeah, ramp up, exactly. and, and then you got to be kind of curious. Do you ever find yourself, yeah. you go home like at the end of the day, and then you're like thinking about Katherine Heigl, be, what it would be like to fuck her? No. You don't? No. You can't admit that anyway. What, what do you mean? Oh, I mean, because you can't oh, say you that. You could admit it. You could, would you say that if your wife's your best friend, can you sit down and say, shit, I just did a love scene with Katherine Heigl, and you know what? I was getting a little bit turned on. Can you tell her that? Can you be that honest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no can, kidding. I can't, yeah, yeah. I can tell. Jeez. She's like my best friend. Yeah. So I got to be able to tell her everything. Well, that's pretty good. Now, when you got ma are you uh, are you on bad terms with your family? When you got married, you didn't have your family there. You didn't bring no, my, my family was there. Was your brother there? You have a twin brother. My brother right? wasn't there. How come your twin brother isn't? Because my brother was married to a woman that I, that was like a that, that well, when they got divorced, sold all these stories to the tabloids. Yeah. And so I didn't want. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want her coming and selling stories to the tabloids. So did you tell your brother that? And yeah, was, he I told pissed, him that. was he pissed off at you? He was upset that he wasn't there, and I'm bummed that he wasn't there because I wanted him to be there. But right. I was like, I can't invite your psycho ex. You know, I can't like right. have like I don't. I don't want the whole world knowing about what's going on. And that didn't cause a tremendous rift between you and your brother. No, no. Because no, at no. the time he was in love with this woman, and you know. Yeah, but I told him that she was she was a psycho. That woman. <laughs> but now they're divorced. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Yeah. What does your twin brother do? Yeah, well, and does he? He sells four hundred one k accounts. No kidding. Yeah. Does he look exactly like you? No. You're fraternal. Yeah, we're fraternal. He's blonde hair and blue eyes. Is he good looking like you? I think he's a handsome guy. Is he as handsome as you? <laughs> I think he's a good looking guy. I mean, is he as handsome as you? That's I don't think he's as handsome as me. <laughs> <laughs> is there jealousy between you and your brother? I mean, you're this big star. You're married to Demi Moore. You're making fucking movies. You got tons of dough. I mean, is there tremendous jealousy? No. No? No, there's not. not just, I, you know what? My brother's a great guy. I, I wish I was as good of a guy as my brother is. No kidding. I, he's a great guy. So you're close? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Where does he live? He's still out in... He lives in Iowa. Iowa? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. see him enough, but... He... When's the last time you saw him? Uh, just a couple of months, like a month and a half ago or something. Yeah, because he's in Iowa. How the hell are you going to go out there? Yeah, you're not going there. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's not like I have a business meeting in Iowa. I'm like, well, right. I'm just you just drop by. I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it, it's got to be strange for you to be like a young guy. You've hosted Saturday Night Live. You had television shows. You had a modeling career. You're making movies. You know, it's just an incredible life, right? Kind of heady. It's, it's pretty good. How do you stay level? Like, are you mean to people at all? Do you do you lash out at people? Are you? Uh, I mean, I mean, in other words, have you gotten carried away with yourself? Or are you staying grounded? <clears throat> I've, I, I, well, that's you why, seem very I grounded that's why to I me. Study the. Uh, uh, that's why I study that. Kabbalah. Stuff. Yeah. Keeps you Did grounded. you think you had a moment? Yeah, that where you my wife gone like off? she beats me up. What do you yeah, your wife beats you up? She says to you, you're getting out of line. No, nah, yeah, that's part of the deal. Like she's just like. You know, she puts me in place. Right, right, right. But and do I, you and feel, I do the same thing for her. Do you feel that you once had a time where you might have been headed? In? Yeah, I w that's like right when I met Demi. Uh -huh. I was like on the like verge of like 
this could be this could get really bad. You were getting yeah. out of control with the women. I was getting out of control with the women. No kidding. I was abusing it. You were. I wasn't being nice. I was abusing <laughs> it and I was like and it was not good. Like it was bad. I was like, "All right, that's it." And then I met to me and then it was like I just shut the spigot off. No kidding. Yeah. You knew it was right. It was. It could have gotten bad. I mean, I could have drowned. Uh, in what, <laughs> it could have been the OD. The, the, I could have OD'd I on it. It was, it was either coming down to that or like some infectious disease Ooh, that would be like yeah. some new infectious disease from getting too much. And you would be patient zero. <laughs> so when you say you were bad, were you, it was just bad. Would you sometimes have two or three women a it day? It was just bad. It was bad. It was you were a bad, bad person it was just, because you're I, using people and they're using I you. I would always. I was very honest and upfront about it. And I was like, "Listen, this is not. I don't. I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not interested in that. I'm just. I want to have." And, and it was like, "Okay," but I think that there's a part. You know, the girl. She's thinking like, "Wow, maybe he is, or maybe he could be." He's just saying this. Right. I'm gonna be the one that changes that. You know, and and yeah, and I was just abusive of it. Damn, man, I wonder what the hell went on. You should write a book about that. Met the wife. That was, that was a good thing. And straight, yeah. Just say, just save my ass from... Where do you I meet mean, her? Be, How did that I met her through that? a mutual friend. And she walks in the room? Yeah. And she probably thought you were a douchebag in the sense that you yeah, know, she you, did. you're probably going to try and fuck her and leave I her. Was yeah, I was trying to do that. You walk in the room, Demi Moore's there, and you're instantly attracted. Yeah, well, I was like taking a shower, and, it, and it, it was like her and a buddy of hers that was a friend of mine that I was trying to hook up with, also. And <laughs> I, it was, bad. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest about it. It was bad. Hey, if I was you, I'd be bad too. She knew, too. and then, and then, and then, uh, and then I like went. I was like taking a shower and getting changed, getting ready to go out, and I came out without my shirt on. And to me, like, good move. To me, takes the piss out of me immediately, and is like, you know, when we said we liked your haircut, we didn't. And then, <laughs> and so then I'm like, ah, oh, okay, great. Now I'm the asshole. So then I walk and I get dressed and I come. And then Demi was like making a phone call to her, to, uh, to her youngest daughter, who had like an art project or something to do. And I heard her outside the door talking to her daughter, and I was like, that I, I want to be with a person like that because she seemed grounded and just based and... on the way she was talking. And then I said, I need to talk to you later. And then that was it. And then we just spent the rest of. The, that was it. Yeah, but she probably thought, I'm not going off with you because she's probably looking at you like, you know what? You're just interested in fucking. So that's what she said. I, I, she said, if you just want to talk, yes. I, and I was like, yeah, that's, I just want to talk. And, but meanwhile, you wanted to fuck. Yeah, of course. But then I went and then we just talked. <laughs> you did? Yeah, yeah. She was, you no, weren't she an was, animal. No, no. Well, I could she be. think she it was, was like closing off. She was just like, the door was shut. You know, it was nothing was happening. Did she think you were, that was a move when you walked out in your towel? Because you're a good looking dude. You yeah, got, it was you, a move. You're a muscular. It was. She knew it was a move. Yeah. You mean you walked out in your towel on purpose? On purpose. You knew yeah. you looked good. I, yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's a great move. If I look like him, I'd be nude. <laughs> I'd walk around time. with my schlong out. <laughs> I hope you have a small dick. Nah, I, I, I. You got a big uh, penis. I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not like I'm not like in demand. You know right, what I mean? Right. It's not like right. But you have a good size. You're as big as that. <laughs> Starbucks. You're as big as a Starbucks <laughs> coffee cup. No. What, a, what size is that? No, it's not. I'm not like working the vente <laughs> mocha. <laughs> so your move is when you were seducing a woman, you would walk out in a towel. No, that wasn't That's my move. That would ha that happened to be that the move that. You know that what my was that move. You know what my move is? I walk out in a ski parka. <laughs> That's it. That's, I keep everything covered up. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So so um, and then and then, she probably didn't really want to take you seriously romantically because she no, knew she didn't. you're a womanizer. Yeah. There's no way you're going to be a serious contender. You're, there's no way you're marriage material, and uh, you had to prove to her that you loved her. How was it? How did you prove it to her? I don't know. You just you just hung in there. Just hung in there. And then you get the fuck. I just shut everything else <laughs> off and then focused on just that's, this is the person I want to be with. How many weeks does it take for you to get into Demi's pants? It took a, it took a while. A long time. It took Even a while. for you. She was very, she, it took a while. Weeks? Months? What? It took what? a while. How long? It took a while. I don't know. I don't more know. More than a month? Not more than a month. Oh, good. All right. Because then you're losing your mojo. <laughs> more than a month, then yeah, that wouldn't have worked out. Here's my prediction. First night you talk, second night you fucked. That's nah, what I think. No way. Not, she, yeah, she, she, she was not... Did, did you make out the first night you met her? Yeah, we made out. You yeah. made out? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. oh, that must but are you seeing me. her like every day of that <laughs> month? How often are you seeing her? What? Uh, she was actually... Fly, she flew out. She left. She had to leave the next day. 
Mm-hmm. Right. But then her plane got stuck and didn't, and, and there was an issue with the, uh, there was like a weather issue. So she, she couldn't leave. So she came back into town. And then we hung out a second night, two nights in a row, and then she left town for like a week. Ah, uh, okay. But we were talking every day. Yeah, you should see these two little lovebirds. I'm sure. She was very supportive of him in this band that we were in. Well, you know what? <laughs> Do you like being the poster child of, you know, like multiple family? How, you know, how that works together? Because, you know, Demi and Bruce uh, are still good buddies. and Bruce was at the wedding. That yeah. I don't yeah. fucking understand at all. I don't want him at my wedding. They're everywhere together. I, I, you were guy. bummed by that. No. Really? No, he's a good guy. I you don't, don't care. I was at his wedding. Really? Yeah. Actually, Bruce was the rabbi. <laughs> he married him. He I'm performed ready. the ceremony. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, <laughs> he was a, no, he's a good guy. Bruce is a great guy. Yeah. I hang out with Bruce any day. Yeah. yeah with the wedding, one not at the wedding doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's hilarious. <laughs> Has he been on the show, Bruce? Uh, no, no, nah, nah, Bruce hasn't been on the show. He'd love the show. I, I'm sure that, he's a fan, supposedly. No, he keeps, he, 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 he hates it, doesn't he? Like I thought he said he did like me. He said he had no problem with me. What, do you, what, ha- what happened? He started John riff? interviewed him once some years ago, and he got really mad. What did John do to him? Who knows? Hey, Ashton, so when you get married, when two powerhouses get married, and you're both wealthy people, do you do the whole prenup thing, or do you guys, did you bang out a whole agreement? I didn't do it. She had more money than me. I didn't do a prenup. You didn't do a prenup? No. I'm she kidding. did one. So there is no prenup? No, ne- no there is no, no prenup. No prenup. But now at this point, I mean, you're making tons of dough, so. I don't care. You don't? No, I don't really care. It's money, whatever. How's that all work, though? Everybody just pulls their money together? Who mean? pays the bills? I mean, who How pays the bills? The... How's that all work out? Pay, we, we, we have a joint account, and then we have our own separate account. Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, that's good. I don't... Yeah, it's whatever. It's money. It, and you when you buy a house, who buys it? Yeah. Um, we buy it together. Okay. But we have property that we each own from b- before. Mm-hmm. Do you split the electric bill? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> the movie's called Killers. Yeah. You're the spy. Yeah. Who reveals to his wife that you're a former spy. I'm a f- spy that reveals to my wife that I was a spy because people are trying to kill us and we don't know why. Is it a comedy? or It's is a it- comedy. It's an action comedy. It's great. It's really, really good. I've seen it. And it's great. I will be happy seeing this. I like the premise. I think you'll be happy seeing it. I think there's not going to be enough sex in it. D- I, don't I don't give a you shit You don't care. That. No, All I right. don't care. But then I think you'll enjoy it. I think it's funny. Tom Selleck's in it. Gee, I mean, he's got the most gorgeous mustache you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> right, right. And he I, still has that mustache. Then the mustache is unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you should, this thing is like a Vulcan forest. It's got its own personality. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and you are still tweeting, right? Yeah, still tweet. And you have five and a half million followers on your tweet. 4.8 million. 4.8 4. million people just wait on your every word. Yeah. Not, I, you know not wait, they're not waiting on every word. They're following other people. You know what I said to Ashton with that Twitter? They should pay him. because Well, he I did mean, a whole thing. The, the reason people knew about it was because of him and Demi. Do you they have did comp- a big thing for Twitter. Are the, you seem to be up on the technology. Is there something coming down the road that's better than Twitter? Like that you'll What's obey- next? That's better. What is the next thing? There's different stuff coming. There's a thing called Foursquare that's a pretty, that a lot of people are using. Foursquare? Yeah. It's like uh, you people you check into locations, yeah, and then it's and then it, you can kind of create a, a crowdsource Zagat guide. It's pretty good. And then there's a thing called Daily Booth. That's yeah. that's like a it's like people talking but with pictures. I see. Kind of a big thing. So if you go on that, you could change. You you literally made tweeting very popular. You were one of the pioneers of this thing. True, and really you made it popular. You made a bit. You built a big business for them. Have they ever come to you and said thank you, uh, thank you for being interested in tweeting? I mean, I would think they'd kiss your balls. I've met with them. They haven't necessarily said thank you. Does that bother you? You're providing content. It for bothered them. me for a while. For a while, it really bothered me. I was like, "Wait a second! Like, I'm helping to blow up your platform. Like, help, like, hook it up." Right. But now, I, 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 I sort of got to the point where I was like, "It'll come back around somehow, somewhere, wherever." Are you the world's greatest tweeter? Nah, there are people that that put more entertaining stuff. Down. More, yeah. Robin is now involved, and it's very, very I'm compelling. Not a good Do you like tweeter. it? You're not, you're not good in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to get taken. I'm, I'm about to get knocked off of the pedestal. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What's he, ha- what's he, happening? He's really got to go. Where, what are you doing this morning around the movie? Today show? I have Today Show. Regis. Oh, yeah. Regis and the Today talk Show. To Regis, your right. buddy. Yeah, so you got a lot going on. Yeah, he is my buddy. <laughs> he lives in my building. My neighbor. <laughs> All right, look. The movie Ashton Kutcher is in is called Killers. Go see it. It's romantic. 
But it's got But it's fashion. a thriller. And there is some humor in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, what could be yeah, better than that? Go Sounds like a that. good combination. That's right. And uh, look, he ain't bad to look at either. Oh, Let's geez. be honest. What about her? Does she get naked? Yeah. No, no. If she doesn't no, get naked. No, it's a PG-13 probably. Yeah. <laughs> like how fired hey. up you are about that. What about it? Does she get naked? Yeah. Hey, by the way, Ashton, uh, you will like this, that um, my wife was on Regis, where you're going, and uh, she came out with a dog, and the dog took a shit on the stage. Yeah, the dog shat on the stage. And it got big laughs. And what you should do is take a dump get on the that stage. Get just uh, so you squat it out. Go, go over there, squat out a big dump. <laughs> and I am telling you. I heard this works on your show, Regis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just say, I understand Beth Stern was on your show, and she took a shit. That's the new Regis thing. Everyone's shitting on the stage. Everybody just goes and shit. All right, listen, we loved having you here. Uh, good luck with the film. Boy, good luck go with the you. band. Good Thank luck you. with the band. I'll contact you about the band. <laughs> yeah, and good luck let me know when we're all getting back together. Ashton Kutcher, everybody. Ashton, yeah. how'd it go, man? I, I think good. I don't know. You tell me. I think it went pretty well. All right, good. So, um... I, you, can, you never really know on, the, on this show whether it went good or not. You, know, you find out once you get in the car outside and somebody calls in and they're like, oh, that guy's a fucking asshole. Like, who is he? You know, the, as you don't find out how this one went until afterwards. All right, man. Thanks for stopping All by. Right. Really, yeah. So, uh, guys are back together. It's your first time up here uh, as, as a band, right? But Stone Temple Pilots, beyond anyone's comprehension, how this happened. Uh, somehow they got back together again. These guys, I don't know how they put up with each other. They're one of the greatest rock bands there ever was. Oh, they're incredible. Incredible, incredible band. And Scott Weiland's one of the best frontmen ever. Yes, the boys are back together again. Come on in. I'm the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> they broke up again. This Believe is it how not, it happens all the time. Stone Temple Hi. Pilots will not be here today. They broke up in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's absolutely right. They broke up again in the green room. and now, But here they are to reform. Look at that. Hey, That's them all right. That's are happening, you? That's hey, the legendary man. Stone Temple pilot. Hey, boys. I got to hear this story. Good to see you <laughs> Good all. Good seeing you. Boys are getting their <laughs> headphones on. They're settling in. Well, I don't know how it happened. Last time I saw Mr. Wyland, you said, and I quote, <laughs> I am never getting back together with those guys. Forget it. It's over. I like over. these new guys. And I will never. I, yeah, I like these new guys. And I'm never recording again with them on Atlantic Records. Am I correct on that, on that Scott? Not exactly. What I said was, you know what? You never can tell what will happen in the future. But right now, I'm, like, very involved in and committed to uh, Velvet Revolver. Right. And that, was, uh, and that was the case at that time. But it was serendipity that happened. It was just... Uh, uh, I knew when uh, Velvet Revolver was going to be uh, finished touring, um, and uh, and then I got a call from Dean uh, while I was on tour with Velvet Revolver, where um, all of us were all laying out by the pool. And, uh, Sounds good. In Jersey. Yeah, in Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. And uh, and I got a call from Dean, and he said, "Are you sitting down?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, I'm sitting down." And he goes, we just got offered, well, let's just say a lot of money to play uh, a certain show and uh, and a festival, and then and like a f few festivals. And uh, so, when you say big money, you're talking millions. Well, for one show, it was, uh, it was around a million dollars. No shit. Yeah. You better. You're goddamn right. You all came to your senses. <laughs> it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't see, the what? money. It was the the cordless phones they were throwing in. Yeah. Yeah. The, free one. Yeah. the gig was completed. Don't leave money on the table, boys. You know what yeah. the odds are of making it in rock and roll? I mean, what are the odds of becoming a great band like Stone Temple Pilots? Cash in. Why not? You deserve it. Uh, it's not about cashing in, really. I mean, fuck it, it is too. You know, <laughs> you know it's like I, you know we've produced and we've uh, written for other people and stuff, and uh, right. that'd be a lot easier. We'd be you know with our uh, kids a lot more. So you get but, the phone call. Let me stay on track here. Yeah. You get the phone call, and the boys say to you, "Look, let me talk some sense into you. Let's get together, go play this goddamn festival, and make a million bucks." And you agreed. Yeah, and so uh, I actually told Slash, um, and he was cool with it. Um, and uh, he's been left before. He's yeah, used Slash to is used to getting <laughs> left. But you know, <laughs> and Slash gets left all the time. And the thing is, is uh, as um, this, 
end of summer went on and and uh and then you know fall and winter uh it was uh it was um the final velvet revolver tour things just uh it got bad it, yeah i mean you know with there a lot of ego listen you're a superstar you got axel in there you had what duff mckagan in there right uh, slash. Yeah, not slash. Axel's uh, slash. I, mean, I mean Slash, not yeah. fucking Axel. Yeah, yeah and, Axel's and, off and Lala Matt Land. Sorum. Matt Sorum. So what happened when you guys got together? Here you left Stone Temple Pilots, you get together with them, you think it's going to be great. You fuckers must have, you must have made Stone Temple Pilots look like nursery school. It must have been one crazy head trip after another in that band. Uh, probably more so for our management. Um, really? But, Duff uh, McKagan said he'd rather reteam with Axel Rose than Scott Weiland. So you guys must have had some falling out. It yeah. must have been legendary. Um, <laughs> I mean, it must have been great. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was great until it wasn't great. Let's just put it that way. Duff said some bad shit happened at the end of the last Revolver tour. It was brutal. There were late gigs. I just wanted it to be over. Right. You guys must have been clapping your hands together, right? You said, "Yeah, you know, Scott thought we were difficult." A fucking velvet revolver taught him a lesson. Am I right, boys, or not? <laughs> he said it. He said it, right. <laughs> you know what you probably said when he got together with those guys in velvet revolver? Good. He's going to come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> He'll appreciate it. <laughs> Scott, velvet revolver is dead, isn't it, without you? Uh, I don't... Well, I mean, they're just not... Uh, uh, they're not a, ba a band anymore. Haven't you said if you lose the lead singer, the band is over? Well, I think that, uh, you know... You hold the power to the band! Public perception, <laughs> public perception is, is, front man, is the front man gets most of the attention. Of and course. That, and so it, it hasn't happened very often. Um, there's a couple circumstances where, where uh, a band is... Uh, uh, Van Halen switched. made it. They, they, they did the switch successfully. Yeah. And you got ACDC. ACDC, all Chick right. Korea. Check Korea. Korea. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> legendary. Can I ask? Can I ask Scott what happened with those guys at the end of the tour that was so horrible? Yeah, be honest, uh, Scott. Well, you know, it, don't, don't don't play politics. Tell us no, the truth. Honestly, uh, there there were just like you said, there were a lot of uh, egos, and in the beginning, it. It was a really great thing because that's when I was uh, um, I was still doing dope, and I and all those guys were clean. Right. I mean, Slash, he still drank, but uh, you know he hadn't been doing drugs for a couple of years, so it was a, it was a a good like sort <laughs> of support good? system. <laughs> yeah, it was good. He was just drinking. Um and uh, thank God and um. So you were doing dope. Yeah, and so then I went and I got, uh, it, I wanted to rehab. You're and, clean now? What's that? Yeah, I mean, I drink. I still drink some. Still have some drinking? Yeah, but no, I don't do any drugs. Do you miss the, the drugs? Not at all. Oh, come on. I, don't, I do not really? miss. Really? Not at all. That's beautiful. I mean, I don't miss the anxiety of... Uh, I don't miss... Uh, Boys, is Scott easier to work with now that he's off drugs? Hell no. No, he's still just difficult, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't sure. understand something. With the new album, let me understand if I got this straight. By the way, we're here to celebrate Stone Temple Pilots' new album. It's... Uh, By bringing up all the bad times. Let's bring up the bad times. <laughs> yeah. That'll bond you guys closer together. But in all seriousness, didn't you guys record the album separately from Scott? Like, you recorded some tracks and then sent them to Scott to go record somewhere else? Different countries, actually. You, different countries. You weren't even in the same fucking room. Yeah. No, I mean, that was that <laughs> grossly over-exaggerated. And, uh, and, um, is, I, is that grossly over-exaggerated? No, no. You know, every time we've gotten in to make a record, the three of us have gotten together the, to do the music. Right. So, so Even on the original albums? Absolutely. Oh. We've always gotten together to do the music. That's kind of the way it's always worked. I didn't understand. So so we, we kind of get our stuff together, as musically speaking. Gives it gives us a chance to get together, get it together. Suss out, out the suss arrangements, out, the, stuff. What, what key it should be in, and all that. I see. I think if Scott shows up in, from the beginning, he gets a little overwhelmed with all the ideas. There's a lot of musical, musical ideas flowing through the, through the room. So rather than sort through it in front of him, get it all together. They send it to you, and then you write the lyrics. Uh, I write the lyrics and the melodies, and then and then uh, sometimes uh, I'll I'll make like a uh, um, 
a change in um, in an arrangement. And uh, but it seems like play, a pain in the ass if play, you're not in the room and you got to what do you got to email them? I guess, huh? Uh, no, it's not yeah. really that that big of a deal because uh, there was um, uh, for in the middle part of making the record uh we actually were working um with don was as a production consultant and uh boys so, do you feel comfortable telling scott if you don't like his vocal on something can you pick up the phone and say scott that's not good enough i want it done this way that way and that <coughs> way or do you have to mind your p's and q's because that will break up the band again if you upset scott now they, they they bring up uh their if they have a, an idea that the that they think is um, better, or or if there's a note that uh, rubs like minor against major, um, it, yeah. It's, I mean, you know, I'll try it out, and uh, you know, and if sometimes it's it's who has it's final better. veto. Scott, it, does Scott have final veto? It works both ways too, because there's times where I'll bring something in musically, and somebody may say, I don't know if I'm really feeling that, and you got to kind of. You gotta check, be open. Your, yeah. You gotta check your ego at the door, man. Don't yeah. I know? I was in a celebrity band uh, just this weekend. <laughs> pretty hot uh, band. I jammed. This guy was my harmonica player right here, Jenny <laughs> Kimmel. Right. I don't know if you know Magic that. Magic Dick. That's right. Magic Dick. <laughs> and, and Magic Dick. Yeah. And I gotta tell you something. <laughs> there was a lot of egos in the room. A lot of infighting just in that f little jam session. Yeah, we had to replace uh, we had to replace Mark McGrath with John Stamos at one point, That's and then right. went back again. <laughs> so I understand all of this. Uh, you know, I got wait a second. I got to ask you one question, though, Scott. This has nothing to do with STP, nothing to do with the band, just personal stuff. Because I heard a wild story about you. In fact, it was in it was in your first wife's book. I know you guys got a divorce. It was ugly, all that. But she said when she was giving birth to one of your kids, yeah, you were in the in the room. And you, uh, uh, she was in, in labor, and you got stressed out, so you had to have a massage. So you wheeled in a massage table into the labor room and uh, brought in a masseuse and got a massage during the... Um, during the, the Actually, uh, no, there's a lot of things in, in, uh, in her book that... Uh, I, you know, I was very supportive in the beginning, yes. and she let me read select things right. uh you know on her computer uh <laughs> she didn't show you that one i love scott's yeah. life but I what, mean, actually what i did yeah. what, what did happen was yeah. it's like you know it, 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 you're going to have a, a child it's not like it, unless it's you're rushed into labor it's it, a it, long it, time long 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 day right it was it's like 20 it was our, hours. our first child right and uh and you know i i was sitting around and and you know i i was at the time, I was sober, and, uh, and I, I was, like, freaking out. Um, we were ordering food from across the street at Jerry's Deli, just, like, nonstop. And, and I was like, you know, I'm like, we had a friend that would come over to our house and give us a massage. massage yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I just uh, called her up, and she's... And I just laid down right next to Mary uh, <laughs> and had a, and had a massage. So by not I, true, you mean that's exactly well, what happened? Well, I mean, she, no, 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 she, uh, I mean, did, you, did you she give you a happy ending? I, I didn't get the, I didn't what? get the, uh, the, you know, Demerol to kill the pain, you know? Did you finish? Did she give you a happy ending? Uh, no, she, no, no, nothing no, like no, that. No, That'd be that'd wrong. Be too much. That'd be too much in front while your baby's while being born. Yeah. You know why it's funny? Because usually when the husband is in there... In the, in the delivery room, I had to go through the same thing you did, and it was stressful. In fact, it's they had the greatest thing I ever heard. My ex-wife got mad at me because I was watching Candid Camera during the delivery. <laughs> what would she have done if you had gotten she a massage? And I was uh, laughing. If I got should... a massage, I would have been stabbed right through the throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be dead right now. <laughs> you would have died. You see, that's what I love about you. And I know that I know the boys in Stone Temple Pops. They've had a you know. Listen, you guys have had your differences, but what I love about you is you do what you fucking want to do. I mean, most men would be afraid to bring a massage table while the woman is in labor. No, it was before she actually went into labor. Right, right. I mean, yeah. I, the early stages. Yeah. I'm saying even still, yeah. you know, to be that relaxed even in the hospital, in front of the staff and the nurses and everything, it's, that's the beauty of you. <laughs> you still make it about you. Yeah, it's, it was more about you than her. I, I mean, no, you know? actually it wasn't. I, I just wanted to be in a you like, to be calm place like when... <laughs> When it all went down. I love you. <laughs> I don't know, man. Scott, it's crazy. I'm so happy you guys are back together again. I love it. I never thought it would happen. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was over. But mm. I even said to Robin many times, I said it to Jimmy even, I said, 
these guys are the greatest ba- one of the I'd say top five greatest bands in America. Every time they get back together, I tell them they can't break up again. They don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> they are great. They really I mean, it's Jimmy's a wonderful got thing. Back together, right? Really? Who got you back? Jimmy? Jimmy did. Jimmy? Well, not me yeah. personally, but. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I don't remember. What did I do? I mean, I had you guys on. You're on this, your show. You yeah. came in and said, you know, do you want to get together? <laughs> Is that that? And that was that? That yeah. was that. Wow, yeah. look at that. See that? I'm a power broker. <laughs> you, you certainly are. <laughs> But, you know, it's funny with Scott, whatever band, you know, even Velvet Revolver, listen, there's always, I don't understand what the trouble is. I see, you seem like an easy guy to work with. Well, it, it, thing is, it's like I, I didn't get a chance to finish saying, um, the situation within the band... Um, Velvet Revolver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely deteriorated and uh, from the way that things were when I first joined the band, the things that inspired me. Right. So uh, these guys were not sober at the end, and whereas they were at the beginning? Um, I, I, Scott Weiland, did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't... T- so, so, and now this is the new Scott Weiland. I mean, you are sober, except for a little drinking. Yeah. And well, when you. I saw you guys in Jersey a couple of years ago, and I guess it was about a year ago, a couple of years ago, <laughs> I don't remember when it was now, um, you couldn't get Scott out of the, the dressing room. Is that right? For the show. Yeah. We were sitting around He's waiting getting a and massage. waiting. Uh, and <laughs> maybe it was massage time. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I think that was probably the, um, uh, what, that it was the tour with, uh, we did with, um, uh, it had a name. It was. The Beatles? No. No, no. All I know is it was the first time you had played Jersey (laughs) since getting back together, and it was this big homecoming for the boys, and all of a sudden, Scott wouldn't come out. Now, listen. Is there going to be a tour around the new album? I don't remember that. Yeah. I remember... There is going to be a tour? Yes. Oh, yeah. No shenanigans. Oh, yeah. You'll come You're out. You're going to come now. out. You're going to be there. <laughs> no banging on the door. Come on, Scott. Best show I ever saw was an STP show. I don't know. You guys were on stage. You had the fucking couch, the whole vibe going. It felt like back, like a little bit of a throwback to like uh, some of the cool concerts I saw when I was a kid. You're up there. You fucking played. No nonsense. No goddamn pyrotechnics. Just played the music and sang. Well, once they came I out and started it. playing, they were great that night. Now that Scott is the greatest when yeah. he comes out and sings and he's like moving around and stuff. It's Shaking like, your it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's I getting told pussy? You, wait a I told you that night, Howard, that Scott started to take a drink and then it was time for him to, to come back in on the vocals and he spit out what he drank and started singing again. It was great. He's incredible. That's a real showman. <laughs> Listen. So who's getting laid? Where are we at with the girls? What's going on? That's what it's all about anyway. Scott, you're still married? No, I'm not. Oh, good. <laughs> so you're going to be on the road fucking like crazy, I bet. No, I... That'll I'm take not, the place of the drugs. Not a real, uh, not a real dater. <laughs> not a real coxman. I, 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 <laughs> See a real dater. Is he being modest? He's the Tom Jones of rock and roll, man. Right. They throw yeah. their panties up on stage. I'll tell you the truth. I, I go straight from, uh, straight from the stage to my bus. And and uh, how does a fan get to you so they can have sex with it's you? It's the Do bang they, bus. They, they, yeah. it, you know, they, I mean, the old days, everyone it, was banging it, everyone. You know, it's like I've dated a couple girls uh, in the last. Mary and I have been apart for um, over two and a half years. Right? Is that right? And uh, who are you dating? Any celebrities? No. Oh, come um, on! You got to hook up. But um, you know, I mean, how I, the I, level I've, of I've chicks had, he gets? Had, are they models? I've had. Uh, um, I ha- I've had, you know, them flown out sometimes you know, you do. For, for a few days. Can yeah. a random girl go to a Stone Temple Pilots concert and bang one of you guys? That's what I want to well, know. Well, what's the marital status of everybody else? <laughs> yeah. Let's what, get that let, first. Let's go to Dean, Robert, and Eric because uh, girls need to know if they're going to be blowing you, fucking you, doing whatever they <laughs> Boys, tell me what's, what's to be expected. Uh, who's married, what's going on? Dean, you go first. Um, I'm up for a uh, light conversation. Uh, so you're not married anymore? I'm not married. You're not married, period. And girls can come backstage and have sex with you? Or boys. 
Boys too. <laughs> when did this happen? Oh, for a while now. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> That's what broke up the band. <laughs> <laughs> and also what got Dean, them back together. Dean, is that together. true? Do you no, go for guys? No. no, you're into girls, right? <laughs> yeah. I had nothing wrong with a guy here and there. Scott's made out with... I saw Scott... At the time I saw Scott on stage, he made out with some dude. I w yeah, it was probably Dean. It all wasn't Dean. Dean threw up. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Dean has come over before and, and like... Right, and when I'm looking at him, and just planted one right on my lips before. So the night he, I saw you, you, che it. you cheated on Dean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you two guys? What's going to go on? I'm married with two kids. Yeah, Eric's married. Robert, what about you? Ten years married. Just had my second son on Friday. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't right. think so there he'll won't be, be sex for you at the concert. Entertaining women. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then it's uh, then then it's easy to see who's going to be getting late. Well, listen. I'm surprised that the, you guys never act like rock stars, then, right? In other words, it's not a, a womanizing kind of thing. You have respect for women, this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry to hear chronic that. Chronic masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's that's never really what it's been about i mean i think we really we, we were a part of the antithesis of that that's true um you know and uh but yet every young man who goes oh, up on stage oh, oh, it's about the girls come on let's be well, honest not really at I mean, some I, level of course like when you first start off um and you're in your 20s uh, you want to experience like you know everything yeah, things. So it's like joining the circus, right? But uh, now it's know, the music. You're, you're musicians. And then it's, it just it gets tarsome, you know. No, no I know. Don't I know? <laughs> too many, too many things you can uh, catch these days. Man. Well, that is true. Yeah. It's not it like is scary it's out there. not like the seventies, man. We had the fortune of you know coming up through the seventies where you could just do anything and Bang everything. away. Yeah. yeah, a little scary now. It really is. Yeah, and I, there's no more privacy. A lot of phone cameras and yeah, you can't cheat on your wife and tweeting anymore. and twatting and <laughs> tweeting. Yeah. too much. Yeah. 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 I hate seeing photos of me hanging by my heels by a chandelier, man. Yeah, not, yeah. Good. Yeah. not good anymore. Well, Stone Temple Pilots' new self-titled album hits stores May 25th. This is a big deal for fans. I don't think they ever thought they'd see the day. That's I don't think right. you. I, I don't think any of you guys thought you'd see the day. Again. I did. Yeah, you really did. did. I yeah. think we all did. Yeah. yeah. Was it a blow to your ego to have to pick up the phone and and call Scott and say, "Well, oh, Scott, come on." Uh, this is, this is, no, you don't no, care about no, that. No, 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 no. You did what was good for the band. No, no, no. You know, no, man. It was just look. We've as as opposed to what everybody thinks and talks about. We never lost contact. We never yeah. lost this this brotherly love per se for one another. And this, you know, I think is that most true? Of all, just you weren't angry with Scott for for breaking up the band. He didn't break up the band. <laughs> well, in a sense, he did. <coughs> no, man. See, that's the kind of jive. That's is that really, jive? It's jive. All right, that was my perception. Yeah. No, it's Shit. it's. Uh, what do I know, man? Let's call it a respite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, make a prediction. How long till it all falls apart again? <laughs> Guys, let's be honest. Scott, you go first. How, 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 much, how much longer can you tolerate this? Uh, you know, it's not that. It's, uh, I think it's um, the answer is uh, how long do, can we continue to um, write music and make records and still feel like that we're contributing and still feel that we're valid? Well, if you put it that way, I say seven months. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to ballpark. That was very close. Yeah, that's yeah. About, that's, uh, listen, we hope. That was, that was over our uh, guesstimation. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really, bottle. I do. Is there a lot of pressure on you guys with this record in terms of sales? I mean, I know the cool thing to say is no, and like we don't give a shit about that. But there is pressure, right? Stone Temple Pilots comes back. The record company probably has all kinds of anticipation with this record. Are you feeling some pressure? No. No? No. no. I think the pressure was taking on the production ourselves and doing that. Right. And once we got over that, I think we achieved what we wanted to achieve. Because the record business is for <coughs> shit. I yeah. mean, let's face yeah. it, guys. Unless you're a country artist. Yeah. Right. For some, why do country people still buy records? I don't understand. I don't know. It's probably I, the moonshine. I, I think yeah, they can't figure out the They can't figure out that they can go I, get I, it for free on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> that's, that's our new record. You know, SDP the, goes country. Right. Go uh, shop at Walmart, you know, Best Buy and those places. And it's weird. Think how cool city. it was when you guys came up. And now it's like you got to be on American Idol in order to get, to, get, yeah. to get heard. I think we were one of the last bands that were actually a career band. Yeah. You know, after that, it was just... Uh, Everything's gone down. Would you ever yeah. be on American Idol? 
Uh, uh. No way, right, Scott? Nope. I, I did, though, however, go on uh, Nashville Star, Steph and I. Because you thought it was cool. I thought it was kind of a cool thing, yeah. yeah. Why not get a, gr- a band psychiatrist? I- I'm not making a joke. We tried that one time. <laughs> did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we both thought yeah. the guy was a <coughs> wow. snar- little snarky. Yeah, but that's what's good about it, that you thought he was snarky. You take out all your anger on him... Let him absorb. Did he it. come with you on the road? No, no we, we met we, with him. Actually, oh, we, you guys we need had to travel with you. Yeah, you, we rented out this massive suite. You, you know, you know what? It was actually the guy the Metallica used. Oh, we don't yeah. kidding. Oh, yeah, really? and, and <laughs> it was <laughs> it was a this ridiculous amount of money. And really? uh, what's it cost to have the, the psychiatrist for a whole band? Thirty thousand dollars. What? <laughs> Is that right? It was a lot what? of money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. You know, and then put, right, how many sessions? <laughs> put them up at the hotel. Oh, my we, God. We, so what we, de- what we decided was is, is uh, you know, when we actually communicate with each other, well, that's the idea. We that... get along uh, great, and we uh, understand. We're well, what's the, the odds page. of that happening? But okay. uh, you know, it's like as you get older, your lives are, are more complicated. You know, it's like it's you're not. It's not Scott, just do you about think it's these guys, the or band. do you think it's you? No, I think it's I think it's any band. Any band they go through. It's true. Most of these bands go well, through. Well, I, I mean, we've been now <laughs> making records for almost twenty years. I mean, uh, I wonder why there's so much right? angst. I can't figure it out. Do you try talking to somebody yeah. like the Rolling Stones to ask them how they do it? Hello, or? Stones. I need are, to yeah. always Stone pee on Temple my floor when here. they come over. Do you guys? Do you guys ever talk to the Stones about how they stay together? Talk to other other. You bands. do talk to yeah. other bands. Who'd you talk to when you were in trouble? When you were in real crisis? Who do? You, what band do you turn to? Talk to Peter Frampton. Yeah, Frampton. He's alone. Say. He's a solo act. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It didn't work out for him. Yeah. Frampton's camel broke up. Don was uh, uh, would, uh, give a few little tidbits about uh, the Stones and like right. how they managed to uh, you know like keep things together mm-hmm. you know all these years. So the psychiatrist was no good. We didn't like him. Well, how do you really apply that? Because you know. Everybody's so different, right. and everybody's lives are so different, and everybody's situations are st- so different. I think we've just come, you know, like we know one another better than we know our own families, man. Like right. we've been shoulder to shoulder for, you know, since we were young. Young. That's why dudes. I get sad when it doesn't uh, work out family, easily. Baby. Yeah, you are. You got. Now listen, I'm going to give you a talking to, especially <laughs> you, Scott. How much? Thirty thousand. This is going to be free. <laughs> oh. It's going to cost you a dime. That's the kind of guy I am. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. Yeah. And what I'm hearing on this record and the way people are talking, stick with this. Nothing yeah. better than this. You guys are bros. Work out your bullshit. Don't act like a bunch of women. <laughs> really? What are you saying? Robin, what's that mean? I don't know. You know what exactly you what it means. What are you saying? Don't make out with each other. That'll break up the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Go in, work, sit together, have fun, and then call it a day. There's nothing to argue about. Oh, man. That's it. Take it's a the break. Secret Don't to life. break up. You got yeah. the greatest yeah. thing in the world going. You'll grow creatively together. And if you yeah. don't, play all the old songs and make a mint. <laughs> <laughs> You'll retire to some fucking island. That's it. Yeah. Now I'm getting through it, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? yeah I, I think we yes, all sir. agree with you, Don't. but the thing is, is you know, we are. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 42. I'm not. First time I came in here, with uh, we all came in here. Uh, you were in your 20s. I, I was. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was probably 23 or 24. So uh, your life, you know. I was 14. It becomes way <laughs> <Yeah>. more complicated. <laughs> and and being in a band, the band is part of our lives. You're making it too complicated. But there's Scott, other parts. You're making it too complicated. It's easy. I'm telling you it's easy. I've learned the secret. Scott, can I ask a serious question of, of sure. Scott? For oh, a this hasn't sure. been serious? <laughs> what do you Very think this serious. was? This is an extra I'm serious I'm giving these question. guys advice, Jimmy. <laughs> Scott, y- you know that... You know, as as an addict or whatever, you know, doing drugs, you can't still drink, right? I mean, you you must know that intellectually. No, actually, uh, most people can't. But uh, I I actually um, am able to do it, and it doesn't. Uh, I have not had it since I stopped doing dope. I have not had one craving to do dope. Now, when was that? 
Se- I, it was <laughs> seven and a half years ago. Is and that then, right? And then, uh, boys, and, do you want and, Scott to stop drinking? Seven and a half years ago, and then, um, and then uh, when my brother died, uh, um, and I got a divorce with my wife. I, By the way, I, you did have a couple of I, rough years I, between I, your brother dying and the yeah. divorce and all that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I went on a three-month uh, coke bender. Oh, that, so but it hasn't was, been seven years. Well. Uh, since I kicked my, my main habit, right. Aaron, and, but then that was three years ago. Uh huh. Yeah, it's hard to kick that. So, it really it's, is. It's, boys, you want Scott to stop drinking? Let's take a vote right now. Sure, sure. You would like it. You would prefer it. Whatever he wants to do, I'm not going to tell him. What to do. Right, right. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna, as long as everyone's giving Scott advice, I'm giving you one last Look, it's, advice. Look, it's not the Mormon Tabernacle but Choir. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I know, right? Listen, Scott. You know, uh, just to go down the line that Jimmy went, do you get drunk or do you have a social drink? Um, both. Oh, okay. <laughs> it starts out with a social drink. And then he's drunk. No, I, so I'll go out to dinner and I'll have a glass of wine. Uh, and then and another so, one? sometimes, uh, you know, I'll I'll um, have a few. Uh, don't have more than two. We put you on <laughs> and not until after six. Is that what you said? That's right. That's what I do. <laughs> two glasses, done. I only yeah. had two drinks at your party. That's true. Yeah. And listen. This look, may be a different situation, though. As long as I'm giving you guys advice. <laughs> Scott, if you have another baby, I understand the whole rationale. No massage in the in the. Uh, Look, I'm it, sorry. I'm I I will not be having any more babies. <laughs> Excellent, because really, who needs a massage? Why no more babies? Are you bitter? No, what? no. I I have my two children. I love more than anything in the world. And what if you I, meet a great woman and she wants to have children? Um. Well, then that. That will be a, a, a problem. problem. Well, you're goddamn yeah. right it will be. <laughs> well, let me. Well, if in case that happens, don't get a massage during the birth. Yeah. That's all I'm telling you. Women resent you for that. <laughs> Although it's given me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen, boys. Hey, you a know lot's what's wild, man. You what? guys have been doing this a long time. I was exactly. coming in here yesterday because you know when I was living in Jersey, I had this job that I was delivering sundries and coffee supplies from East Rutherford to Point Pleasant. So I. You know, I'm, I'm going back, man. Amputee right. dial a date. 1980. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Would you say you grew up listening school, to this show? Would you uh, say you grew up listening to this show? Because yeah. Jimmy said that. I got really bummed out. I thought Jimmy was old. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew up with us, too. Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. Jimmy I mean, was 67 I was, years old. I was, I was in a van all day. That was my gig. Mm-hmm. And just you guys would come on. And it's, it's like, just, what, 80, what? 81? Yeah, like 81. Right. 81 we were at NBC. At NBC in the yeah. afternoon, yeah. yeah and man. Just, gay stroke. I remember and, hearing yeah, for the first time. I'd gay also, stroke. I was 14 like, in 81, Robin. the world? Yeah. 14. Gay stroke. Very man. good production. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but what's really beautiful is like here we all are, you know, yeah. 20 years later. Absolutely. Congratulations. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're all doing well, and, yeah. and let's uh, stick together. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Robin and I have had our ups and downs, but always kept the band together. That's yeah. right. We didn't yeah. leave. Yeah. Scott, I need you to do this you are the you are the leader i feel well there's everyone's got uh We're giving you the role. power to keep this together <laughs> right boys yes you got to make the band a priority this is magic what the four of you guys do <laughs> this is definitely a priority <laughs> we got to keep the band a priority <laughs> ask my kids they uh think it's too much of a priority Uh-oh. do they think you're ignoring them no, they think that they, they when you get a call uh, when you've been on tour for a while and, and you know your youngest one's crying saying, "Can you come home tomorrow?" And you still have two weeks more to go, three weeks more to go. It's pretty rough. Well, yeah. do what Van Halen did and um, teach a kid to play the bass and fire one of the other guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah not nine or a seven-year-old. Uh, oh, uh, why not? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, don't teach your kid how to play any instruments. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, listen, boys, you know I wish you the best. I am a huge fan of yours, and uh, I love you guys, and I'm happy to see you together. I didn't think it would happen. Quite frankly, no one on this planet thought it was going to happen. The chance of seeing aliens from another planet <laughs> was quite frankly more likely. I like this. This is a big step. Oh, there are aliens from another planet. Listen, Scott, you've lost a lot of credibility <laughs> over the years with that one. <laughs> you know. Dan Aykroyd, I barely believe, with the alien stick. You think they're aliens from another planet? Let's say, um, I was riding up front with a uh, bus driver. Uh-oh. And we were going through New Mexico. <laughs> and you weren't drinking? And bo- no, both of us. All right. 
for about a minute watched these four lights and they were just doing bizarre things it it, it could have been <laughs> were you getting a massage at the time no, you were no, totally no. straight. Yeah, yeah. The bus driver couldn't uh, give me a massage. Didn't drive at the same time. But no. you're saying you were totally straight. You saw these four lights. Yeah. And yep. then what happened? Abduction, ass probe. <laughs> <laughs> you saying your ass was probed by an alien? <laughs> what happened? They yeah, put their yeah, big it, hickory and dichotomies. And they, in. they were gone. Did you guys hear the ass probe sound but, effect? That I mean, was you, know, you never, you never know. I mean, it's like what. Uh, it, what? You never know exactly what it so might So you believe. Be. You are a believer. And I'm, what did the rest of the guys say about the alien sighting? Um, they said it was a McDonald's. Cuckoo. They passed. No, it was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no it, it was just uh, my driver and I. Uh, oh. I was sitting up front with him. Right. Oh. He's uh, in Cremo now, that driver, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Scott, I love you. I love you. I don't care how many aliens you see, as long as the band stays together. That's all I'm interested in. Fuck the band. I want to work here. <laughs> <laughs> Who does it? Listen, STP, those three little letters mean big music. And I love it. And I'm going to take this album, I'm going to analyze it, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to be playing tracks from it. Uh, Scott, see? the aliens are calling. Yeah, now, it's the, By the way, it's my band. Stone Temple Pilots. Tell them, uh, tell them the story of the Stone Temple Pilots. <laughs> of the... The uh, Aztec, Aztec, the astronaut. Oh. Stern to the pilot. <laughs> you were the one that told me the story <laughs> that it, that there is. I say you stop Az drinking, Scott. Aztec temple, right. and uh, and Eric, Eric had actually. Uh, um, you told me you read something, and yeah, there was this yeah. thing uh, oh, uh, in there that it looked exactly like like like. A, uh, like an astronaut, and uh, and right. they they, it, they call it uh, it's called by two names: um, the Stone Temple Pilot and the astronaut. Yeah, they think those were the visitors who originally came to the planet. Blah blah blah. Uh, I still say if there were aliens, they would come here and visit. I mean, I don't know why they haven't shown themselves. I don't know why they're all. Yeah, I don't know why they're hiding. I mean, that's yeah. my theory. But uh, I don't Do you, believe there's life anywhere in the universe except right here. I think that's a, kind of a selfish way of looking at things, yes. though. I'm extremely selfish, and you should know that. <laughs> you, 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 know, uh, yeah. you, you finally woke up to my true nature. Uh, Scott, gotta, I love you, boys. Listen, the Stone Temple Pilots, Scott Dean, Robert, and Eric, what a band. What a history. Thank you, I'm Howard. proud Thank to be you, a little part of it just by having been able to interview you. Oh, um, look at everybody doing the Vulcan sign. You should only see a camera in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a room full of nerds. A bunch of geeks. Rock stars. That should be your Hello. sign. Whenever things start to go wrong, the live long and prosper <laughs> sign. Yeah. Live long and prosper, boys. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I know there's going to be trials and tribulations out on the road. I know there's going to be ups and downs. But let's stay together. We are bros. If there's any problem, you call me. I'll straighten things You'll out. You'll do an intervention? I will do an intervention. You'll come to the scene? The only one Scott listens to is me. You know that. He <laughs> behaves around me for some reason. I don't even know what. I don't know why. Why is it, Scott? What am I, a father figure or some kind of weird thing like that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's, you're afraid of me or something. I'm not, definitely not afraid of you. Yeah, what is it? What is it with me and you? Why are um, you listening to me? You know what? I think from the very first time um, we came here, uh, you actually, even though you make your jokes and that, you gave us a lot of respect, and I sure your, do. And yeah. your crew gave us a lot of respect, you and bet. all your all the people that work with you on your show, and uh, and so, you know, it's it's fun being here. It you're, sure is. You're a good yeah. guy. It's great having you here, and I love you guys. And uh, everyone, go get the new album, uh, the new self-titled album. All right. And if you want any kind of information and tour dates, you go to StoneTemplePilots.com. And uh, that's it. What can I say? I wish you boys the best. Thank, Thank you, Howard. Thank right. you, Howard. And we'll be back right after Thank these you, Jimmy. words. Oh, Thank Jimmy. you, Jimmy. Jimmy, yes. <laughs> so, guys, how'd it go today? Very good, very good. It's good to be back on the show? Yeah, just not this early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early for you? Yeah, she was 9 p.m. So, Howard, Howard's really stoked that you guys are back together <laughs> and, uh, you know, gave you guys some advice. What do you think about that? Um, I think he's got a second career as uh, being a, um, a therapist. It's always good to live by the book of Howard. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. All right.
Take care. Um, I'm here uh, again for, you know, to fuck around. Again, you got some stories from this weekend, maybe? Yeah, we had a good time this weekend. It's uh, it, was, it was it was a lot of fun. I think Howard covered most of it yesterday, but I have, I have some insight that, that perhaps he missed. Uh, looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. Lisa G is here. She, um, she's from the Howard 100 Lisa Newsroom. Lisa Glassberg takes shits at work. Well, uh, you started to talk about it early this morning. Ronnie Mund has confirmed it, telling Howard 100 News that Benji Bronk is up to his old tricks again, running into the studio just moments before the Stern Show starts. Yeah, didn't I say I was going to fire you if you did that, Benj? I mean, why are you pushing me? I like you. Why can't you just do this one thing and be here on time? Hello? Hey. Talk to me. I'm serious. Why can't you just fucking walk in on time? I'm, I'm asking you. It's a distraction every time you walk in late. I mean, I, I mean, come on. You're making me look like a shit because I said I'd fire you. Now, if I don't fire you, everyone's going to lose respect for me around here. Hello? Uh, Talk yeah. to me. Why can't you get in on time? I'm being serious. I think I, I, I usually am. 98%. Yeah, I need you 100% of the time. Right. I'm here on time. You need to be here on time. That's right. I mean, you're right. What can I say if I do something wrong? And like I said, I'd make you right in the back room and you won't be in the studio anymore. I don't want to do all that. Just fucking stop pushing me, man. You're making me look bad in front of the staff. Do you get it now? Yes, I do. So now everyone's going to say whatever Howard says he doesn't make good on. You're making me look shitty. You're making me look like an asshole. I said, Benji, I'm going to fire you if you can't get in the door on time. And now i got to fire you, fucking ass, because I don't even want to fire you. I like you. I enjoy seeing you. Can you just do me this goddamn favor and show up for your job on time? Yes. Okay. Because you told me that before. Just do it. I don't give a fuck. Set 50 alarm clock. Robin's here on time every goddamn night. Every day or whatever day this is. What is it? Is something changing? Does that happen? Is something different? I now? don't care. I, und as I understand. I'm just it's wondering his problem. if there's... Something in his life. Go to changed. bed. He's yeah. got a kid or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're gonna force me to fire you. I don't even. I like your work. Just show up on time. You're making me look bad. You know, maybe I'm the asshole for saying I have to fire you if you don't show up on time. Maybe I shouldn't have backed myself into a corner, but I, I, I've backed myself in a corner, so help me out here, so I don't have to fire you. Because you know what? I'm not gonna lose my credibility over this. I have to fire you on principle. Please show up on time. Can you do that? Yes. All right. What's going on that you can't be here on time? Did something happen? It was Robin right that something's different? Is something different? Hello? What, what, who am I talking to? The goddamn wall? <laughs> I'm thinking. What you thinking? I'll forget it then, Benji. If and you nothing's don't happening? Know. You, know, you know what he's thinking? He's thinking of a funny comeback. No, no, it wasn't. Yeah, okay, so why can't you get here on time? What's the new excuse? <laughs> well, listen. I, I, uh... What, is something new? No. Then what, what's happened? Like, why were you late today? I, uh, I fell asleep. You know, as I was getting ready, I was just like, well, I did a stupid thing of laying back down. Oh. Which is, which is... Set a second alarm, man. That's what I do. I worry about that, too. But you get to the wrap-up show every day on time. Don't go on the wrap-up show anymore. Okay. Go home and go to bed. Okay. Who needs you there? He's like a Buddha. He's like planted here once he gets here. But just get here on time, okay? Because you're making me look bad. And now, I, now, I'm, now I'm embarrassed because I haven't fired you. And everyone's like, well, Howard just throws out idle threats. Benji can do whatever he wants. Blessing. What's on time when you say get here on time? What time is that? What the time to start the show. What do you mean? What, what time is it? How come because, you know what time it is? No, because, well. How I come everybody here knows what time they have to get I here? I spoke to an expert about this because this has happened another I'm time. the expert. I'm an expert on There's this. There's now an expert about time. <laughs> <laughs> what People expert? organizing their lives. And she said that he needs to get here at least 15 minutes before the show starts sure. and have something to do so that he gets here and then he's busy Lisa, once he gets I get here 45 minutes at least before the show starts to get myself settled in, read the papers, get everything going. You're absolutely right. But I don't need a fucking expert to tell me that. Here. Get to work on time. That's my expert. Or you're fired. But then again, I, I, I hate firing this guy. But I'm going to well, have to I, do it. Well, I think you're right. You did back yourself into a corner, and yeah. you should have said something like something 
he would hate is to write outside of this room. I don't even want him outside of the room. I know, but it's just... So I'm the one who gets punished. He's always putting you in a position of punishing yourself. Yeah, I don't know what to punish him with. What, what do you value around here so I could take it away from you? So, you know, without firing you. Give me, tell me what a good punishment would be for you. Hello? I, I'm thinking, Howard. Again, you're thinking? Uh, what do you love around here? I love you. No, come on. What do you love around here? Uh, you know. Is there something you love to do? Do you love being on the wrap-up show? Should I take that away from you? Yeah, I... I do you one love of my that? favorite things is definitely being on the wrap-up Is show. it, though? Yeah. I, you, is that really something? So should I take that away from you? Well, I wouldn't want you to. All right. So, but okay, it, if you're late, I'm going to take that away from you. Okay? Uh, it's cool. I, I got to treat you like a baby. You know, I got to take something away. I got I, I to gotta be like a parent and punish you because you can't get to your work on time. As Will Smith said on the mm. Oprah show yesterday, he doesn't believe in punishment. He believes Who said in that? freedom. Will Who? Smith. He believes in freedom. <laughs> yes, Let him work here for a week. Let him be Benji's show, boss for a week. If you show that you can handle your freedom, yeah. then there will be consequences. I love, right. uh, Look, I'm no Will Smith, but here's, the, here, here's something. I know what you love. I love talking to Robin in the hall. Oh, Do you love that Howard that. TV That's pays? One of my Do you love that things. Howard TV pays for your breakfast? Do you like that? Do I like? Yeah, sure. You like? It. Okay. So if you do next time you're late, that stops. Okay. All right. You got to get your own breakfast. Okay. Okay. That's it. Oh, I know the best one. That he has to go find those tubs of food himself. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's breaking. I'm cutting off your craft <laughs> services, so to speak. <laughs> All right. All right, Chubsy Wubsy. <laughs> no food for Chubsy Wubsy. <laughs> you know, either that or you have to take Richard's pee in your mouth. And I can't make you do that. I would hate to do that. All right, so then I'm going to take away your breakfast allowance. Okay. All right, you'll be docked. But I can drink the pee as a no. Okay, I'm be, okay keep laughing. See, he laughs at me. What do you want to say? Take it seriously. When you say be here on time, I think he needs a time. I he was given you, a time. Let me ask you something. You, th- what time do you think he needs to be here? 5.30, I think, sounds well, good. No, he needs to be here before the show starts. Any time up until 6 o'clock, he needs to be here. He, I don't, you know, I personally don't think he should cut it that close to two minutes to six. But as long as he's in the room sitting down when the show starts, I'm okay. And quite frankly, we have a meeting for about 20 minutes before the show starts. He should be in on that. He's a writer. Mm. We start at 540 every morning with the meeting. You should hear what's going on. Fred's here. I'm here. Robin's here. I don't know what the problem is. I don't get it. I mean, here's the deal. He, he's guaranteed at least till 6 o'clock. I try to run all the elements to at least 6 o'clock. Right. Sometimes a little over because sometimes it, right. it just feels better to do it that way. But at 6 o'clock, you can guarantee that's when the show starts. Right. I wonder what Jimmy does with employees like this. Where's we'll, Jim? Bring him in we'll here. ask. Is he here? Yeah, he's here. Even he's on time. He doesn't even work for me and he's on time. How come you don't work for me and you're on time? <laughs> oh, he's, he's late? late? What should I do with you? <laughs> he has to take Richard's pee Listen, I've been, I've been running the gauntlet of security at, to get in here, so I've been here for quite a while. I've Jimmy, been here since noon yesterday. Did you hear the, what I'm saying to Benji? I did not, no. We were you know, doing the interviews and all that stuff out there. I've said to, I back myself into a corner because you run a pretty big operation. I saw Jimmy's operation out in L.A. and that's, It sounds like a major deal. It's fucking impressive is yeah. what it is. <laughs> and then I got to talk to him about that bar situation because right, I don't I understand that. Right, I want to know what that. that is. But anyway, so I've said to Benji, I've backed myself into a corner in terms of being management, I guess. Now I'm a boss. Yeah. You know, lucky me. You're running a company. Yeah. And look who, look who my employee is. <laughs> <laughs> Chubsy Wubsy. Big fucking lump of lard over there. What did he do? What did you what do? He, no, what he does is he shows up late a lot. I'm he used to show party. up a lot. He used to show up a, a lot late. Like, he he just opened the door like three minutes into the show. I remember that, yeah. Right. And just through about. the hall. And it just, yeah. I mean, when you do your show, if, like if one of your guys just happened to walk out on stage three minutes in, I think it would be a little distracting to you, maybe. It would, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I've said to the guy, like a million times, look, please be here on time. It's very distracting to me when you come in late. And quite frankly, if you're a writer on the show, you should be here 20 minutes. If we have a meeting for 20 minutes before every show. You should be here for it. Sure. But even if you're not, I don't even care. Just don't walk in at 6 o'clock in the morning while I'm talking. Come in early. You know, come in on time. 
Right. So we said, okay, okay. <laughs> and then well, the fucker walks in today late, and like I've said to him, I'm going to fire you if you don't. So now I'm not going to fire the guy. I like the guy. He does yeah. a good job. Well, there's got to be something in between firing and... and oh, I've fa- I found it. We pay for his breakfast every morning. I'm taking that away if he's late again. Uh, compl- now, will you just take it away for the day he's late? No, forever. Oh, wow. Well, that's a good one. I mean, I really. I don't know that that's, that that's is such a, a big one. penalty. I mean, how much can he eat for breakfast? First of all, he, oh, oh well, come on. No Look idea. at the size of him. Robin. <laughs> what should I do, waterboard him? He's not you, Robin. <laughs> do you have any employees that you have to discipline ever? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Well, you know, for me, it's a, it's a bigger problem because I do not command the authority or respect that you do. I don't. That's <laughs> well, the thing. Nobody respects be, me the, around the here. The comparison, though. I mean, people will... It's for me. I've hired a lot of family members. I have friends from you know my block. I was backstage Vegas. at Jimmy's show. Every like the first person that comes up is this woman, lovely woman. She's Jimmy's cousin, right? You're <laughs> my kidding. cousin Mickey. Yeah, your cousin wow. Mickey, and she's nice, and she's the one who's like producing Beth's segment. Then I, I see cousin Sal. Uh huh. A cousin Sal is a writer on Jimmy's show. Who's you know I've, he's actually come to my house and stuff. But he like he's there. He's working. Then I, I go up in the elevator. Uncle Frank <laughs> is the the guy on camera and is the, right, the, the security right, right. guard. Yeah. I'm like the, the Wayans family. Yeah, it's 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 like in some ways I think it's beautiful like that you're that connected to your family. And the other way I feel like. Jimmy is a good guy, but he must resent the fuck out of all of them on some psychological really? level. Yeah. I really don't. I really don't because the the people that work at my show are 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 the, my family members are like the best employees there. They really they set an example that it makes it hard for the other ones. You know, people can't screw around when they see that my my actual family members are there and working harder than they are. But how know? can you fire? Let's say Sa- let's say Sal let's say Sal isn't pulling his weight as a writer, and yeah. I know Sal, Sal's like a lovely guy, but let's say he starts to really kind of shit things up, and you only get so much budget from ABC, uh, right? Yeah. And you need good writers. I mean, you crank out material every fucking day, and it's it's scripted and that monologue up front and the clips and all that, and like all of a sudden, like Sal's not pulling his weight, you can't get rid of him, right? But. You have to remember that, I mean, Sal's been with me way before this show, so I had a long testing period before we, I got to hire him. So he was right. he worked with me when I was on the radio, and he worked with me on um, on Win Ben Stein's Money and The Man Show and Crank Anchor. So I knew he could do it when, ah. by the but time But I was even thinking, like, with you and Molly now being a couple, and she's, yeah. your, and she's co-head writer, you could, what happens if you guys break up? That'll be weird, too, because, you know, don't you think? Isn't that additional pressure? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. We'll just try not to. Do you guys ever <laughs> try have to stay like, with her. moments of like you know agitation with yeah, each how do you, other? How do you discipline how do you Molly? Do that? Like, have you ever been? Have you ever like said like, "Hey, Molly, you're writing some shit for the week," but no. you can't say that she's a girlfriend. But she doesn't though. So I luckily no, but I'm it's saying gonna... she's probably <laughs> going to be more. You know, you're probably going to run more into trouble in your personal life. Now, does how does that work out at work if you've had a little thing and now you got to go work together? I don't. I don't really. We don't really have a problem with that. Really? I don't know. Has I, it come know, up yet? Okay. I run things with an iron fist over there. <laughs> That's the thing with you because I was thinking about like let's say let's say Molly does something wrong. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you can say anything. Molly's never done anything wrong in her life, so I think <laughs> no. I'll be all right. She has a goody two-shoes. Yeah, definitely. You're happy with her, man. Yeah. yeah. T- you should see him. He's like like he's all physical with her. And really? Like a man in love. Oh, dear. Yeah, get in the car. I push her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, he's like, he's like uh, Ike Turner. Oh, God. <laughs> takes out the takes shoe. Takes off the shoe, the yeah. boot. Yeah. <laughs> I like this girlfriend. Oh, uh, good. I'm glad. Well, I like your wife as well. Beth is lovely. And, uh, yeah, you guys email <laughs> yeah, each other a like lot. It sounds like you two are friends. I think you they're more Beth. than friends. I think they're going out. Oh, really? Well, you know, it's... That's um, every minute. I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy. I go... You love Jimmy too fucking much. Maybe I ought to look in on this. She really loves you. Well, I love Beth, too. Yeah, we do. We send emails and stuff. And sometimes I feel like you're very, very busy. And, and right. if I have a question for the two of you, I will just ask Beth that yeah, question. I fa- by the way, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I really, truly do. She goes, Jimmy is doing this for the party, and this one's coming. I go, how come I'm not in on these discussions? She goes, because you don't want to be. Right. And then you're uh, like, yeah, you're right. It's better not to have been on those discussions because there's a whole thing with who was invited and who wasn't invited and hey thanks for not inviting me i mean this party became i i really cannot possibly explain what it was like it was like 
like Oprah was visiting town uh-huh. and uh-huh. Co- and coming to my house. I mean, it was crazy. First of all, I had no idea that I had that much juice in L.A. Like, I mean, you saw it. It's I was being chased by paparazzi. I've and- never seen anything like it. I have to say, I've never seen any de- ag- the craze with aggression. Which- You've got to come more often because the fact that you haven't been there for 12 years or whatever it's been has yeah. made people like, I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. I swear to God, I've never seen it. I didn't expect it. I, was I love really... the Rodeo Drive story. Oh, I, no, I told that whole thing yesterday. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, you know, meanwhile, I, I go to meet Jimmy for dinner at um, this Italian place. Really good place. What's the name of that place? Um, at oh, Osteria Mozza, yeah. Mario Batali. So restaurant. again, I get for the, this is the second night in a row. I get followed by the paparazzi. They're chasing us through the fucking street and this and that. I'm telling the driver, "Don't worry about it. What the hell?" And but it's really irking me that like somehow they knew ahead of time where I was going to be. So I go into the restaurant. I go. I, I even I said to everyone, I said, first of all, how would they know where I'm going? The reservation's under Jimmy's name. Mm-hmm. It's not under my name." I go in. Reservation was under my name. Oh. <laughs> no wonder they know I was. Yeah. Oh. By the way, I was like, "What? What's what's going on here?" Because I know somebody that works there, and I and so I said, "Hey, listen, you know, I want to make sure we have a good table. You know, right, right. taking how are they?" And they put the reservation under your name, oh. which was weird because I called in to say. Um, hey, we're on our way over there right now. And they're like, I don't have a reservation for you. I was like, what? <laughs> Even TMZ said that I was the king of L.A. You I, were. You I were. Was, I was. But uh, it's so funny. I saw I was, yesterday I'm on the air. I don't know if you heard any of the show. I did. I heard a lot of it. And uh, I'm telling Robin about the party. And this party really did become something in L.A. There's a, I sense a little bit of hostility from Robin about this party and the whole thing. Really? And I'll, I will get into that. Yes, 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 yeah, Robin. Hostility? What oh, are you all this. About? That's funny. There was a guy on the phone earlier. I didn't put him on, but yeah. he was saying I uh, sense a lot of jealousy from Robin about yeah. the party. I sense and I don't a little sense something. That. I don't know what's going on. I'm but, sorry, I missed the moonshine. Oh, Ro- Robin with the <laughs> Robin with the, Oh, no, that's so only, Hollywood. It's so no, Hollywood. No, no, it's like, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're taking enemas and eating bean sprouts. Hold and it. You, hold it. Hold it. Who's more Hollywood than you? Hold it. You are Hollywood. My only problem is. Is that you have you're a problem. introducing Howard to all these people now we can't goof on. Right. That's my only problem. I have yeah, a problem like, with that, too. Like, that's ever been an issue for you. No, yesterday Ashton Kutcher was here. I was like, oh, no, we've got to be nice to him. We've had Ashton on, but we've had, the reason Ashton was at the party, he's been on our show before. Yes, but ever since then, we've goofed on him. No. Well, yes. Oh, yeah. Give it a couple yeah. weeks. You go right back to goofing on him. I mean, come on. Hey, I got to tell you, you know, first of all, I publicly want to thank Jimmy for making my time in Los Angeles so nice. He really did. He was like the host of he, L.A. He, uh, he was your President um, Reagan to your other foreign dignitary that's right. status. Yeah. Can well, I tell you, I put probably ten times more thought into that party than I did my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you know, because Jimmy oh describes to me when he got married the first time, he paid no attention to his wedding. Oh, no, no. But Jimmy was really Costco. Jimmy really wanted my time in L.A. to be nice. Uh huh. So I, each, I think he might want you to come back more often. Yeah. Well, each night, uh, he had dinner planned uh-huh. at a different restaurant. We went to Soho House. We went with J.J. Abrams and his wife one night. Mm-hmm. Katie, yeah. Katie. I gave Howard a massage after every meal. <laughs> and then like, nice. while we were sitting there, like Joaquin Phoenix and... Um, and and then uh, what was Joaquin Phoenix acting like? Because that's news. I think he's crazy. <laughs> Jimmy thinks he's normal. I, I don't know. know. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what's going on. Because <laughs> like everybody's you, still trying to figure this whole thing out. <laughs> you got up to, from the table to go to the bathroom and Joaquin was making fun of you. And I went, he's fucking crazy. What did he do? What did he Because I, I said to him, wait, I'm friends with Jimmy. What the fuck are you saying? He started goofing on Jimmy's show, saying Jimmy was that. I go, who the fuck are you? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Wow. <laughs> Jimmy thinks it's funny. I do think it's funny. Was I don't know what's nice going on. Was he nice to Jimmy while Jimmy was there no, and then immediately Sucking flipped? Jimmy's dick and then two seconds later, Jimmy gets up and he's bad Oh, my God. You goodness. have to understand something. For me, this is not a normal. This is not. None of it seems normal. Like the fact that Joaquin Phoenix even knows who the hell I am and walks in and comes over. But even just having all those people at my house, you know, normally it is filled with my 
seriously, like, I have friends with, like, lazy eyes, and, you know, they look like sea monsters. Or, and to have, like, Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore, Moore and uh, Courtney Cox playing the drums, it's, it's you know, it doesn't so, seem so, right. So it was exciting for you, too. Because, sure. Because yeah. I thought you have these kind of parties all the time. Because you told me, like, Tom Cruise came to your house one time. But you have to understand, like, Tom Cruise did come to my house. But he was the, besides Adam, the only celebrity there right. amongst all my, you know, every once in a while, some one person comes. I've never been, it had anything descend upon me like that. See, I, I was under the impression that you've done this before. No. Well, wait a minute. How did all those people get there? I mean. Most of these people are, because I said to Howard, you know, I know you're coming to L.A. You have limited time. If, if there are people that you want to see. It started out small. Jimmy uh -huh. said to me. I'd like to do a small dinner party. Jimmy was going to cook dinner. Right. And he said, hey, I'm going to have a small dinner party. Is there anyone you'd like to see there? And so, you know, I would say, gee, I'd love to see David Arquette. He does the show. He's such a nice guy. I've never yeah. even met Courtney Cox's wife. It's uh -huh. kind of weird like they have not I said, y y you know, maybe we'll have dinner with them, you know, or something like that, like one or two people. And then we'd, say, then we'd think of this one and that one. Then I mentioned it on the air. And then, like, all of a sudden, Jimmy goes, hey. Yeah, maybe yeah what's it went on the were air? You, that was that. Were you getting requests? You're like, people, Oh, yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and then, like, like even Greg Fitzsimmons, I, like, like, he was on the show. Uh-huh. And he's in L.A. And then Jimmy said to me, gee, don't you think we should invite Greg? I said, you know, I was going to say something, but I feel funny inviting people to your home. Right. I don't know. You don't feel like that's your, your play. Yeah. And yeah. I don't. I said, I don't know how many people you can cook for because Jimmy was going to cook. Right. right. And, I, and, I, and I said, you know, of course, I'd, I so I'd say to him, of course, I'd love to see Greg, but I don't know. So I can forget him when I'm talking about right. it. Right. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you hear Greg's show last night? I didn't know. It's so funny. We played it back. So I'm trying to think of all the celebrities. You destroyed him, by the way, when you when you said that you didn't know he'd had a show on for a few years. That's when I thought I better invite Greg to this party. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I, I didn't realize. But uh, Greg was kind of like, he wasn't hurt or anything, but he was just like, wow, Howard didn't remember I was there. And I was up on stage playing guitar with him and this and that. And, but I, I, you know, a lot I think you forgot a lot of people. It it's okay, like, though. Did I forget a lot of people? Like a very, it sounds so. like you could have cooked from Howard. Greg's list. very forgettable, though. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh. It, it's, no. it's good to be in show business. <laughs> can I mention something real quick? Because I want to apologize for Fred, because I feel very badly. This is a great story. Now, F Greg had me on the show, and Greg's a pain in the ass with these questions that he asks. You know, you feel no. like you have to answer, but he's like, <laughs> rank who you like best of, the, of Howard, Robin, and Fred, first to last. Uh -huh. So I go, all right, well, Howard and I are, are pretty tight, so Howard's first and then i you know i'm trying to like think of like all right who Wait. am i gonna go with be between robin or fred as a you know what fred fred has said a couple of things about me on the air that haven't exactly <laughs> been accurate fred i i don't know if you're back there hearing but um i'm listening but i love fred but i for in force to rank the three <laughs> of you that's where it came up and then it became like i was insulting fred but you said about fred and i thought it was very astute we, you, Greg said, well, why do you like Robin better than Fred? And you said, well, you know, Fred acts like he's some sort of genius and like he has, he knows. He's the, unimpeachable. I didn't say that. But I, what I did say, and I think this is more <laughs> your fault than, than Fred's fault. Whenever there's a lull in the conversation, you, you guys, you, like, I, I don't know, you turn to Fred, and then Fred will answer you, whatever whatever the issue is. Right. I'll answer to the best of my ability. Doesn't anyone in this room have a computer? I mean, isn't right. there a Google search of any sure, kind in here? Sure. So, in other words, you feel that uh, we accept whatever Fred says as yes. gospel, yes. and Fred Correct. isn't that intelligent. In other words, it's not a matter of intelligence. You said that Fred he was inaccurate, and nobody will challenge him. Right. So now Fred has become like. By your the enemy. way, in case anybody is interested, the, it's not a B minor chord in Hey Jude. It's B flat. <clears throat> See, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But now, Just after you know. listening to the show yesterday, Fred has risen above Robin, and Robin is back into the third right. place. There you go. <laughs> sorry, Robin. Right. Because and sorry, of Fred. My, uh, what? Yeah. What are you sensing about Robin about this Hollywood? I don't part? know what's going on. I don't. I, I really don't. I don't know what is going on. I feel like. Um, you think she's jealous that I was at your party? I think I'm gonna have to throw Robin a huge party oh, when she. Comes stop, to LA stop, now stop, to try stop, to stop. even this out. You know, um, <laughs> look. I feel Robin was happy for me that I, that you were throwing this party for me. I wanted him to go and actually enjoy a trip. Yeah, yeah. that was my paramount desire. Oh, and it come on! Now. Like, you would, no, but it would have really. been funnier if he had a horrible time, wouldn't it have? No, because he's so <laughs> miserable, Jimmy. I'm telling you, I feel for. Him. I had a. <laughs> you know, I you know Jimmy took pictures mm -hmm. of this party that he threw. And, and again, 
you know, Jimmy sent me a picture, and he, he's a funny guy. He labels it the Jonas Brothers. And <laughs> we, as I said, at Jimmy's house, he had this band room set up. Right. And now everyone I know who was at the party is now setting up a band room. They were very inspired. <laughs> they are, Everyone's yeah. going to yeah. have one. And Jimmy sent me a picture of me, Ashton Kutcher, and uh, David Arquette on stage. And David Arquette's very handsome, and so is Ashton Kutcher. And I wrote back to Jimmy. I said, good Lord, I look, ho- I look horrible. And he said, well, even George Clooney would look horrible standing next to those it's two true. guys. But really, you know, I had such a good feeling about how I looked that night until I saw these pictures. You were feeling confident? Jimmy's girlfriend, Molly, took lots of pictures, and mm. I'm going to pay her to destroy them. Because, <laughs> because I looked at myself playing. The, first of all, the guitar you have, the strap, was, yeah. was like a ukulele. Maybe. As I told you, I don't know how to play any of those instruments. I own. I right. don't even know why I have them. <laughs> it's funny because you really don't play anything except the harmonica. This is the first. I don't even play that. I right. just everyone seems to think because you own one, you play it. But I, I was just really breathing into the harmonica. I don't know how to play the thing. <laughs> right. But everyone, it's funny because I've been trying to get people to go into this band room and jam. Yes, <laughs> this is the idea, yes. you know. Well, the second you showed it to me, I knew we'd use it. I wanted it to be like a Jackie Martling style party without the garbage can full of clams, you know? (laughs) And uh, finally, people went in there. But it was really weird because I kind of missed the Stamos McGrath battle, whatever was going on. Well, that's another thing. Apparently, that didn't happen. Greg had McGrath on. Um, Right? I don't know about that. Wait, wait, how wait, do you know what happened? Did Mark say there was nothing between them? Mark went on the show, uh-huh. Greg Fitzsimmons show. Right. He said, I don't know what Howard's talking about, because I had said that <laughs> Stamos was really angry. Oh, really? That, he said this. That, no, that no one knew any songs, and McGrath should know and what songs really to do. And they really got into it. <laughs> and according to what Mark McGrath said on the Greg Fitzsimmons show, that after the party, not only was Stamos great with him, Stamos has invited Mark McGrath to his party at his house next weekend where the Beach Boys will be. And they're and all going to jam, jam together. So maybe I had it wrong. But you It sounds like a preemptive it. strike on, from Camp Stamos. Right. <laughs> because what was your take on all of that? Well, I got the impression, and I think it was supported by, uh, by, by an me. email I got from Mark, right. that, that there was something uh. going on, although I missed it. Completely. Yeah, I was kind of high, so I, but I thought Mark was saying that Stamos was throwing attitude toward him. I thought so, too. I think that's what everyone was saying. Was, is poor John Stamos <laughs> just misunderstood? I don't know. I don't know, I don't I don't know what know. John expected. I kept saying to John, listen, I, I, as this is over music. I'm screaming, John, just play any song you know, and everyone will follow around with it. And he would not do that. But here was the problem. No yeah. one knew any words to sing. We didn't need the words. That was the least of our problems. No one knew how to play any of the instruments. I played Louie Louie. Yeah. I played I Just Want to Fly with uh, Mark McGrath. Yeah. Yeah. I was right That was there. the only one we really had together. At one point I threw my guitar down and said, I can't work with this fucking band anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a prima donna. But even Greg said, how cool is it? Like, we were up there jamming, and then you look over and Demi Moore and Courtney Cox and like... Um, um, Let me uh, tell you, if there was video of that, thank God. And let's say you were not involved in that and you saw a video of that, you never stop goofing on it. Right. It'd be so, it was so like, goofy. Look at these assholes playing these <laughs> instruments. <laughs> but it's a party and but everyone's see, drinking. Now you understand my dilemma. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I think I, uh, I think you'd be all right. I think you can get right back to it. <laughs> Robin would have loved it. I you know what? Say- you know what? I felt like I was part of Hollywood legend. You know, Absolutely. I used to read about like Bogey and Bacall would have over um, Sinatra. Uh, Sinatra and Sinatra would bring. Well, that's what I said. It's like we I had John remember- Stamos. We had John Stamos. <laughs> I Same remember thing. Carrie. Fisher would write those um, those books about growing up with Debbie Reynolds. Right. And this was Debbie Reynolds' house. You know, she'd just invite people over because she wanted to sing. Right. You know, and so right. She, as soon as she'd get a crowd together, <laughs> she'd get the it's guy to play the piano and she'd start singing. Jimmy gave me a tour of his house before the party. Uh-huh. And he shows me this music room. And he says, you know, I don't know why I built it. He says, no one's ever used it, ever. Now it's legend. My son so, uses it. That's it. Right. Yeah. So I said to him, listen. Everyone's going in there tonight. This is fun. Yeah, it's a legend. I was now. happy. I mean, this is going to happen at your house every week now. Johnny Knoxville <laughs> walks in with this fucking moonshine in a Which jelly I still jar, can't get and, over. He's, and he's and he's twisting off the cap and sipping it. And before I knew, I didn't expect that like Courtney Cox or Demi Moore or or or, 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 or like Ben Stiller 
Ben Stiller drank moonshine? I don't know if he did, but like <laughs> I didn't expect them to. I would think you'd look at Johnny Knoxville and go, there's no way I'm drinking anything that came out of some basement that he knows from a cousin right. in Louisiana. Right, I would expect the that. circle around him right. to get larger as people moved away. No, people loved it. Out of the it. same mason jar, as if it was communion yeah. at Mass. There's Everyone no was, cups in your house. There, was, there was, were cups, but it seemed <laughs> inappropriate to use the cups. I was disgusted by Beth even. I said to her, she goes to me, you know, Beth hit a lot of moonshine. I go, <laughs> I wouldn't even drink it. And I, and I said, did you drink any of that? No, I didn't. I yeah. know, I've had it with him before, and I learned not to ever drink it. <laughs> yeah, well, like, Beth had a lot of it, and she goes, she says to me when we're home, do you think it's bad that I was drinking out of that jelly jar, you know, with, right. with everyone? And I go, of course. No, no germs could possibly survive in that That's in what that she said. Jar. It's not the germs you worry about. As Fred said, who made the stuff? Exactly. What do they know? Under what oh, conditions? You know, Fred, don't worry. It was Johnny Knoxville's relatives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're and all you know how stable thing. Johnny is. <laughs> right. It's no problem. <laughs> don't worry. These are very, very close relatives. I think, Johnny. I think a penis. lot of people in Hollywood are jealous <laughs> that they weren't at this party. Because Perhaps, they was, might be, yeah. They, they might, might be. Now, every email I read, they said this is the best party they've ever been to. Yeah. Now you've thrown a legendary party. That, at your now house. you've got to live up to that. You can never come back. No. <laughs> Don't ever have another party. <laughs> I, I probably won't. <laughs> I was kind of happy, too, that, uh, you know, because Jimmy describes to me that he's very open about his home. Every, like, Sunday during football season, he has the guys over to watch. And a lot of people, I even said to Jimmy, I said, they must fuck your house up because they do. Mm -hmm. They wreck his house. They yeah. You know what it is? Because it's like a bachelor pad. They think it doesn't matter. Yeah. And also, people, the house I had before, which wasn't as nice, you know, it was kind of like you wouldn't really even notice necessarily if people were fucking things up. And, uh, but now you notice. Now you really notice. Yeah. Like there's a big gouge in the refrigerator or, you know, something's happened. Well, Jimmy's got a really nice house now. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, and the idea, I was really afraid somebody would fuck up his house. Like, I was eating dinner one po at one point on top of his poker game. Right. What is that thing? It's a the, video yeah, game. Yeah, the video poker. Yeah. I was eating with David Arquette. I said, hey, maybe we shouldn't be putting our plates down on this thing. It no, could, that's it, fine. It yeah. could get ruined, you know, but uh, nobody listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that was the most refined group of people I've ever had at my house. I mean, normally they people They were all are, good? You didn't see anything? Yeah, normally, like, somebody falls asleep, and my cousin Sal pulls his pants down and jumps <laughs> ass first on the person's face. And right, right. You know, <laughs> it was none of that. No. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. So yeah. who was at the party that I'm leaving out? First of all, I mean, I thought I... I who did I leave out? Do you, do you know? Who Besides was at the party? Besides Greg? Well, Greg was left out, yeah, again. <laughs> just, Greg does a great show, by the way. You should listen to it sometime. <laughs> yeah, I, I really should. Yeah, no, I, I think, do. Um, who else was at the party? Well, you mentioned Ben. And his, you mentioned I, Bill and Krista after a while. Bill now, I didn't understand who Bill Lawrence and Krista were, and Krista is going to call into the show tomorrow because yeah. she feels that uh, she says she did, in fact, have a conversation with me. This was the actress. The actress. Okay. She said, Howard, I did speak with you. Yeah. You spoke for, and I feel stupid that I had, this was in an email to Gary, mm -hmm. I feel really stupid that I didn't tell you who I was, because oh. I'm a big fan of the show. So she wants to call in and, and talk about that. Right. So Everyone I, there was, is a big fan of the show. I mean, it's, it's like not one person there was just like, yeah, I'll check out, want to see what's going on. Made me feel really important and good about myself, and like I, you know, like maybe, you know, I'm Maybe really you got somebody. something going on. Maybe I have something going on. It made me feel really, really important. Like I, I felt like a Hollywood sort of uh, celebrity kind of there thing. There you go. With the paparazzi chasing me, then we go to Jimmy's and... You're like you know. Princess Di. Yeah, I felt really, really... I, yeah. felt, I felt really like... Like a like, more beautiful Princess Di. I felt like, wow, I'm... I'm if These people are all pretty talented and they, they all, all look up to, to me. Now, you're saying that Demi Moore is a fan or is Ashton Kutcher a fan? Who's the fan? Ashton Kutcher's the fan. Well, I think, I think he, you know, I think it's like also with Courtney Cox, I think you get into a certain territory where they're either on board or they aren't. Uh -huh. I think when you, even people who are not necessarily fans, if they start listening to the show, it becomes a part of your life uh -huh. kind of, and, uh -huh. yeah. and you can't really help but, in, but enjoy it. And I think that, that she They've would fall into, into that, that territory. Yeah. yeah. And I think people, you have the greatest thing, because just being nice to people is, <laughs> they can't believe it. Because they think, right. like, they're going to walk in and you're going to, like, jerk off on them or, yeah. you know, maybe, like, shit in your hand and smear it on them or something. And The only guy who I think was angry with me was Jeff Probst. Do you think Jeff was angry? I don't know, because um, I went over to talk to Jeff, 
And I thought that the the girlfriend was the one that he met on the island. Right. He was confused <laughs> yeah. about well, the woman. That's a bad start. But I didn't say anything. I, right. Because okay. I, was, I was respectful because I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if they broke up or not. Because I don't remember seeing her on Survivor, the girl he was with. You didn't recognize her. It turns out that he broke up with the girl he met on Survivor. And now he has a new girlfriend. So I started to quiz him about his life with this girl. And then I got into, well, have you guys said, I love you to each other? Then they both turned beet red. Not an uncomfortable question. <laughs> and then I said, well, if you haven't said he love, I love you, does anyone want to say it now? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, the guy uh, standing next to me turns out to be some famous guy who is... Who, Will Arnett? Will Arnett. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know who he was. Right. Oh, he's great. He's a great. Funny actor. He's hilarious. Yeah. But we yeah. were having a blast, and Jeff Probst goes, I don't like this interview. <laughs> I go, it's not an interview. We're at a party, and we're having fun. But he, he felt he was being interviewed. You were having fun. Yeah, I right. was having fun. So I don't know if he was really upset with me or we were just having a good... You just, just lost him at that point. I, I was trying to have some I fun. I suspect that Jeff, as a big fan of the show, understands. He was having a good time. And was All probably right. into yeah. it. But yeah. I don't know. I've not heard from him. I haven't spoken to Jeff yet. Right. But, you know, I just know that he's a huge fan, right. loves the show... So and he went out of his way to go to this party. Yeah, he had to he rearrange. flew back from New York. It turns out he didn't. He didn't fly back oh, from New York, but okay. he he flew like he took the red eye. I think to get to New York to be on the air the next afternoon. I know. So. You know, here he is, and he's got a new girlfriend, and he wants to introduce you, and then you're just busting his balls at a I don't party. think I... Did, was he angry? I haven't spoken to him, but the oh. way you're saying it makes it sound like you were busting his balls. I, I don't... I, in fact, the way I looked at it was I was paying attention to Jeff in front of his new girlfriend. And <laughs> but I, was, I don't think, I you don't know, know... I thought uh, it was being nice. You, have, you said, I love you, is the way to do it. <laughs> well, then I got into... I, and then I... Uh, and then she announced that she has two kids. Uh-huh. And I went, whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> Howard voted her off the island. I said, I, I go, Jeff, is that going to be okay? Are those immunity idols or are those kids? I go, Jeff, are we all right with that? And I go, how is she going to go visit you in Guam or wherever you shoot Survivor? Where, how is she going to visit you and uh, with the two kids? This isn't going to work. Yeah. Jimmy's checking notes. What are yeah, your notes? There's another thing I'm mad at Robin about also. What? Go what? ahead. What is it? Oh, God, he made notes about that? Yeah, I did. I made notes. I was listening yesterday, <laughs> and just everything gets challenged. It's unbelievable. Robin, I listen to this show. Grow. How old do you think I am? Oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> how old Just how old do you think I am? Why do you think I'm your age? I'm 42 years old. Jimmy announced that he, he always That's says to funny. me, he always says to me, you know, I listened to you growing up. <laughs> I did. <laughs> That's true. What I'm year 50, did you guys start at NBC you're, you're in New right, York? You're actually right, because I'm 56. Of course I'm right. I'm 56. <laughs> We had a feeling you were an adult already. I'm not an adult. Well, I guess you've been around for a long time. Uh, maybe my, that's it. Yeah, I'm like an Olsen yeah. twin. And so I think of you as older, maybe. Because <laughs> no, I'll talk to Jimmy, and he has like you know similar influences as I do, You're like right. Mad well, Magazine. He seems to know about everything. And then conveniently, well, from New York. he grew up listening to me, and I go, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem that young. And I just called that into question. I said, yeah. grow up. Yeah, no, I was maybe a teenager. Maybe he delayed his uh, hey, <laughs> adolescence. Uh, someone wants to talk to you. Uh oh. Who do you think? It is. I have no idea. Stamos. No. Who do you think it is? Um, Adam? Who loves you more than anything? Who loves me? Oh, high pitch uh, Eric? Close. Uh, uh, Mel Rosalari. ETM. Oh, oh Eric. Eric oh, really? Ninja. Yeah, your biggest oh, fan. No, I, he doesn't like me. I love him, is what it is. Hey, Eric. Eric, Eric. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Eric. Eric, Eric. Howard, I have a bone to pick with you, but first, oh. I want to say hi to Jimmy and how is your family doing? Uh, hi, Eric. My family's doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> Does he know your family all that well? Well, he came to the show, and yeah. I think he met, you know, as you know, most of the staff is related to me. <laughs> right. Yeah, hey, I by met, the way, I also want to thank Jimmy. I met for, um, for uncle, the be- his uncle and his cousin, Mickey. <laughs> what, Eric? I said, I said, Howard, I have bad news for you. When Eric came to the show, people were more excited that he was there than when you were there. I had a feeling. I'd be excited, too. What is it? I got it. Before Eric goes into his whole other thing, I got to ask Eric something. Is it true that you're boycotting Iron Man 2 because Robert Downey Jr. had a midget in Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> Where the fuck did you read that? I don't know. Somebody sent that to me. They said you posted it. <laughs> Probably one of those idiotic uh, imposter sites. 
posted it, not me. Spice Boy on the Bubba show yesterday said the funniest thing I've ever heard. He was talking about how, isn't it? He was talking about how somebody's always happy when they come in the room because you know what it's like? It's like when a midget comes in the room, everybody suddenly has a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it's true. Can you argue with that? You can't. You just, it it you makes just, an it's, evening. It raises the level of delight significantly. <laughs> I was at a club once and they had a midget who stood on the bar and sprayed the crowd down. We all loved it. That's By right. the way, you know, Stamos hates midgets. I know. Yeah, he's, he's afraid, afraid of, them. of them. And so once he was at my show and I surrounded him by with the band Mini Kiss. They happen to be on the show. They're miniature kiss impersonators. Yeah. And I had them all come in the dressing room to say hello to him. Oh and he God. really was horrified yeah, he by freaks it. Out. He what freaks what out. it freaks him out about? It? Maybe because he's so good looking, he's not used to seeing like yeah. I, my it's point like about White. Jimmy's party was like everyone was so good looking that Well, that, not me. I mean well, as Robin looking. was so kind oh, enough to point no. out yesterday. I'm about every I was trying picture, to make Howard feel better. Well, every <laughs> yeah, right. Every picture <laughs> was just all these good looking people and I just felt like a hideous monster because I thought I was good looking because I had like a whole cool look going. I had right. my jacket. That's what Ashton said you had a look. I had a whole cool look and I thought I looked good and then I saw the pictures and I go, Oh my god, it's like Herman Munster being at the fucking uh, you know, <laughs> at, at school visiting Eddie's teacher. Oh. It was crazy. I go. I, I said to Jimmy, Jesus Christ, these pictures. I mean, my God. Yes, burn them. Uh, well, they're kind of fun, though. I do want the pictures. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some good ones. Um, but I do want to thank Jimmy for uh, having that great segment with my wife because, you know, she was uh, she wanted to please you and, and please me, you know, by doing a good job. I don't know. There was a great rapport between the two of you, and, and she was really good with Jimmy, and Jimmy was really good. He was spewing out the funny lines, mm -hmm. and I was very appreciative of that. I thought it was great. Yeah, she was great. She really yeah. was. Yeah. So. She did well. Uh, so that was kind of nice. But, you know, we do have um, ETM on the phone, right? Well, ETM just hangs. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, he says right. he has a bone to pick with you. Well, uh, Jim, by the way, and Raleigh, what did you want to say? Yeah, Jimmy, did you notice how hard Beth's beautiful nipples were oh, during the interview last week? Did you notice that her nips were hard during the interview? I did not notice that. That's funny because Beth said to me in that dress, she goes, do you think I should wear nippets? Those things that cover your nipples? And I said, you know what? You're on Jimmy's show, especially with even if you're tanking. If your nips are, are out there. People won't notice. It's a yeah. positive. Yeah, like that'll be good for Jimmy's ratings. If I they, have to say, I have to concentrate, because I'm an animal, very hard on when there's attractive female guests on the show, in, on looking at their head, and to the point where I will go overboard with it, and I'll only look at like their forehead, and, like their nose and above, like oh, because stop. I don't want to be leering on the show. Let me you know? Assume, yeah, I know you don't want to appear that yeah. way. I yeah. told you what happened. I was on Jay Leno's show 100 years ago with Jewel, and and Jewel has the most magnificent, magnificent yes. tits. She's a very attractive woman. She started yelling as soon as we got off at James Carvel or Carvel, Carvel. about how she goes, stop staring at my fucking tits, asshole. <laughs> And I went, whoa! And Carvel's like, I didn't. I don't think I did. I don't think uh, I did. I swear to God. Who, who, name a girl that was on your show and you just really had you trouble concentrating. Who is well, like Pamela Anderson? Every time she comes on, I mean, oh she's not God. worried. I don't know. She's there's no bra going on there. No. Right. Well, she doesn't expect and she's you to okay look at her with her it. Face. I, yeah. I would think, yeah, but yeah. you know, I don't want the audience thinking I'm what I am. Is there ever like a Nicole Kidman <laughs> or someone really classy? Like you're staring at the nips? And yeah, the, it, I mean, it happens. Uh, Nicole. Yeah. Kidman's never been on, but yeah, it happens all the time. In fact, once there was a uh, an actress or I don't know model, or whatever she is, named Josie Marin. Right. Who, not too many people know she is, but she's I a knockout, her. right? She, you know who went out with her? The magician, David Blaine. David Blaine. Yeah, he's right. a date of the mall. Yes. Yeah, this girl's gorgeous. Her like. I could see her. Her shirt was like from my angle. Her shirt was open, and I re I honestly lost my train of thought completely, <laughs> and I was bab. I was babbling. It's funny with you though, because I think of you as so asexual. Well, I know because you and I have never had sex, but if we made love, you would realize I'm quite passionate. No, but I mean, even like you, like like you're in love with Molly and everything. But I never like other than that. I think you're just focused on Molly, and you don't even look at other women. Like even look at their nips or anything. Well, no, I mean, I look at you, you know, look? I look at women. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I'm you know, <laughs> I, I just think that you know, I'm not. I, I'm not. The kind of guy who like, his the outward displays of affection, you know, I'm not into that. See, I thought after Sarah and you broke up, that you might have a period of time where you would. I was actually be nervous. Out on the town. I'm not. I'm not that type of. Um, I, I can't. Uh, that's not my thing. Really? Because I thought you were going to yeah. go through a period of like maybe 
I don't know, like seven, eight months, like what I did, and just go berserk. Yeah. And then, I, and I was kind of like angry because I wouldn't be there with Jimmy to do it with him. You know, <laughs> I was just like, you know, oh shit. Well, he's you gonna... thought that Jimmy hooked up with Sarah too quickly after he got out of his marriage. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I was critical of that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like that, but uh, yeah, that's just I don't know. I just can't even imagine. I just try. But his to girlfriend imagine. Molly's really terrific. Yeah, she. I is. gotta say. And she knows how to dress, too. She wears the little short dresses. <laughs> She's got good legs. I said to her as um, we're shoes. setting up for the party. Yeah. She's wearing a very short dress. I said, I just want you to know that everyone, all the caterers have seen your vagina. And she said, <laughs> that's, oh my, that's the worst thing you could possibly say to me. And I cackled like a maniac and went Does back Does that turn you on, though, in a way? Like it's kind of a turn on? Um, no, it's more, well, yeah, I, get, I mean, I, it wasn't true necessarily, but, uh, no, it wasn't true, but it was pretty close. We were on the a cusp there of not having to tip the guys. Yeah, I made Beth bang me before your party because, uh, <laughs> well, it was this whole thing where I was like, you know, I'm neurotic, so, I mean, no one needs to know that I, I mean, no one needs that explained to them. So I'm sitting there, and the, and, and in the morning, the morning of the party, Saturday morning, I go, hmm, we're up very early. Uh-huh. Beth wanted me to take her shopping. I go, we have to get a nap before Jimmy's party or else, you know, everyone will make fun of me because I want to go home in an hour. She goes, yeah, you must get a nap. So we go on Rodeo Drive and Beth's wearing a little short skirt and I'm all turned on and everything. And I said, when we get home, I'm going to bang you very hard. With the... She goes, no, I have to take a shower. I said, listen, I got to get to sleep. I, I won't get to sleep unless I, unless I blow a load. That, that automatically gets me to sleep. Same here. So now I'm nervous because we I haven't slept yet. We get home late. And I'm like, oh, Jimmy's party's going to be soon, and I got to get a nap beforehand. So I'm saying to Beth, you've got to have sex with me. It's got to be done. So she <laughs> like had a volume. To, yeah, it was, yeah, she just had, yeah, like a volume. She had to have it with me. I roll on top of her two seconds, and then <laughs> and then I was the life of the party. You were. You really were. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, you know, I have to say, I was. You know, I I knew that every because it's not just a party. It's I know that I will be evaluated for the next maybe you know years. It Ten could years. Be. <laughs> this is a whole week of talking. About Who knows if you'll ever come back? I mean, it's you know this is the sort of thing that if you don't make a positive impression. No, you threw a great party. The yeah, food was thank great, God. and thank all God. that stuff. I didn't understand the caterer though, like like not leaving any leftovers. What in the happened house. there? Yeah, I don't know. I was I, I missed the whole yeah I missed the whole thing. I don't know what it's happened. It's a little foggy. Maybe my cousin Sal ate everything. I have no idea. I don't know what happened there, but it was very good food. The whole thing. I mean, it was really nice of you to do. That must have, that party must have cost you a lot of money. I was thinking yeah. about it. Listen, you what's know. a party like that cost you in uh, Hollywood? Uh, it's like it was a not much. I mean, really? You know, yeah, a couple of grand. Yeah, it was a little more than that. Yeah, was... plus you let people into your house. Yeah, so I don't mind it. It was people fun. could have vomited on the furniture. Who it knows? Gave what me could something have to focus on to get the house in shape because right. beforehand I had. You know, like my kitchen was covered with bottles of olive oil and vinegar. You know, I have like all sorts of crap out, and right. it gave me a reason to clean everything up. Yeah, forced them to clean up. See, it was a good thing. Yes, yeah, very good. But anyway, I'm responsible for Beth's nips at the. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I said, you know, come on. So that was That's something producing. you were aware that could have happened. Yeah, and I also helped Beth pick out her outfit. I said, you got to wear something sexy because if people tune by and they don't give a shit about you, at least they're gonna well, they go, hey, there's a hot chick. Yeah, and that Great works. Great job, Howard. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right. oh, Eric, you're still on the line. Yeah, Eric, what do you want? I just wanted to say, what the fuck was up with your comment yesterday that you felt like me at that party? <laughs> well, Eric, all I'm making the point is that, you know, here in New York, I'm a four. In L.A., I'm a one. And uh, what? That doesn't mean you have the Eric, right you know because you're in a wheelchair and you're a little person, people stare at you. I felt... The people were staring at me because they were all so beautiful. You know what I mean? You can understand that. You know, you more than anyone understand what it's like for me. To know Both that the, all eyes are on you? You're handicapped, and in a sense, I'm handicapped when I'm in L.A. He's Howard the Midget in L.A. I'm Howard the Midget. HTM. You know, it's weird. I talked to my psychiatrist about it. Really? You did. About the party, yeah. I said, Jesus Christ, I... So fucking ugly next to these guys. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard on me. I see. And, and then he explained to me, look, you can't have everything in life. You've well, got... they do. No. You, they don't. What, do, what don't they have? Musical ability. Right. <laughs> he doesn't have that. Well, they don't have my wit. <laughs> my sting, they don't need that. My stinging wit. <laughs> they don't need it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he made they're, me feel better about it, but you're making along, me feel worse. They're getting along quite well with their limitations. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, listen, you know. these are like, I don't know, these guys are like the most handsome. I mean, they're like, the, they're Hollywood. They're the most handsome guys in the in country. My, yeah. my theory on why so many people in Hollywood get this plastic surgery is because, like, I, even I, I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to do something quick. You stand <laughs> next to these fuckers. You, in fact, Jimmy, why yeah. don't you fall into that? You know, if you came to my house on a regular for a regular party, yeah. you'd be the most handsome guy there. You'd feel <laughs> perfectly <laughs> fine with yourself. Eric, d- Eric, do you feel handsome? I don't think I look anything like Brad Pitt or anything like that, but I don't think that I'm <clears throat> ugly or a freak. What number would you give yourself on a scale yeah. of 1 like, to 10? I think I'm a... Honestly, in L.A., I think I'm a 1, but I, I do think I'm a 4 in New York. What do you give yourself? I don't know. I never really thought of that. Let's you, come up with a number. 5... Wow. You're, you're saying you're better looking than me? I don't know. Well, what would you give Eric, Howard, because it's Honestly, your scale? I think Eric's a three. An L.A. three? No, New York, York three. three. three-year-old. <laughs> and L.A. is a zero. <laughs> well, let's put it this way, Eric. Who's someone you're more handsome than, me, beside me? You think you're better looking than Jimmy? I think Jimmy's better looking than me because I was looking at the pictures and Jimmy's like sitting up and playing the harmonica and smiling and stuff. And I go, boy, he looks handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look odd. I look odd. Like the curly hair is hanging in my face and the guitar looks like the wrong size on me. And I just look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> well, I haven't seen the pictures. I don't know. You know what how you're it is. You look about. at a picture of yourself. You look at a big group picture and you zero right in on yourself. Right. And you're like, oh, I look bad. But. That's not whatever. Only the person who is that person does that. I don't know. Yeah, Beth, everybody else looks just like they should, right? Yeah. But Beth uh, must love me because she came up there while I was up there jamming, and she was like, "Oh my God, you, you look so sexy playing the guitar." I yeah. was like, "I said the same thing." Really? Was there a question in your mind? I look terrible playing no, the guitar. No, no, I, yeah. it was you know. You think I fit in with that group? It's very yes, yeah, very yeah. erotic to a woman when a man grabs his axe and starts <laughs> just, <Nah. laughs> starts, starts playing nothing. Poetry starts pouring out of him. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, you know, what I was going to ask you what was weird when I was backstage at your show. Like, I don't get the whole bar thing in the sense that, like, I walked back there and the place was packed. It was like the hottest spot to be in L.A. It was jam packed with like people who just appeared to come in off the street. Right. But I don't see how that helps the show. Like, it seems to me that it's just mass chaos back there. But you yeah. like that vibe. You know who? You know whose brainchild that was. He's, he's actually in the green room. Is Daniel Kellison, our, our original executive producer. Well, that would make sense. Who decided that he wanted to be drunk as much as possible <laughs> at work? And, uh, no, it was, it actually, it was a lot of thought was put into it because when we first started the show, we knew that we were going to have trouble getting guests because it's a new show. Right. So we thought. Well, if we have a place that the guests have fun and the publicists have fun, They'll then want to come. people will want to just come back. It won't be as because it's a drag going to these things. You know, you have to and sit there around. and whatever. Yeah, so we yeah. decided to make it a little more fun, and that's just become the thing that we do. Yeah, it's kind of cool because as soon so as I got there, so that's who those people are. They're the publicists. And yeah, the, okay. Friends of the band, and you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people that just wanted to have a look. How at hard maybe is it? Howard how hard through. is it to get backstage and get into that bar? Because it seemed to me there was a lot of riffraff. You have to there. know. You have to know somebody that's on the show that night. Or do you have a staff person who's completely in charge of that list and like make sure yes. that like you know you got to yes. be heavily carded before you get in there and all that supposedly yes but yeah. uh, it's knows? a little bit lax yes <laughs> it's but, not the white house Let's but it is it a cool way. vibe because as soon as you get there they start loading you up with alcohol because uh-huh. uh, right away uh, jimmy's cousin says to me she goes uh, what do you want to drink and i'm like Mm, you know, not what a bad. This mean? is cocktail hour. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. It is time to start drinking. <laughs> and I start. You know. We tape so late in the day too, compared to the other shows. We tape at seven from seven to eight, ah. and yeah. the other ones do you know five five thirty. So yeah, it was way it's cold. time to get drunk. Hey Eric, I gotta go. Eric came to the green room. He was a big <laughs> hit in the green room. He was, was he just, drinking? Uh, Eric, were you drinking? No, I don't drink. He was the Why center not? of attention, though. Everyone was gathered around him, including myself. Yeah. And uh, he was a delight, I have to say. How come you don't drink? I just never like to drink. You know what? Last year, hookers, maybe this year, drink. <laughs> you wouldn't do bad with a glass of wine. Uh, do you guys hear about Sarah Silverman's show being canceled? Oh. I think we might have heard about that. <laughs> 
Jimmy, you probably didn't know that. Did you know that Sarah's show yeah, got canceled? I did see that, yeah. 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 Is that because she doesn't go out with you anymore? Or are bad things going to happen to her? It's ETMZ that is reporting for us right now. <laughs> uh, this is kind of weird to say in front of Jimmy, but Jimmy had it canceled. Uh, yeah. I, He's starting to become very powerful in show business since the party. Did you see that party? Yeah. <laughs> I'm having all copies of her book destroyed as well. <laughs> yeah. Have you run into her since you guys broke up? We did. We ran into each other at, um, at, a part, at an Academy Awards party briefly. It Were you was with very Molly? very awkward. I was with Molly. And was she with the, new, with the new boyfriend? With her boyfriend, Alec. And, um, Do you guys we, still make out just out of habit? Like if you see her? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, was it weird? It was weird. And we talked for about, you know, we had small, it, it was, it was I, we were coming in just as they were leaving. And it had it been one more minute, we would have missed each other. But <laughs> as, uh, we walked in, we made the sm- chit chat for about 60 seconds. And then I said, all right, we're going to go stand over there. <laughs> Why is it awkward, actually? Why is it awkward? Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> Fred. It's awkward. Well, I mean, it's awkward because, you know, you, 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 have, you used to see this person Just every single day, them. and then you haven't seen them at all, and then you don't have the normal reaction that when you, when you see somebody for the first time after a long time, it's like, oh, go ahead, how you've been? It's, it's like... Ooh, wow, you're with another per- another person, you know, for both of us. Do you high-five her boyfriend because you both gotten her? Oh, <laughs> no, we, no, we did not. <laughs> you didn't high-five? <laughs> I don't high-five a lot in general. So it's weird, then, you're saying, now when you see her. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's odd. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever be, you know, because, I again, we were talking to um, Ashton about this yesterday. He had Bruce Willis at his wedding. He was at Bruce's wedding. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, they are just pals. Yeah. I would like to be friends with Bruce Willis, yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> oh, Jimmy Sarah. will have Bruce Willis to his wedding. <laughs> but Sarah, no, we're friendly. You know, we email and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's still, it's, it's odd. It's uncomfortable. Because I said to Sarah when she was in here. I said to her, are you going on Jimmy's show to promote your new book? And she was kind of like, I don't, I don't think so, no. But yeah. I w- you wouldn't have had her on, right? Well, it's, you know, it, it just, like, our first conversation should not be on television. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. just kind of, I don't know. It's, right. it's like, you know, get, get anecdotes about the book, you know. <laughs> hey, remember when we used to go out? <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. But she's making it like everything's hunky dory with you guys. It is. It, it is. is. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Everything's cool. Yep. It and is. Something tells me that's bullshit. No, I, I, I told you privately that no, that's not bullshit. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no. No, oh, I thought I did. I don't know. I, you know what? Even after I had that private conversation with you, I'm talking about even just recently. I still don't really. I said to Beth, it's so frustrating because I'm not asking Jimmy the right questions. <laughs> I still what don't do you want to know? I don't want to put him on the spot, but. <laughs> I don't know. There's something. There is some sort of weird thing. It's probably too complicated. Yeah. If I'm stepping over my boundaries, you tell me. <laughs> Great. Okay. You, you guys, you broke up with her first, right? Yes. Okay. And then she broke up with you. Yes. But I'm thinking, she broke. Like she broke up with Jimmy because Jimmy broke up with her first. You and think it she her went up. back just so she could be the one who broke up? Yeah, because she's probably, I don't know. I don't know how much of this you want to get into, but I mean, I, I, I don't understand. None? Do you, None? Think, no. No. do you think everybody is that juvenile? No, I, I mean, think that. God. I am, I think, Robin. I am for sure. I thought, I think Sarah's in love with Jimmy. And no. then she got freaked. No, no. Oh. No, no, that's, no, that's over with. All right. And by the way. She's been talking about this new boyfriend. I thought I even said to her, I said, "Are you putting Jimmy down with this?" Because she said every other guy she dated before. Did you read? Did you read that quote? I did. Yeah. What was the quote? Um, every he guy, knows it it was something verbatim. about me being fat. Really. Yeah, right. It was kind of like yeah, oh I've no, only dated, about me being mean or something. I've like only that. dated mean fat. But she guys. didn't really say it. It was like a mis- she's you know she was misquoted. Did or, you call her about that and say what's that? The, well, yeah, we had an email exchange about it, and she apologized and corrected it immediately. And 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 and, and that you never called her pretty. That you never complimented her. Right. But right. I, but that's not true. Yeah, that no, but that, it wasn't. It was one of those things that I don't. I don't know exactly what if if she was taken out of context or misquoted or what. Right. But I just she don't said know she what didn't happened. mean it. But, but honestly, I can honestly say this. I think you're better off with Molly. I think <laughs> I don't know. I've never met Sarah's new boyfriend, but uh-huh. and maybe she's better off with him. But I don't know. Maybe you, you maybe. seem like you're on cloud nine. Like, maybe you're going to get married to this one. <laughs> this is what he said: have children, marry, and have children. Isn't Here's my he prediction: said? he's going to. I predict she's going to move into Jimmy's house. 
Is that in the wor- works? Well, you know, I mean, it, it's she's there every every night. I mean, I would like her to like move her clothes in, but she's resistant to that for oh. some reason. Wonder why. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, you know, you have your own place. I, I think people like having their own place and their own stuff Maybe. and everything there is mine. Has she and- ever been married before? No. Okay. No. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking these two kids, because Jimmy's a kid. He's That's right. He grew up, up listening That's to right. us. <laughs> I'm thinking these two kids are going to get married. Yeah. And even have children again. That's what he said. You, well, I do know. That's got to make you uncomfortable, the idea of that, because that puts more pressure on you. It sure as hell does. You know, you're, you're fucking me up, because <laughs> Molly and Beth had a conversation in L.A. Uh-huh. I oh, they know did. This. Oh, I don't you know about this. this. No, no. Yeah, and Molly, like Beth said, Molly, do you want to have kids one day? And Molly said yes. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, sure. So that means That's Jimmy. That's why you have this prediction. That must mean Jimmy's on board with this. Because she ain't hanging around with Jimmy if Jimmy's not going to have kids. Right. That's going to really suck if you start all over again and have more kids. For who? You. Yeah, for me. <laughs> oh. Why are you doing that? <laughs> who said I was doing that? You're doing it. I, listen, you had I, that, you, have you had that discussion with Molly? Of course. It's just a discussion with And you're open to having more children. It's it's something that you know I have mixed feelings about, uh, obviously. I mean, uh, my but you kids, would do it for her. My kids are 18 and 16 years old. You're almost in the clear. <laughs> I know. You what can look at it that mean? way. I mean, seriously. But then I also look at, like, my brother just had a baby and, like, you know, he's so cute, and it's so... And I really? really like, you know, kids, and so, you know, it's... it's Yeah, there are things that appeal to me, and there are things that do not appeal to me. I have to start talking to Molly about how, how things are going to be ruined if oh, they have kids. Boy. You should just tell Molly, listen, this th- you know, you can't have kids because it will make Beth want to have children, and uh, um, that's unacceptable. I'm going to say it. <laughs> You're affecting it's my relationship. Much. So... Are you happy Sarah's show is canceled? No. <laughs> Liar. No, I'm, really, I'm not. I really am not. I, I right. don't. I, in, most, in most situations, I would. <laughs> you know, <laughs> other people, but, I, but I'm not. No. Yeah. Well. I'm, sure to, I'm sure she'll be fine. I bet you Molly's happy. No, she's not. <laughs> I secretly think she is. <laughs> she has none of that. Uh, <laughs> she's happy. Um, yeah. Eric, are you done? I just want to say oh. to Jimmy, tell, tell your relatives that I said hi. Thank you, Eric. I will, and I hope you're well. And Eric, Thank I, you. I'm sorry I said I felt like you. I don't know how you feel. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt club faced when I was at the party. What can I tell you? Um, what is it, Mikey? Real quick, and then I got a break. Okay, Howard. Uh, and this is so amazing that that Jimmy's there. Okay, when you were breaking down the L.A. trip, you could feel through the stiletto Robin's anger, Robin's <laughs> anguish with the with the and Jimmy and and when he walked in and, and it was gonna get glazed over, but thank God that I am on my 60th oxycodone and I can for a few minutes. But uh, Robin really, really, you can really, really feel that she was just super, super and like let down. And then when when Jimmy said that. Uh, Oh my God! That you know, the 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 um, that that the, you know the, the party was just that it was all the fans and stuff. Like, I, I know that Robin was feeling like, why? You know, I should have been there. And I, Jimmy, <laughs> I been there. why? Why the fuck? Uh, why didn't you invite these people? Why didn't you invite Gary? At least Gary. Well, I know Robin was. Jimmy's not comfortable with black people at his house. <laughs> yeah, right. it's, so, I have white only policy. I That's not right. I, uh, That's, I'm telling you. I'm, I think you have to look into that. I, didn't, I never. Th- I don't know. I didn't. Th- I thought of it as I didn't, didn't think people would actually come out from New York to come to a party at my house. But if Robin wanted to be at the party. She would hop on a plane and be at the party. It wasn't even That's like right. that. I was going out to L.A. and I was having dinner at Jimmy's house. Yeah, but I swear to you, Robin is not jealous. Robin, would you take a lie detector test? Yes, I would take a lie. Thank you. <laughs> no, and I quote: uh, "Why do you think I, I, I'm on a plane every weekend?" She was saying that like w- like weeks before that, like when you started talking about this whole LA. Are you jealous of the party? No, at all. And 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 if I wanted to go to LA, I could have gone to LA. And of course, you would have been welcome at that. Yeah, house, but was Robin. she invited? She wasn't invited. <sighs> 
Well, of course she's, she's invited anything I do. That's no, it. That, no, you, have no, a, no. you have an open invitation. It wasn't like that. She doesn't live in L.A. I'm not going to say, Robin, you want to come to the party in L.A.? It was a dinner party at Jimmy's. And house. I certainly okay. didn't intend right. to go right. with Howard right. and Beth when he was going to support his wife no. on her book tour. Okay, Greg fucking fix, fucking Fitzsimmons. <laughs> Greg <Motherfucker>. fucking Fitzsimmons. <laughs> he, he, he got to go, and Robin did it. You Tom know, Arnold was there. Sweetheart, I don't. I I'm glad that Greg was there. I'm glad that Tom Arnold was there. Oh, they live in L.A. Is I'm why. glad that everybody was there who was there, and I'm particularly glad that Howard really I enjoyed had himself. Fun thanks to and Jimmy's party it was that a good time. Jimmy got to return some of the hospitality what? he's received right. from Howard. That's right. And and Howard kept saying, How do you, you should have been there. Robin, you should have been there. And there was like silence, silence from Robin. Well, what, 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 uh, uh, well, how am I supposed to respond supposed to, to that? How supposed to be there? All right, forget it. I'm getting rid of that guy. It's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Tom, go ahead. Oh, you know what? Stamos bummed everyone out at the party. By gonna, doing what? Should I tell that story real quick? I don't know what you want. Well, oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Should yeah, I yeah. tell that? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Stamos okay. had a weird move. Now, tell me what you think of this. Okay. Stamos walks in. He walks up to me. He goes, oh, man. He goes, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. He, sometimes John talks out of the side of his mouth. He uh-huh. goes, oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, he goes, he goes, you know, I was talking to Rickles, as in Don Rickles. Mm-hmm. And Rickles is pissed off at you. I mean, what's with you? didn't invite Rickles. I was on the phone with him. He's pissed. Oh, you didn't invite God. him. You didn't invite him. I go, I go, John. First of all, I, it would never even occur to me that Don Rickles would want to come to a party. The guy's fucking 80 years old. It's a loud party. I go, how the fuck? I mean, Are you uh, supposed to know that he wants to come out and party? I go, I have no idea. You've that never Don, socialized I've never, with him I don't even really know Don Rickles, except I interviewed him. I love Don Rickles. Yeah. He's my hero. But I, I would love to have had Don Rickles here. Why didn't you tell me? I don't think John's telling the truth. Well, in fairness because, to John, I am f- friendly with Don Rickles. Uh-huh. And, and, and um, you know, I know that, you know, that there's your interest in Don. But I just... I didn't feel like Don would be... I've had Don in my house. He would be comfortable at this particular party uh-huh. because there was loud music, and it's, you know, it just wasn't a party that I thought he and would And don't enjoy. you think if Don Rickles showed up, we'd all have to sit around and be quiet and like quietly talk to Don and, like, like well, you listen, know... Well, listen, if Don... Yeah, Don, you want to pay... You want to hear Don... You want to talk to Don, for sure. Right. And so, I don't know. Maybe I should have just let him decide, but I just didn't want to put him in an uncomfortable well, position. Well, afterwards, Jimmy was really bummed out. I was. I felt and bad. I was, I, and I was bummed out, too, because I was like, felt- John, please stop, because you're really bumming me out. I mean, I feel really guilty now, but I... Oh, also feel like I still feel I feel even more so in retrospect that he would not have enjoyed himself. Yeah, there. I, I feel confident we did the right thing. Yeah, uh, because John, why know. would John do that? I mean, like, did he talk to Rickles? Yes, yes. that's what he claims. Oh, yeah. Can you recreate the same party with Don Rickles and have Robin there, and that way no one will uh, be upset? Wow. Yeah, it'll be just the three of us. Uh, all right, Tom, real quick, go ahead in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to find out if Jimmy uh, gave Beth out anal yet. Uh, seems like they're getting pretty close there. Uh, wow. You secretly had anal with my wife. Uh, not anal, no. Not anal, all right. He's not into anal. <laughs> That's rude. Believe me, I tried to give him anal. It, it wasn't going in. All right, thank you. Jimmy, so your party was a hit? It was a big hit, thank goodness. Howard had a good time. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big relief because I know I would have been tormented for um, forever if, if he hadn't. So that, that must have been a huge pressure on you. It was. It was a lot of pressure, but, uh, you know, I thrive on it, and um, I become. I guess I've become like the Martha Stewart of the West Coast. <laughs> you think Howard's ever going to come back out? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what happened with you and Robin? You were sensing some hostility from her? Oh, well, we went over it on the air, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 maybe it was probably nothing. You think things are okay? Yes, I think so. <laughs> All right, man, so you had a good time today? I did, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. <laughs> Back from L.A. My kind of town, that L.A. Yeah. You have no mic. Oh, that's because your mic's down, Robin. Well, that's, There's no way you That's can... what I was trying to tell you. Yeah. You, your mic is on, but I have it turned down uh, off. I was trying to send you a subtle message. I got it. I just don't know what the message was. <laughs> and my glasses are filthy. Uh, you know, that time difference with L.A., boy, that wears me out. Everything wears me out, you know, but... It's really weird when I go out there because there's like a lot of excitement that I'm there. 
Well, I said it was like the queen coming. Everybody was getting ready for you. <laughs> TMZ did a report. We went out to dinner. We got there Thursday um, evening, you know, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, late afternoon. And we and we went to our hotel. We stayed at the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is a really nice hotel. And it pulled up, and then right away there were these, uh, like a paparazzi, but like like a ton, of, like 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 a million of them. Howard, Howard, you know, like uh, I don't even like. Know how, how did they get on the hotel grounds? Don't that was, and then the hotel people got upset. You're you're standing on our sidewalk, and and then they were throwing them off the sidewalk. I said, listen, it's no big deal. Just uh, you know, who gives a who fuck? Who owns the sidewalk? I don't know, but there was, it's, it reminded me like when I was a little kid, and you go, hey, get off my lawn. That's, right. my, our, that's my lawn. <laughs> my you no, know, our property line ends here, man. You're always <laughs> arguing with your neighbors. I don't know. Did you have that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was t- telling you about the guy who <clears throat> would yell at the children every time they touched his grass. Yeah, yeah. It's that's like a, my grass. Yeah, it's like, and it's like one little patch of right. grass. Right. It's, it's such a small patch of grass, it's not even worth fighting for. So we get there, and there was a lot of excitement. And I said to Beth, I go, man, there's a lot of excitement. Well, they're looking for something new to do, yeah. I'm sure. Like, I'm the new guy in town. Like, you know what it is? Enough it's weird. of Kim Kardashian and her sisters and wherever they go. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's like, because I don't live out there, there's very, you know, mo- most celebrity out there, no, one, no one's, uh, Jimmy Kimmel told me that, he goes, you're just not here enough because everywhere I went, it was like an event. Mm-hmm. I was like, I must be like the president when but I go But that's what there. I said. It was like a state visit from another yeah. uh, uh, foreign dignitary. Even that guy from TMZ, Harvey Levin, was saying, uh, on his report, wow, it was like Howard Stern is the king of L.A. <laughs> so we got there, and uh, we were going to, uh, we were meeting uh, Jimmy and his girlfriend, Molly, mm-hmm. and J.J. Uh, Abrams and his wife, Katie. J.J. Mm-hmm. Abrams, uh, who's been on our show, he, he did the Star Trek movie. and um, The uh, Mission Impossible movies, he right? Did, yeah, he, 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 he's the guy who created Lost and all these shows, yeah. and he's a good guy, and so we were all going to go out to dinner together at this place called Soho House. Okay. So we're driving, and then all of a sudden, there's all like it was like being Lady Di. You know how they chase you? There yeah. was like three cars chasing us. So I said to the guy driving us, I said, "Listen, man, slow down. This ain't Let them catch us. It ain't worth dying over." I said, "Let's let's just go." And it's I so, mean, what happens if they catch you? Yeah, I said, "So you get out of the car, and they." These guys do not give up. Well, they'll take pictures, so who cares, right? Oh, yeah, it's not like you're with somebody other than your wife. What are they going to catch you doing? That's what Beth said. Beth said, it's not like we're dating, (laughs) you know, in in secrecy. It's not like you're cheating on your wife. I'm your wife. It's okay. I said, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. So, because it really, because really, what are you running from? I mean, okay, so some guys are going to take your picture. Big fucking deal. So, I get out of the car. And right away, it's so confusing. You can't even see where you're walking. They're popping so many flash bulbs. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole, there were two cars worth of guys chasing me who are professional autograph seekers. Now, when I say professional autograph seekers, they have every picture I've ever taken or every movie poster, anything that ever came out about me. My books. So how long does that take to get through them? Well, those guys, you can't sign anything. I, I signed a couple of things. But if once you start, they're like... They keep flipping another thing. Because they, they, that's how they make their living. They sell these autographs. So if you sit down there and sign for 10 hours, they'll have you sign 10 hours worth of stuff. Wow. So I was like signing one. What happens is, though, you get out of the car. I can't even see Beth now. I get nervous about her. You're right. All of a sudden, I can't even find. I, I wanted to actually look at where I was. You can't see a thing. It's blinding. All of a sudden, I feel some people grabbing me like like the Beatles or something, like like touching me and pulling me and pushing me. And I go, what the fuck? What the fuck's going on? Now I'm starting to get aggravated. This is how things heat up. <laughs> Wait, I mean, how far is the door from the car? I mean, what do you have I, to I don't, do? I couldn't even fucking tell you because you can't even see in front of you. And, and they block. They, they, it's almost like what they do on the football field. There's a whole th- pattern they run so that you <laughs> You are can't blocked. see where you're supposed to go. Where's the lane? So I'm like, I'm like, man, this seems dangerous in some weird way. Like, I could have walked into the street, got hit by a car. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And, and then you they, don't know where Beth is at this no, point? And, now I, and then I, uh, they video, they're videotaping. So what they're hoping you'll do is either get in a fight with someone or you'll fall down or you'll look confused. So I was like, I don't want to do any of those things. I just want to get into the <laughs> restaurant. So it's actually surreal. You don't know you don't know where you are. It's almost like being in a bee's nest. You cannot see a fucking thing in front of you. So 
fortunately, I brought Mike out with me. You know Mike. Yeah. And he was helping us get in, but it was crazy. I started to sign a few things. I said, this ain't, this ain't going to fly. I'm not right, signing any more stuff. because that just makes more. And then they follow you around for the whole weekend because they know you're an asshole and you'll sign everything. And, and uh, you know, it's not like it's a fan saying to you sign something. It's like no, a woman. It's, it's a guy with a bunch of. Yeah. Like I went shopping and this woman came up. She goes, I'm a fan. Would you sign this for my niece or something? I said, yeah, sure. You know, it, it, no big deal. But she it, doesn't come with another one. and She doesn't have no, another niece. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole racket. But it's really I, I'm going to say dangerous because you can't. You don't know what the hell's going on, and they're hoping you'll get hit by a car. These guys, because be then they'll be the ones who tell all the stories. Yeah, you have no idea if you're on the sidewalk. You don't know where the fuck you are. So um, we pull up, and now we're in a steakhouse. And by coincidence, I didn't even see him. Donald Trump had just gone in there with his wife, and so. The steakhouse is the wrong, it's the wrong restaurant. Because I was going to say, what were you doing at a steakhouse? Well, it turns out the Soho house is two floors up. Like, oh. It's like a depart. It's like a, a building complex. You know, it's like a, who the hell knows what was going on? You think I know what was going on? So I walk in, I finally get in there and it, t- it, t- it was like <laughs> wacky. So the guy goes, uh, do you have a reservation? I go, yeah. And, and they go, no, we, we don't have your name on here. I go, is this the Soho house? And they go, no, this is BOA steakhouse. No. Oh. So I, I go, oh, fuck, you're kidding me. I go, I don't think I could walk back out there. Yeah, like now you got to go back? That's <laughs> crazy. Go, and then you sound like you're crazy because you're like, well, the guy goes, well, your car's right there. I mean, I go, I go, I go, where, where? And they don't tell you. <laughs> this must happen all the time. I, they don't tell you the Soho House is it's up upstairs. upstairs. And there is a way of getting up there. I guess they don't want to encourage that mm. through their restaurant. They're, they're pretending that restaurant doesn't exist. Yeah. So I go, did you ever hear of a place called Soho House? Oh, no, that's right upstairs. You, we, we can help you get up there. I said, thank you. Don't send me back out there. The whole thing is crazy, man. I I don't know. It was wild. And I'm telling you, we pulled up to the hotel. These guys, there were so many guys out there. So now they're fighting How over... How do they know where you are? I don't know. It's impossible that they would know. First of all, I'm registered under my alias. Yeah. Which, which you seem like a retard doing, but thank God we do that. And I don't even know how they... It was a private entrance. I don't even know how they... I don't. I don't know. It must be someone from the hotel knows I'm coming and tips them off. Oh, it was crazy. It was like it was like right out of the, the Beatles' Hard Day's Night. And you know, I guess if I was single and I had a you know a new if chick you were trying me, to impress somebody, yeah, it'd be I, another. I pay people to do that. That's right. You'd make this happen. You would say, "Come on, get a crowd out in front of the hotel so I can yeah. look important." And you know me, how cranky I am and everything. And I was just like, "Boy, this is weird." But you know, you, know, you just go with the flow. I was like, "Wow, okay." So that was dinner Thursday night, and that was pretty nuts. Mm-hmm. And then Friday, Beth was running around. She was on everything. She was on Jimmy Kimmel. Did you see her on Kimmel? <laughs> no, I have to go get the YouTube now. I, she was really I good. I missed it. I heard about it. Yeah. I saw a lot of comments about it. I'll tell you about the party that Jimmy threw. Yeah. I'm getting to that. But the funny thing is that the, Jimmy has a room where you can jam. Like, he's got all guitars. and, and In his a, house? Yeah. He's got, a, he's got a whole, like, outdoor room. Like, I shouldn't say that. That doesn't make sense. But it's a, it's a detached. It's the, the room. The, it's... It's a room that's not part of the regular house. Okay. All right. It's like a guest house, but it's he set it up for, like, if everyone wants to go play instruments. And he says, no one ever plays instruments when he has this thing set up. So a bunch of us went in there, and I saw pictures from the evening. And I'm standing next to Ashton Kutcher, who's coming in today, this morning. I'm standing next to Ashton Kutcher and David Arquette. And we're jamming with our, uh-huh. our new band, which I'll be telling you about. So you guys are now going to make music together? There's, a, there's a, something happening. This but... is, what are they called? This is a super group. <laughs> this is a super group forming. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about it. But, but uh, uh, anyway, I saw pictures from the evening, and I look horrible in every single fucking picture. I really, I'm standing next. It's like, you know, Jimmy said to me, you know, uh, quite frankly, George Clooney would look horrible next to these guys. They're all well, handsome. now come on, there. George Clooney's handsome. I, I'm, he's making a joke, but I'm yeah. just saying, you know, what am I doing up there? I look ridiculous. <laughs> and Beth must really love me because she told me I look really hot playing the guitar with these guys. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we need Fred here because 
we, the well, I'll, I'll jump to that. You need a real musician in <laughs> yeah, the band. Yeah, yeah, is that yeah. the thing the band is missing? Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> I gotta. I gotta. It, 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 it was really something this trip to LA. First of all, LA is the greatest because of that weather. I gotta tell you, you know. We're fucking around here in this cold weather. I have tried to get you out of here for a long time. I got I'm three, not attached to this place. I got three daughters, my parents, mm. my move them. I can't move them. I, you know, I, I'm I got to be where my ex-wife's got the kids and all this stuff. Uh, but Ashley's getting close to going to college. Mm. She's got another year. Then I'm fucking heading out of here. I'm that's it. I'm going somewhere. I've been talking about that. Why do you think I'm on a plane every weekend in the wintertime? Boy, winter time? That, that warm weather puts you in such a good mood. So Beth was running around like a maniac. I don't know if you want to hear any for Jimmy Kimmel, but I thought it was really strong. Yeah. Did, I, I wonder how the, the fans are feeling because, uh, you know, Beth gets so much crap, and I thought she was what really... Do you mean? Well, you know, Beth gets so much shit from our fans for for being my wife, and they, they're just so, there's a lot of people who are mean to her on the Stern Fan Network. Oh, again, and, you're going on those but, things. But I thought she did a really good job. Because everything I heard was positive. It yeah. was not. I didn't hear one. I don't talk to those Stern Fan people. Well, I had this whole thing where you know, I, I so I, I got there, and Beth was running out to go do Jimmy Kimmel's show to promote her book. Uh huh. And the first guest is Ryan Phillippe, J.D.'s pal. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, he was at Jimmy's party, too. I'll tell you about that. It's good seeing him. He had his hot girlfriend with him. You know, everybody has a hot friend. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, so Beth went out, and, and I just, and she was like, she knew I'd be cranky because we were going to dinner afterwards. Right. With uh, Jimmy and Did stuff. Did you go to the show with her, or you no, stayed at the hotel? I, I stayed at the hotel, which is something um, my psychiatrist will be proud of me for. We've been working on that kind of stuff. What does that mean? Where I learned to stay out of things. You know what I mean? You usually would be micromanaging, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I would be there and make it about me. Directing. And all right. and yeah, yeah. Well, having not directing. your problems. Right, who knows, but somehow <laughs> it would become about me, and it's Beth's moment. And then Beth went, and Beth was happy to go and, and all of that. And so I stayed at the hotel, and ostensibly to get a nap, that was the thing, because I'm Mr. Cranky. And Mr. Nappy. And plus, every minute, I'm looking at my watch going, uh-oh, in New York, it's really 6 o'clock. I'd be you're eating like, my dinner. You're like the timekeeper. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm hungry right now. because, Of course, because it's really 6 <laughs> o'clock for me. And I'm sitting in the hotel room neurotically and not sleeping because now it's my dinner time. And then we're eat, not eating dinner till after the Jimmy Kimmel show, which is done like at 8 o'clock. But that's really 11 o'clock. <laughs> you know, I'm making myself berserk. I'm, I'm, I'm nuts about that time change thing. And. Just forget it. It's the time you're there. I guess. I hear you, but I can't get used to it. <laughs> well, you only got two days. So now I'm laying in bed, and then I said, I better beat off. Because now I'm in the hotel, and I'm going to beat off. Because I go, maybe that'll put me to sleep, and then I won't be cranky. I didn't even tell Beth I beat off when she was doing tape in Jimmy's show. <laughs> you were <laughs> that's between us, okay? Jimmy and yeah, that's between us. I had to take care of myself. Yeah, please, uh, you know, keep that from Beth. Yeah, I have an honesty issue. I tell her whenever I beat off, but this time I was embarrassed. What is that like a, pl <laughs> a pledge? Well, you know, I just say I don't want to be uptight about it. Hey, I beat off. What's the big deal? But I mean, if it comes up, it's one thing. But you don't have to announce it. Yeah, but do also, you? I wanted to have sex with her that night, uh -huh. so I didn't want her to use that like to like go like you know you beat off already. What are you what are you, what are you doing over here? I just didn't want it to be an issue. Huh. Because she could take that the wrong way, like, what are you beating off for? You have me, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to fuck things up. I think you're making a big deal about nothing. I, well, welcome to my fucking nightmare. <laughs> I mean, my God. <laughs> making a big deal about nothing every your second. Life. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but nevertheless, even with the beating off, and I ate a bunch of bananas and everything, I still couldn't fall asleep. Bananas, beating off, no sleep. Nothing, because those are my two <laughs> key things. If I eat a banana... Because I guess it has some sort of weird tryptophan thing or I something. I never I heard know. that. I don't know, but I never heard it either. But somehow I've convinced <laughs> myself that eating a banana will put me to sleep because okay. it's a complex carbohydrate or something like that. I have a theory. Okay. And uh, it was a massive explosion when I beat off in the hotel. I, oh, man. I, I, Did I had you mess it. up the walls? No, but I had, it was like a four <laughs> tissuer. And uh, I burst through the tissue. Oh, no. I ripped a hole through it. I was dropping loads. I'm it's coming. like that commercial I'm for coming. Cheerios. <laughs> we had to be moved to a new room. Boom. Yeah, I had to call housekeeping. <laughs> Mr. Stern, you'll be eating. Oh. 
Oh, You'll be yeah. needing to move to a new room. <laughs> <laughs> There's an explosion. Boom. What just happened? <laughs> the whole, whole hotel was rocked. I'm like, Mr. L.A. paparazzi chased me. <laughs> my hot wife is on Jimmy Kimmel. Blah, blah, blah. I'm in my room beating off and eating bananas. <laughs> So fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it gonna end? <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Anyway. So then I'm sitting in the room. I go, shit. I should have gone to Jimmy's. It'd be fun. I want to see. I want to see where Jimmy works. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, you've uh, never seen the studio. No, I haven't seen anything. Now I'm sitting in my room now because I put myself <laughs> looking at four walls. Yeah, now that I put myself in Siberia. <laughs> You know, and it would have been fun because I know Jimmy's got a bar set up there. I could have started having cocktails. Yeah, it's like a nightclub, I heard. Evidently. So I said, fuck this. I'm going over. So uh, I got dressed. Then I had to figure out what to wear because we were going out to dinner. And I don't know what to wear out there, but everyone's casual. Yeah. But, you know, even casual for me, I just don't, I don't look so good. Well, you look good where when I saw you. No, I looked all right. Hey, things are falling apart rapidly. Oh, stop. They really are. That's the bad thing about going to L.A. Everyone's so fucking good looking. That, like, I really look heinous. And why do you think all those people stay in the psychi- I mean, the psychiatrist, the plastic surgeon's office? Yeah, but you know what? Some people are going too far with it. But that's why thing. they do. They're, it's an yeah. attempt yeah, to, to look- stay ahead of that, and then they make mistakes. Yeah, I'm much handsomer in New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good point. That's a real good reason for me not to go to L.A., because I'll, I'll start looking like the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll be like, maybe uh, I should get tugged back a little bit. You'll be one uh, of those, what's wrong with his eyes? <laughs> yeah, well, hey, come on, it's competitive out here. He looks like his eyes are upside down. <laughs> I look like a monster. <laughs> now, everybody's just very, very good looking. I'm telling you, I was looking at Dr. Phil on Jimmy the other day. They were running promos over yeah. or something. I was like, his crow's feet are going the wrong way. Yeah. You know, he's even had a tweak. And he's no fashion plate. I don't know. In L.A., I'm a one, but in New York, I'm a four. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, in New York, I could almost look cute in, on days. Someday. Come on, there are some other places with good weather where you can maintain a four. <laughs> yeah. Mexico. <laughs> My height gives me a four. I, I don't know. So, you know, so, th- so where am I up to? Oh, it's just Thursday night. Yeah, so... Yeah, I get over to Jimmy's, we drive in, and boy, that's a nice setup, man. He's got, you walk in, he's got like a whole bar, and the place this is This is packed. at the studio. At You're not the studio. About I'm ta- no, I'm talking about at the studio where he works. He's got his own, it's like the Jimmy Kimmel theater type situation. They don't call it that, yeah. but, it, you know, he's got complexes of uh, offices, and uh, you walk in by the dressing rooms, and all of a sudden, there's this huge party going on. Now, when I say party, I'm going to say 200 people partying in a with a bar and a full bar service it looks like you went out for the night and if you know someone or you're sort of a vip or something i guess you get back into this area and uh it's it's the place to go for drinks like a like a like a club and and it's it's not even people who are have anything to do with the show huh what's that all about i don't know it's a and it the bar's going and it's would you like a drink uh, and I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. What do you got? Start out with a little white wine. Here. Now, is it open bar? Open bar. Wow. I mean, it was open bar for me. I wonder if these other people have to. Pay. Yeah, I'm like, is Jimmy like subsidizing? Um, I don't know his but, career by opening a joint. But it is some. <laughs> it is some vibe back there. And I even said to Jimmy, what, I mean, these aren't the guests or anything. It's just like, what's going on? I can, it's like a whole other. You don't show. even know who these people are. They could almost have a reality show just based on that bar. No, you don't know who they are, but they're all sort of somebody, but you don't know who. Right, but I'm just saying they don't, they're not with the people on the show. They're well, not. I didn't even like hang out over there because it was too crazy. Because uh-huh. every time I walked by, people started cheering and screaming. And going, oh. like, yeah, it was, I was like, I wasn't going to go sit there and have a drink. It wouldn't have been relaxing. Right. You know, I would have been the entertainment. So I was just sitting in the dressing room. Beth was in there and, you know, all the producers and getting her ready and everything. And uh, a lot of the guys who work on that show are big fans of mine, and, mm-hmm. and then so Beth went out and taped, uh, did you know, did the show, and it was really good. Like I was, I I thought she should have had more time. They were they had really good rapport, repartee. Uh huh. Beth and Jimmy. I don't know if you want to hear any. Of I it. do want to hear. Let's see. 
You want the, the well, the full interview is nine minutes. I don't know how much. But you want I'm to really. Wait a minute. How's your psychiatrist going to feel about the fact that you then got up and went over? No, there? I was there at the appropriate time, like when I was okay. called for. But it, they were ta- they were running late on their taping, so I ended up being there to see the taping. I wasn't I even see. supposed to be there for okay. that, so it wasn't my fault. All right. You know, Ryan Phillippe was the first guest, and uh, he was saying some really nice things about me. He's, he's he was really being very sweet and uh-huh. talking about how his mom used to drive him around and he'd listen to the show, and it was like his big influence. Uh-huh. So that was, it was not. I was you know. I was really starting to feel very full of myself being out there because the people were carrying on about me and telling me I was a genius. <laughs> like um, Amy Poehler from Saturday Night Live was at the, I'll tell you who was at the party. But, okay. But she was there and her husband and uh, and they were telling me I'm their hero and, <laughs> and comedy hero. And I was just like, you know. How come they're all doing very well and are respected? Yeah, and I yet know. we're still over here. I know. I'm everyone's comedy hero and they've, they've all done very well in a respectable way. And I'm still this fucking... Pariah. This freak show. <laughs> I don't know. This social pariah. You know, like Jimmy's got a show on ABC. Amy Poehler's on Saturday Night Live and has a TV show on NBC. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm still some weird dreg, dreg or something. And so then uh, Beth came back and I told her how funny it was. And, you know, everyone was really pleased. And then, um, you know, then we went up to Jimmy's offices to get him because we were all going to go to dinner. And. But Boy. did they not come in the same car as you? How come they weren't with you when you went to the Soho? Because they had a different car because oh. th- afterwards they're going home and, you know, we were going back to the hotel. So, yeah, yeah, they had a different car. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and that's when that whole Soho This is why, you know, like those whole, the, all those Hollywood people talk about conservation and saving the environment. Look at how many cars. How I many- know. <laughs> but you know what? It was really, it was really kind of exciting because, you know, I was excited for Beth and I, and I felt good. And she was nervous that, you know, she wanted it to go well because she knows Jimmy so well. Oh, and, yeah. But, uh, and, and plus you drink before you go on. I, t- I slowed back down. <laughs> she was drinking? Well, yeah, we were, I told you there was a whole bar with cocktail area. And she, yeah, that she doesn't was, mean you have to have a cocktail. She had a, a glass of wine or something, <laughs> but uh, she said that's the key to getting relaxed. I mean, it really, it's really kind of smart to get people alcohol before they have to go oh, out. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so then, and then the whole dinner thing happened Thursday night, and, you know, and that, that whole story. Uh-huh. I'm telling you, this big Hollywood party that Jimmy threw was really quite something. Let me, let me, I'll tell you the guest list. So this was Saturday night. So I really didn't even know who was coming entirely because, I mean, there were some people that uh, I had invited because Jimmy said, who do you want to have there? Uh-huh. And then there were people who just kind of were there and I didn't even know they were coming. So he's all dialed in apparently in this Hollywood scene. Yes and no. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell what's going on out there. I'm just yeah. so, I'm so out of it. You know what I mean? I mean, look, 90% of my life is pretty much, it's just me and Beth and then my kids. And then, like, I'm kind of sequestered in New York. So when I go out to Hollywood, when I go out to L.A., I'm telling you, it was, like, really strange. It was uh, it was really like being the Pope. that Paparazzi are following me. Like, like even Jimmy goes, nobody gets followed like this. This is insane. You would have thought I was Surrey Cruz or, or something. Or Britney Spears. <laughs> or Britney Spears. I mean, it was wild. And, I mean, you know, just – and I didn't even tell you this. Like, Friday night, we went out, I went out with uh, just Jimmy and Molly to um, this uh, Italian restaurant. I can't think of the name of it. No wonder Adam Carolla's all upset. Yeah, Adam was at the party. And Adam but goes, you uh, wouldn't give him any special time. No, we invited Adam Friday night. He was shooting a commercial oh, or something, he? and he wasn't available to come. So yeah. I met Jimmy and Molly over at uh, this Italian restaurant. Because Friday, I just did the same routine again. I hung out by the pool. Now, was Beth busy all day on yeah, Friday? Yeah, all day pretty much. Wow. She stopped by for an hour. Or, uh, we went shopping for two hours on Rodeo Drive, which I don't recommend if you have any degree of fame. Because uh, You can't move? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. I, I didn't know what it was. I, I I saw it in the movie Pretty Woman, Rodeo Drive, you know, and, and Beth said, oh, let's go shopping on Rodeo Drive. I said, yeah, why don't you get dressed up like Julia Roberts <laughs> and we'll go and, and I'll look like me. <laughs> You're going to dress up <laughs> there's as no what? Point, there's no point in me dressing up. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, let's go shopping. So we, we hit like the first store you hit. Then everyone's like. It's really kind of a tourist trap, actually. It is. It's, well, yeah. of course. I, what, what do you mean, of course? How do no, I know I mean, that? Pretty woman, it didn't look like Rodeo that. Rodeo Drive. Oh, well, I walk out there, and there's all, there's a, um, I guess they have a lot of tour buses that come by. They're open air tour buses, and it Those says big double decker buses. And it has star written on it, and people are there to look at celebrities. They drive by the celebrities' homes, so I walk out, and they go, "Hey." The, the guy on the, Did he have a bullhorn? He had a bullhorn. Yeah, he goes, he goes, 
<laughs> and right over there is Howard Stern, the radio announcer. And, and I, uh, That's funny. He can't miss me, you know what I mean? That's a movie scene. And, and, and I go, uh-oh. Beth goes, all right, get back in the car. This is going to be a disaster. We don't we don't need to go shopping. I said, right. listen, honey. They're announcing you from the bus stop. My new thing is proven to Beth that like nothing bothers me. I go, honey, we came here to shop. Big deal. So people see. So they're on a tour bus. That's not a big deal. So they're announcing me. Yeah, so they're announcing me. And we're trying to cross the street. And now we're jaywalking because we're so desperate we're to get across the street and hide. We're going to hit by traffic, but and it's Beth's okay. Going, and I go, Beth, let's go into that store. She goes, no, I, I really don't want to go to that store. I want to go to the one all the way down there. I go, we're, we're going to walk all the way down there. No problem. No problem. The guy's going, Howard Stern is over there not crossing the street. He is crossing the street. So we went in some stores and... Beth said to me, oh, I had enough shopping. Let's just go. You know, like like we went to two <laughs> this stores. Was a bust. It kind of was. Yeah. It was it was a shame. But she was real tired from doing all this promotion, and I couldn't wait to get back to the fucking room. And would you wear? Would you throw on I the, just the had, shopping spree? Same thing I'm wearing now. Yeah. I don't I don't get dressed. Up. I don't know what to wear. But Beth looked all hot. She had on the big fucking heels and the <laughs> mini dress. So she was really doing the pretty woman yeah. thing. I said, Go ahead, come on, we're the pretty woman. And uh, so I didn't realize it was a whole tourist thing. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I thought it was very exclusive. No, the inside is very exclusive. No. Outside is nothing. Now I'm pretty woman. They they almost throw the people out who are like scumbags. Yeah. They, apparently, they don't. Everyone was allowed in because every store I went in, everybody was there. Yeah, but they can't really buy anything. No, I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but then we had to get right. We wanted to take a nap before the party because, as you know, the party started at six, but that's really nine o'clock in New York, which is the time I'm on. So you took a nap? Yeah, we took a nap. Even though you'd been lying by the pool all day. Well, I, I was turned on because Beth was wearing a short skirt and we were on Rodeo Drive. I said, when we get back, I want to I oh, keep so that. Oh, so you didn't nap. I said, keep that skirt on. <laughs> well, no, if I, if, I, if I blow a load, I'll go right to sleep. So I know that. <laughs> I'll tell him, like, I better, I better have sex because then I'll fall asleep and take a nap. <laughs> so I, I told her to take her dress. She should wear her dress and we should have sex back in the room. Right. Because it'd be like pretty woman, like, you know. We walk in the room and then I take her. Uh huh. But then she had to take a, a bath or a shower or whatever she was taking. She showed up in the room in her just a regular, you know, sleeping outfit. Uh. And I got upset because <laughs> I didn't have my pretty woman fantasy. <laughs> I wasn't Richard Gere. Oh, well. <laughs> some other time when she's not working. I want to take you in that dress. You gotta now, find a time for that when she's not working, Howard. Yeah, right. She's all work. <laughs> Workaholic. She did a lot of publicity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all over the place. And then uh, and then we had to get ready for Jimmy's party. We showed up, and uh, Jimmy's got this nice house. I don't know. It's, it seems to have multiple. Sounds like a compound with it extra is. houses for band setups. He has, like, one little room. He has a, he has a house with a room that, it, in other words, I, I guess what you would call it is a guest house. You know what I mean? And, like, it, it's not attached to the regular house. Right. But he went all out for this party to welcome us because he had a bunch of people serving. He had guys cooking in his kitchen. It's a very contemporary home. Uh-huh. And um, the whole kitchen was filled with people cooking. And he's got a pizza oven, and they were making pizzas. And then uh, I well, got Well, he wasn't making the pizzas? I thought he no, was No, he, he gave cooking. up. There were too many people there yeah. for him to cook. He evidently entertains a lot. Like, he'll just have a lot of people over. Well, we've heard about those football parties. He every Sunday. Every Sunday. So then he's got the, um, yeah, so the first room he takes me to is this music room where there's like carpet on the, on the walls. Yeah, so he's soundproofed he's the got thing? A, yeah, he's got a keyboard, drum kit, and um, a bunch of guitars, a, tr a trombone, and a trumpet, and like a, a ukulele. He's got a whole bunch Who of stuff. Who plays in there? He says, no one. He's never had anyone in there. I said, tonight we're playing. We're jamming tonight. <laughs> I, I was the one who got that going. Does he play in? No, he plays a harmonica. I think oh he plays the clarinet, believe it or not. No, he not. plays harmonica. Oh, that, if he's not competent to the not, clarinet. So he's not yeah. going to break out the clarinet <laughs> yeah. in front of uh, guests. So, um... <laughs> That's funny. He <laughs> built this room, he doesn't even no. play anything. But it was this big party, my honor, and I was really... It was really nice of Jimmy to throw that, because I felt very Hollywood, and I felt very accepted, and very, very much like a genius. Like, I was being very appreciated for my <laughs> talent. Like, everyone was coming in and saying I was their hero, and I'm very, very funny, and they listen every day. So, like, I, f I felt really good, and I'm trying to think who was there. I'm sure I'll miss people, but... You didn't take notes? No. 
No. You should have gone home afterwards and just no. while it was fresh in your memory. Let me see. Here, I'll write some people down and I'll All see right. if I can do this. Um, ben Stiller and his wife. Uh, <laughs> I'm writing Ben Stiller and wife. And it was good seeing him. You know, we always enjoy having him on the show. It was fun. He's a great guest. Great guest. Uh, then um, Rick Rubin was there. It was, he came with uh, also with, with a date. And then and Rick lost 100. Rick Rubin's the guy who produces. Um, what does he produce? He produced the Rolling Stones album. He, no. uh, you know, was instrumental in starting the whole rap thing yeah. with uh, Russell Simmons. Yeah. Rick produced my uh, Private Parts album and all that. So he was there. He lost 150 pounds. He's, he he's, got that big? Yeah, he looks amazing. The well, fucking I don't guy, recall him being that uh, huge. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was really fat. Really? And, and he's a vegan. He was the well, fat, he was world, always vegan. He was the world's fattest vegan. How did he get that fat? I don't know. Like, well, he must have been eating like a cow. He must have <laughs> been he eating. he can't eat a cow. I go, Rick, you're the world's fattest vegan. <laughs> what the heck are you eating? I know what it was because he once came over my house and we were eating Chinese food. Like, he'll order Chinese food with all the sauce on it, but it's all vegetables. But meanwhile, it's all that fattening sauce. and. Yeah, but he'd have to eat a ton of it, huh? Yeah, he was. He was. But now he's like, he's a born again guy. He's like, he's super thin. He's ripped. He works out every day. Wow. Well, see, yeah. that's the thing that we've seen a lot. You know, remember uh, Mark Didia? Yeah. Who was a fat guy right. when he lived in New York. Yeah. And then he went to Hollywood and got ripped. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. Because like I said, you go to, I went to a Hollywood party here. And I'll, I felt worse about myself than ever because <laughs> they took so many pictures. And I'm standing next to these guys who, you know, Ryan Philippi and Ashton Kutcher and John Stamos. And each guy is better looking than the next. And I'm like, then when the pictures come back, I look like a hideous monster. <laughs> like I said earlier, I'm a one out in Los Angeles. Here in New York, I'm used to being a four. <laughs> you know, I, I feel oh, pretty good. a terrible about, fall. It was horrible. I was a one. <laughs> Maybe a zero. <laughs> Nobody's a zero. No, because they have all these pictures of me playing with this celebrity band out there at Jimmy's house. Uh -huh. And every guy's good looking but me. And plus my guitar had a very short strap. Yeah, the way Ashton was describing it, it sounds like... So I looked very tiny Tim-ish. The with guitar a, was under your chin. Yeah, I looked like I was playing you. And I didn't realize how funny it looked until I saw the pictures. <laughs> But like I said, Beth must really love me because she whispers in my ear. She goes, oh, my God, it's so sexy you playing the guitar. And, and then you were playing drums and you played keyboards. And I go, I go, yeah, I try to tell you. I'm like a fucking Beatles. Yeah, you're one man band. Every instrument they put me on, they had to move me off. <laughs> <laughs> you were the worst. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was the worst because I don't know how to play any songs. <laughs> but um, but you still. OK, so Ben Stiller and his wife. Ben and. All right. Let me think. Amy Poehler. Who is? Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. And she uh, has her own TV the, show. What's the TV show called now? Community. Right. So, no, Community. it's not Community. It's right. Parks and Recreation. Right. Courtney Cox and David Arquette. Okay. And she she was ver she's fun. Yeah. Like we, yeah. And David's fucking great, man. This fucking guy, he got up. He got. He, so we we're trying to work out this band thing. Uh huh. And you know, like various people were coming through and playing in the band. Stamos, I told you, was getting way too upset that the band wasn't good. Yeah, it almost sounds like he and Mark McGrath got into a fight. Well, yeah, it was kind of weird because Mark McGrath. Oh, Mark McGrath was at the party. Johnny Knoxville. Um, uh, what, what, but what, but anyway, what happened was, we're, I'm playing with Stamos and uh, and Mark McGrath. And none of us knew any songs. You never knew any songs in common. And John wasn't upset with me because John doesn't, is afraid to get upset with me. Right. And, He's not going to yell at you. Yeah, because I'm, but he felt that I think Mark is a musician and he should know some songs. <laughs> so he starts yelling that no one knows any songs. And this is ridiculous. And it's ridiculous that he's the best musician there. And I go, you know, John, That's Mark, I go, Mark's a musician. Mark's written hit songs. He's in fucking Sugar Ray. He goes, I don't care. <laughs> Really? Yeah, he's like, what is this? What is this? So we're, 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 we're having a band here. and It's he, supposed to be fun. And he didn't know any song. I go, calm the fuck down. Does John have a problem? John, John's crazy. <laughs> Does he need a talking to? And John's dating this actress, Nikki. Yeah. Who's so hot. And I said, man, what? This is the girl. Every girl he dates is hot. I know, but I go, what's wrong with this one? He'll find something. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, he'll find something wrong with her. I'm like, boy, what is it like 
to be, be looking for flaws on that girl. I mean, there's no flaw. <laughs> if you saw this girl, uh, any guy in my audience would marry this girl without talking to her. Because she'd say, I'll put up whatever the fuck she's got to say. <laughs> and he's saying, best sex I ever had. He's announcing that? Yeah. And, and, and not a secret to her, too. And she likes it because she's of like, course. It's, it's a John, John Samos has fucked everyone. He fucked half the girls at that party <laughs> at one point in his life or another. <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, so we're in this room trying to like put the, like there was a lot of good looking girls there, you know, the actresses and stuff, and they're all wa- waiting for us to play. And I think John was getting upset because we couldn't play anything, <laughs> but people didn't care. They were jink- drinking Johnny Knoxville's moonshine, and he's only got it in like but, what kind of? It comes jar in a, gel- a jelly jar. It's it's moonshine. It's il- it's it's illegal. I think I don't even know. But I mean, how big a jar is it that he's got enough for everybody? Like this big. Like a big, like a big peanut like a, butter jar, like a peanut like butter a jar. Like a gallon jar? No, no, a jug. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a hillbilly. He is a hillbilly. He's bringing the hillbilly yeah. to Hollywood. But boy, it made a big hit. He was like the toast. Did you ever taste it? What is moonshine? I did. I taste, taste it. Like? It's horrible. It tastes like <laughs> it tastes like like, like some like a chemical. Like, so if you could get good booze. Right. Why would you drink moonshine? Jimmy had a be- had beautiful kettle one there. I go, I want to drink kettle one. <laughs> I know where that was bottled. Yeah, not this rot guy. This was made in some dirty hillbilly's fucking basement with his feet. I'm not drinking this. Don't even know how it's made. What he made it from. But everyone was drinking it. What do you make moonshine from? And then Corn? Courtney Cox and Demi Moore. I mean, two beautiful women are saying to me, come on, pussy, drink it. They're slugging it down. And I'm like... Jam. Well, what are they drinking right out of the jug, or is he Everyone, pouring? No, it? everyone's right out of the jug. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> so first of all, I wouldn't share a glass of water with John, <laughs> let alone his fucking and moonshine. They're drinking his moonshine. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm just not into it. And what does he have to drive it back to Hollywood, or is he getting it shipped? I don't know. I don't know how it all works. <laughs> moonshine. He's it was good seeing him though. Moonshine. He was there. He just Did he a... look crippled? I mean, Ashton paints a pretty sad picture. No, I, I, Johnny's Johnny is killing himself with these jackass movies, and he's he and he's drinking moonshine for the pain. To yeah, I mean, he, pain. he looks older than me at this point. Oh my god, and that's pretty old. <laughs> I don't want to look that like that. You know, he's such a handsome guy. What's he doing? Himself? Yeah, he's ruining himself. Right, and he's got he's shoving things in his penis twice a day. He says it's getting so commonplace to shove things up his penis because he damaged his penis. That that he doesn't even think about it. Sometimes he jams it in too hard and it bleeds because he he's not even thinking. (laughs) This is does can he pee? I guess he can. I I think I believe he can pee. (laughs) That's the follow up to uh oh oh take your wings and fly. I believe I believe I'm gonna pee. Uh, yeah, so so finally, I guess Mark McGrath started to sing I'm Just Gonna Fly, which is easy to play for me. It's D and A. Those uh-huh. are the two chords. It's just, yeah. I'm just gonna fly. Take your wings. I did backup vocals. Now, Mark swears I did a good job on backup vocals, but I don't think We I don't did. have any record of this. I'm like, take your wings and fly. Take your wings <laughs> and fly. You're doing that, that part. And I'm like, I, I, just, like Richie Sambora in ben, Bon Jovi. I was like... <laughs> It was a lot of fun, and then and then David Arquette got up and played, and then and then was Ashton John Kutcher. happy when when John no. Stamos when no he was not happy with anybody's playing, oh. and he thought everybody sucked, and he was annoyed, and we should have brought professional musicians to the party, oh, so he could play. I'm telling you, he's a prima donna. Wow. Yeah, he he only wants to play with I top thought he flight. He's a fun guy. Yeah. He's a prima donna. So why can't we agree on a song? I said because no one knows how to play a song. <laughs> We don't know any songs. <laughs> he goes, come on. And then he's yelling out all the Beach Boys songs. Says he, you know. And then John he knows got, all those, So John yeah. went on the keyboard and started. I didn't know he was so talented. He's playing he keyboard. He can play keyboards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he really he, must have been annoyed. So then I got on drums, and that was even more annoying. <laughs> and Johnny Knoxville was so high on moonshine, he comes to me afterwards. He goes, I got to tell you, I didn't realize what a musician you are. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, you were on drums. You were fantastic. I go, Johnny. You gotta stop drinking moonshine. Right, his brain is going as well. He, was, he wasn't kidding. Oh dear. I go, Johnny. I'm horrible. That's the first time I played drums. He goes, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh my God, <laughs> you can. <laughs> yeah, I said anyone can. <laughs> anyway, so that was the party, <laughs> and that's that's my Hollywood story. And then we came home. Now I'm here. Now I'll go back to staring at the wall. 
mà vậy họ làm mà hay chí